Hey everyone, welcome to Revenger What If Today, we're bringing you an incredible new movie on. What if Naruto infused with the power of Wolverine and fall in love with Laura Kinney? Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before we begin. Let's get into the story. Ninja Art Legacy of the Wolverine, Naruto read aloud from the Forbidden Scroll as he sat against the cabin situated at the training grounds. Naruto glanced around the empty clearing once more before reading more. This technique mutates the skeletal structure of the user into metal. The stronger the user's chakra is the stronger the metal will be. The user will also gain the ability to extend claws from between their knuckles made out the aforementioned metal. Naruto read out loud before blinking and reading over the first paragraph again. What the heck does any of that have to do with a wolverine? Naruto asked himself. He looked at the next portion of the scroll seeing more written about the technique, but he noticed the hand seals needed and got distracted as he grinned. Oh yeah, after doing it once I only need one hand seal. Awesome, Naruto shouted before standing and looking down at the scroll. Naruto began to do the first part of the jutsu, channeling as much chakra as he could into his bones, an odd feeling since he had never tried to do it before. Three minutes later, Naruto held the last seal as he felt his chakra wrap around his insides. Ninja art. Legacy of the Wolverine. Naruto shouted as his chakra pulsed. Naruto's eyes snapped wide at the sudden pain that flowed through him before his mouth opened in a horrific scream filled with the pain of having the molecular structure of his very being change. After only a few seconds, Naruto passed out, Ruto, Naruto. Naruto groaned as he tried to open his eyes, Uruka sensei Naruto thought, seeing a blur of the man who had trained him. Naruto are you okay? What happened? Uruka asked as he shook Naruto's shoulder not sure as of why he felt as heavy as iron. Naruto pulled himself up into a sitting position, feeling his muscles move slowly as if he was lifting weights up with him, I don't know. Naruto murmured. Uruka frowned in a mixture between anger and worry, you idiot. Why did you steal the forbidden scroll from the Hokage's office? Uruka shouted, feeling that now that Naruto was conscious, he needed to know what he did was wrong. Naruto took a deep breath through his nose and smelled everything around him in a new way, causing him to be a little distracted from Uruka's question, the what from the where, he asked. Uruka clenched his teeth, damn it Naruto, he yelled with his intimidating big head jutsu. Uruka was about to continue yelling at Naruto when he heard a loud laugh from behind him, well Uruka, I didn't think you'd find the demon so quickly. Mizuki said as he stepped into view, fully battle ready. Seeing Mizuki, Naruto grinned. Hey Mizuki sensei, I pass now right? I get to be a genin just like everyone else? Naruto asked as he stood to his feet with some trouble. Uruka looked back at Naruto with confusion before he turned back to Mizuki, only to be hit with an onslaught of kanai that pushed him back up against the cabin. Naruto shouted in shock, Uruka sensei? He shouted, running to Uruka aid. Mizuki's laughter made Naruto look up at him with wide eyes. Sensei what are you doing? He yelled. Mizuki grinned wickedly, I'm fulfilling my plan demon, I just used you to get the scroll for me so now I can kill you and get revenge before going to join up with Orochimaru Sama and the new sound village, Mizuki said as he began powering up a throw of his battle shuriken, now die demon spawn. He shouted as he pitched the shuriken at Naruto and Uruka. Uruka ripped himself free of the kanai painfully and tackled Naruto out of the way so the two of them rolled across the ground as Mizuki's weapon tore through the cabin wall. Naruto was scared until he realized that he had landed right next to the scroll, maybe, what's the activation seal? Naruto thought as he sat up and began reading as fast as he could. Uruka stood guard in front of Naruto, Naruto. Get the scroll and run, Mizuki lied to you about passing this way. We can't let Mizuki keep the scroll. Uruka shouted. Mizuki laughed as Naruto ignored the two to keep reading. You're calling me the liar, Uruka? Mizuki asked as Naruto found the way to activate the not so subtle part of his technique. Maybe I should tell Naruto about the lies you've been telling him, I? He said. Uruka's eyes widened as he ripped a kanai from his leg. No, Mizuki. It's forbidden. Uruka yelled as he threw the kanai at Mizuki. The gray haired shinobi simply sidestepped the attack as he kept talking. You see Naruto, everyone lied to you about how the fourth Hokage killed the Kayubi, do you know why? Mizuki said as he pulled out his second shuriken. Naruto looked up at Mizuki with confusion on his face, what does that have to do with me? 
Naruto asked. Mizuki smirked. Demon, this is completely relevant. It's the reason I'm going to kill you. Because the fourth Hokage put the fox in you. You were the nine-tailed fox. He said as he spun his shuriken above his head, now die. Naruto was frozen at the news that he was a demon, not just any demon, the one that destroyed Konoha, he thought as Mizuki's shuriken flew towards him. Naruto get down. Naruto covered his face with his heavy arms. Asterisk shlink asterisk after feeling no pain. Naruto looked up to see Iruka crouched over him. I Iruka sensei? Naruto asked in confusion. Iruka was crouched over Naruto. Mizuki's shuriken buried in his back. Naruto. You're not the demon fox. You're just like me. Iruka said with a sad smile. I'm sorry I lied to you. He said weakly. Naruto shook his head. Then, Mizuki lied? Naruto asked. Iruka was silent. No, not exactly, Iruka said softly, causing tears to swell in Naruto's eyes. In a quick movement, Naruto turned over and ran away, grabbing the scroll as he did so and feeling his muscles pushing as hard as they could to lift his heavy body. Naruto. Iruka yelled as Naruto disappeared into the shrubbery. Mizuki laughed. You see, Iruka? He knows he's a demon and now he won't care if I kill him to stop the pain. Mizuki said as he walked past Iruka calmly, ripping his shuriken free of the man's back before kicking his ribs and launching him into the cabin wall, just rest and die, you can't stop me anyway. Mizuki said before leaping up into a tree to follow after Naruto. Iruka struggled to his feet, and no, I won't let you down Naruto, I won't. Iruka groaned as he crawled to his feet and began running after the two of them. Naruto hid against the top of a large branch as he hugged the scroll to his side. Uruka sensei thinks I'm a demon too? Naruto thought as he cried before hearing a commotion down below him. How did you know it was me? Mizuki asked as he dropped his transformation technique which disguised him as Uruka. Uruka smirked as he dropped his own technique, cause I'm not Naruto. Uruka said weakly before falling to a knee. Naruto's eyes widened as Mizuki faded to show he was just a clone as the real Mizuki appeared behind Uruka and kicked him into the trunk of the tree Naruto was hiding in. Where is the demon Uruka? Mizuki shouted as he pulled his shuriken free once more. Uruka chuckled, he's not a demon, he is Naruto Uzumaki, my favorite student and future Hokage. I won't let a traitor like you harm him. Uruka declared as he struggled to get to his knees and failed. Naruto felt more tears come to his eyes at Aruka's words, he believes in me? I'm not a demon? He thought as he cried and his eyes widened. Mizuki had begun to walk towards Aruka as he spun his shuriken, it doesn't matter what you want, cause you're dead, Mizuki yelled as he charged at the downed shunin. Moving desperately, Naruto leapt down at Mizuki as he made his chakra move from his wrist up to his knuckles just like the scroll said causing three bright silver claws to come out from the gaps between his knuckles as he dove at Mizuki. Uruka closed his eyes, please be safe Naruto. Uruka whispered as he accepted his death. Gah! Mizuki yelled in pain as Naruto fell on him, burying his new weapons into Mizuki's shoulder blades as he landed on his back, his weight crushing the man's ribs. Uruka's eyes widened as Naruto and Mizuki rolled to a stop in front of him, Mizuki flat on his face. Naruto came up on his feet as his claws glistened, you lay one finger on my sensei and I'll kill you. Naruto proclaimed as he drop kicked Mizuki in the jaw. Mizuki rolled away as if Naruto's kick had the force of a baseball bat, hurtling him into another tree where Mizuki's head slammed into the trunk, knocking him unconscious and ending the fight. Uruka stared at Naruto's claws as Naruto turned to Uruka and grinned, you okay sensei? Naruto asked with a happy grin. The third Hokage sighed in relief as he watched Naruto finish it with his new technique, he's lucky he survived at all, that tripled healing rate of his must have let him endure the pain and the bodily distortion. Now his healing will be almost instantaneous. The third thought as he turned away from the Hokage's orb, stroking his beard in thought with one hand before clicking his fingers with the other. And Anbu dropped into view, hi Hokage-sama? The Anbu asked. Survival Training Grounds 3 Bring your squad. Have Bear take Mizuki to the hospital's prisoner ward and have Naruto and Uruka come straight here once Owl heals Uruka. Oh, and don't forget the scroll. Here is an ordered. Hi Hokage-sama. Hoof the Hokage lit up his pipe as he turned his attention to looking out the window, even if it was a cheap shot, 
Naruto did manage to take down a Chunin, and we do have an empty spot to fill in Asuma's team. Hiruzen thought as he stroked his beard. Okay. I'll let Naruto pass. Hiruzen thought with a small smile. A few hours later Aruka limped into the Hokage's office with a happy smile on his face as Naruto walked in with an apologetic look on his own. The Hokage waved the three Anbu away and off they went after their leader placed the forbidden scroll on the Hokage's desk. Well, you two had quite an interesting night, the Hokage said with an amused smile. Naruto scratched the back of his head, making the Hokage notice that his hair was less spiky and more smooth, he, yeah. Naruto said, earning a small whack on the back of the head from Uruka. Naruto, apologize to the Hokage. Uruka ordered. Naruto frowned as he rubbed the sore spot, sorry Gigi, Naruto said in a drone. The Hokage chuckled, no harm Naruto, after all, you managed to catch out a traitor in our ranks. It is I who must thank you. The Hokage said kindly before stroking his beard, now I could be really nice and let you join one of the genin teams, or I could. I wanna be a genin, Naruto shouted as he jumped up onto the Hokage's desk. The third Hokage chuckled as he tossed a headband from his draw over to Uruka. Uruka, would you make it official? The Hokage asked as only an academy tester can pass one of his students. Uruka caught the headband with a smile, I'd be honored Hokage-sama. Uruka said as he stepped up to Naruto, who had dropped down onto the floor once more with a massive grin. Genin Naruto Uzumaki, I congratulate you on passing. Welcome to the ninja ranks. Uruka said happily as he passed Naruto the headband. Naruto took the headband and put it on as he spoke, thanks Uruka sensei, he said with a wide grin before hugging the man, accidentally pulling open the mostly healed scar on his back. Ow! Uruka yelled in pain causing Naruto to laugh more at Uruka's comedic expression. The third Hokage chuckled before glancing up at the clock on his wall, well you two, it's nearly one in the morning, I say it's time to turn in for bed. He said as he stood and folded his hands behind his back, and Naruto, don't go trying to learn forbidden ninjutsu before reading the warnings. The third Hokage said with a soft smile before picking up the forbidden scroll and ushering the two out of his office. Naruto looked up at the third questioningly as the three males walked through the tower, warnings? he asked. The third nodded, the particular jutsu you did has only ever been completed successfully by Mito Uzumaki since she was also a carrier of the nine-tailed fox he said, making Naruto flinch, it's because of the fox that the two of you were able to survive because it knows that if its host dies, then so will it, the third explained. Uruka and Hiruzen got to the stairwell before turning back and seeing Naruto a few steps behind, so, I really am the demon? Naruto asked with wide eyes. Uruka gave Hiruzen a worried look, but the third merely smiled again as he pulled the forbidden scroll free from under his arm, Naruto, what is this I'm holding? he asked. Naruto's face took on a confused expression, um, a big scroll, Naruto said. Hiruzen nodded, and this scroll contains some of the most powerful techniques known to shinobi. But is this scroll powerful? Hiruzen asked. Naruto shrugged, um, not really, it's just a scroll that has jutsu in it. That doesn't mean it can do the jutsu, he said, still not understanding. Uruka caught on and smiled, I get it. Just because the scroll holds the jutsu it doesn't make it the jutsu. Just like you Naruto, just because you hold back that beast it doesn't mean you are anything like it. Uruka explained, causing Naruto's eyes to widen in realization and understanding. Hiruzen nodded, exactly. You are just like any other genin of this village Naruto, he said before tilting his head, well, except for the metallic bones and claws, Hiruzen said. Naruto grinned as he held up his hands letting the claws come out of his skin. Yeah, I got built in weapons and armor. Naruto declared with a cheer, accidentally cutting his forearm. Ouch, he shouted. Uruka stepped forward in worry but before more than a drop of blood got out, the wound was already scarring and soon was completely healed. Naruto and Uruka stared at the wound for a moment before Hiruzen chuckled. By the look on your face I assume you didn't read everything about what the jutsu does? He asked with a smile. Naruto blinked in confusion, I heal at super speed as well? Naruto asked. Hiruzen nodded, anything else you've noticed? Hiruzen asked. Naruto frowned in focus before realizing something, oh, I can smell everything really well too. 
he said before taking a deep breath to prove it before running over to the two men and looking over the rail of the stairwell, and I smell someone right below us, Naruto exclaimed. Uruka was startled that there was someone so close and he didn't realize, but Hiruzen just laughed, that is one of my Anbu guard Naruto, I'm astounded that you could smell her so clearly. Hiruzen said before clicking his fingers, having the Anbu come out into the open. Naruto looked up at the Anbu with a questioning look, huh, cool. Naruto said before feeling someone rub the top of his head. He looked up to see Hiruzen, Naruto, this is Anbu Snake and she'll take you home now, he said with a smile. Naruto nodded, okay Gigi, Naruto said, suddenly feeling very tired. Uruka spoke up as Snake put her hand on Naruto's shoulder, Naruto, remember to meet at the academy tomorrow at 10 for your team assignments. Uruka reminded him. Naruto nodded before he felt his chakra system shift. Okay, bye sensei, bye Gigi. Poof Serutobi sighed before turning to Uruka. I plan on having him on Asuma's team. What do you think? The third asked. Uruka blinked, not expecting the Hokage to want his opinion. Asuma Serutobi? He'll be trained under one of the honored fire temple guards? Uruka asked with wide eyes. The third chuckled, I'll take that as a yes then. He said before the two of them hit the bottom level of the tower and began to walk their separate ways home. Thanks Snake-san, Naruto said as they appeared at his front door. Snake nodded before stiffening and suddenly placing her finger to her mosque's lips, causing Naruto to hold his breath as he was caught off guard by the sudden order for silence. Snake softly put her hand to Naruto's door and it swung open with a loud creak, causing Naruto to sigh as he saw his apartment trashed once more. He took a deep breath through his nose and smelt only Snake's fresh scent but about three smells that he thought may have been people that were there earlier, but had left already. Snake was suddenly gone for about five seconds before his front room light turned on and Snake appeared, talking for the first time, it's empty, but I don't think you'll be able to sleep here tonight, Snake said to Naruto. Naruto shrugged as he walked past her, it's okay, this happens every other week. That's why I have this, Naruto said pulling a scroll from underneath the sink in his kitchen. Snake watched as Naruto walked back outside and leapt up onto the roof, unsealing a sleeping bag, bedroll and a pillow. I'll just clean it up tomorrow, he said as Snake watched him lay his stuff out. She frowned underneath her mask, feeling a sudden sadness as she looked at Naruto, hiding his sadness under an emotional mask, I'll leave a clone to watch over you, she said as she made hand seals, causing an earth clone to spring up from the roof itself. Naruto yawned, his tiredness overwhelming him as he got comfortable, you don't, yawn, have to do that snake-san, he said with heavy eyelids. Snake merely turned and leapt back down to the balcony that connected to Naruto's front door before looking inside the apartment, deciding to clean it up for him while he slept, he's just like me after that man left. Snake thought as she softly closed his door behind her and got to work. Naruto woke with the sun as it hit his face. He opened his eyes and sat up using his stomach muscles, feeling the motion much easier than it was the day before. Huh, I must be getting stronger. He thought before remembering why he was sleeping on his roof, causing him to sigh. Guess I better get to cleaning. He thought before he began sealing everything back into his out of home scroll. Hopping back down to his apartment, Naruto's eyes widened as he looked through the open door, seeing the whole house clean as some lady in a long trench coat sat on his couch watching a new TV. She turned to him as he blinked, hey brat, close the door will ya? She said as she patted the spot next to her on the couch. Naruto blinked in confusion before coming to the one obvious solution, did you clean my house miss? He asked. The purple haired lady nodded, yep, now come eat this breakfast ramen before it gets cold, I hear ramen is your favorite right? She asked with a grin, the name's Anko by the way, Anko Midarashi. Naruto blinked again before taking a deep breath and smelling the ramen filled with crispy bacon and extra egg and slightly less broth, but his nose also picked up Anko's scent, Snake-san? He asked. Anko grinned, hey, guess that nose really is amazing huh, now come on, she said, once more patting the spot next to her before placing a plastic bag onto a small table which Naruto could have sworn he didn't have before. Naruto, figuring that she was one of his Gigi's Anbu decided to trust her and so, went and sat next to her before opening the bag, seeing the aforementioned food of the gods before he began eating and watching the TV, having never seen the morning programs before. The two ate in a comfortable silence as they watched the TV, 
Naruto every now and again stealing glances at Anko as she ate a plate of dango sticks. A minute or so later, Naruto had finished the ramen and folded his legs as he turned to the nearly stranger on the couch next to him, Excuse me Anko-san, but why did you get me breakfast? And where'd all this new stuff come from? He asked curiously. Anko grinned, Well, since I was moving into the flat below you and I couldn't fit all my stuff, I reckoned that you could have the things that I didn't need since you didn't have half of them yourself. She explained before gesturing over to the corner, Yeah, and you didn't have stairs either so I made some, she said, causing Naruto to look over to the corner. His eyes widened at the hole in his floor before he ran over it, seeing a small circular stairwell made almost as if it had grown from the missing floor as well as the wall that led down into Anko's place. Ah, oh, that's not my flat lady. I can't just have stairs leading into someone else's flat, he shouted. Anko, for the first time in a while, decided to just be honest with Naruto. Look Naruto, I know literally everything there is to know about you after reading your file and once I did I made a request to the Hokage that I be stationed as a permanent guard until you become Chunin so that we both know that you will be safe from threats inside the village. Anko said before eating the last piece of Dango. Naruto blinked, not quite understanding, what? he asked. Anko grinned as she went over to Naruto's bedroom and opened the door, showing that it was now a dining room, your bedroom is downstairs where my dining room used to be, oh and call me Nei-chan. Anko said with a secretly nervous grin before she stepped past Naruto towards the stairs and sat on the rail, sliding down it in a few seconds to land safely on the first floor of their new living quarters, Hokage's orders brat so come on. After a few seconds of waiting for him, Anko looked back up the stairs, Naruto? She asked, worry slightly evident in her voice. Naruto walked down the stairs slowly before stopping on the second last one and looking up at Anko with the slightest hint of tears in his eyes. Why'd I call you, Nei Chan? He asked softly as if he was about to cry. Anko shrugged, thinking it was a good idea that they get close. Why not? Maybe we will be as close as family someday. She said with a smile similar to Naruto's fake one. Anko was suddenly knocked on her back as Naruto leapt at her in a tackle hug, forgetting that he weighed more than three fully grown civilian men as he cried happily. Anko was torn between the pain of having what felt like a cinder block on her chest and the happiness that came with having someone accept her, so she just hugged Naruto back as she used her chakra to help her sit up with him sitting between her legs. Hey Naruto, why are ya crying huh? She asked as she scratched his head. Unexpectedly, Naruto practically purred like a pet as Anko scratched behind his ear for a moment, causing the two of them to freeze before she began laughing, causing Naruto to grin happily up at her laughter, it's nothing, he said, wiping his tears of joy away, where's my room Nei Chan? He asked as he stood before running around Anko's larger apartment. Anko caught her breath from her laughter as she felt warmth inside her, not realizing the emotions that being called sister would bring up in her. But she held herself together as she stood and grabbed Naruto's collar as he ran past her, this way Naru chan you get the room directly below your old bedroom, she said as she opened the door near the stairwell, showing Naruto a room which was nearly exactly the same as his old one which still looked out towards the Hokage mountain. Naruto grinned as he looked around his room before turning back to Anko, Nei chan this is fantastic, he yelled in excitement before running around Anko's flat once more while laughing. Anko smiled as she watched Naruto before a buzzing noise cut into his laughter. Naruto looked over as Anko who unashamedly pulled her coat to the side, causing Naruto to blush in embarrassment at the nearly unobscured view of her s. Anko lifted her shoulder free of her cloak so that she could see her anbu tattoo which seemed to be glowing slightly with chakra. Anko sighed, well, looks like the Hokage needs me, she said before looking at Naruto, you remember what you've got to do today? She asked as she covered herself up. Naruto nodded, yeah, the academy at 10 o'clock, Naruto exclaimed as his blush slowly faded. Anko nodded and grinned, well then Naru chan, I'll be heading off for work since this should be about my transfer to the T and I department, she said before walking over to one of the other two doors on her level, opening it to show her room, I'll be out in a sec, she said before closing the door behind her. Naruto took the chance to look around Anko's flat, still finding it surreal that he had someone that actually wanted to be called his family. He looked around the kitchen area and noticed that there was a few knives sticking out of the cabinet opposite the fridge. Naruto walked around so that he could see better and raised his brows as he saw a picture of a pale man in a weird yellow outfit with multiple kitchen and kanai knives sticking out of the picture. 
Naruto tilted his head in thought as he looked at the picture. Where have I seen this picture before? Naruto thought before hearing the door to Anko's room open once more. He turned to see Anko in her Anbu attire, holding her mask in her hand as she grinned, Naru chan. Remember that when I wear this mask, I'm just Anbu snake, okay? She asked. Naruto nodded before realizing that Anko was about to leave as she walked towards the door, Ne chan? He asked as he followed after her. Anko opened the door and turned to him, Ya yeah, Naru chan? She asked. Naruto felt himself fumbling over his words as he tried not to sound pathetic. Um, are you gonna, um, come back? He asked, worry evident in his voice and words. Anko raised a brow before realizing that Naruto thought she was leaving him already and staying away. Of course I am, should be home around sunset tonight. You wanna get dinner for us? She asked with a grin. Naruto's grin mirrored her own as he nodded, yeah okay, he proclaimed happily. Anko chuckled slightly as she lifted her mask, catch ya later Naru chan, and remember not to be late ya here. Can't have my little brother given me a bad representative right? She said as she put her mask on. Naruto nodded, no worries Nei chan, I won't let you down, believe it, he shouted happily. Anko felt the mask grip to her chakra so she let go and used that hand to scratch Naruto behind the ear, causing him to shiver happily, good to hear, CYA later, she said before leaping out off the balcony and disappearing in midair. Naruto smiled to himself before closing the door and looking around, a genin and a brother in a single day. I hope this lucky streak keeps going. Naruto thought before realizing he hadn't had a shower since before the genin exams. He looked down on his clothes and his face twisted in disgust as he saw the dried blood of both Mizuki and Uruka on him. Ew, he said simply before heading upstairs to have a shower in his bathroom. As Naruto opened the door to the bathroom, his jaw dropped as the whole room was seemingly replaced with a large glass tank, which had a large group of baby pythons staring at him. Naruto blinked as the snakes slithered along the fake wildlife to get a closer look at him. So Naruto slowly edged out of the room and closed the door. Staring at the door for a few moments in confusion, Naruto opened the door again and peeked in, once more making eye contact with many slithering snakes. That's unexpected. He mumbled before closing the door a second time and turning to go back downstairs to use the other bathroom. Finding the room to be a 100% normal bathroom, Naruto stripped down to have a shower when he got a glimpse of himself in the mirror. His eyes widened as he saw all of muscle he had seemingly put on overnight. I went from fit for a kid to a freaking gymnast's body. He thought as he looked down at his six pack and slimline muscles. He looked up at the mirror once more before grinning. Benefits of carrying around the metal framework, I guess. Naruto muttered to himself before getting in the shower. Hash 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 Naruto took a deep breath as he walked into the academy grounds smelling the scents of his fellow genin as well as the many others who had walked past. He looked around with a smile as he saw Kiba and Akamaru about to walk through the main door into the academy. Naruto jogged after his friend and entered through the open door to see Kiba talking to Choji. Hey guys, what's up? Naruto asked, causing the two to look over at him with wide eyes. Naruto, what are you doing here? Choji asked as he took a break from eating. Naruto grinned gesturing to his headband i passed the exams though i had to do some extra stuff to make up for it he he said happily to the two kiba grinned in return yeah good work naruto he said giving naruto a high five how can you guys be so loud so early huh shikamaru groaned as he walked in behind naruto yawning as he finished his sentence choji smiled at his best friend hey shikamaru i'm guessing your mom forced you to be on time he asked before eating again. Shikamaru smirked, Nah, I'm stuck with responsibilities now. We all are. No matter how troublesome it is we still gotta do it. He said as he began walking towards their classroom. Naruto was too excited to simply walk, race ya there, he said before running, Kiba and Choji following after him. Shikamaru sighed, troublesome blonde. He muttered before making his slow walk into a brisk one to hopefully catch up in time. Uruka was standing at the front of the classroom, reading out the teams and those who were in them as he went down the list in his hand, Team 7, Sasuke Uchiha, Ino Yamanaka and Kiba Inazuka. You will be lead by Kakashi Hitaki, Uruka said. Sasuke's brow twitched before Ino leapt over and tackled him in a hug, yay, 
True love conquers all, Ino shouted. Uruka rolled his eyes before glancing at Kiba, who was smirking in excitement at having a team. Uruka looked back at his list as he read out Team 8, Team 8, Shino Aburame, Sakura Haruno and Choji Akamichi. You will be lead by Kurenai Yuhi, Uruka said. Shino and Choji nodded to each other, Choji grinning while Shino seemed neutral, which was usually a good thing. The two of them looked over to Sakura to see her glaring at Ino, causing the two of them to become a little worried about their teammates' focus. Uruka looked back down at his clipboard, Team 9 is still in circulation, so Team 10, Shikamaru Nara, Hanada Hayuga and Naruto Uzumaki. Uruka said with a small smile, glancing over at his favorite student, you will be lead by Asuma Serutobi. Naruto grinned over at Shikamaru who smirked slightly at being on a team with at least one of his friends. The two of them glanced around for Hinata, only to see the girl sitting quietly as she smiled at her desk, a light blush covering her face. Uruka placed the clipboard down on his desk, all right, and with that I officially declare that you guys are no longer academy students. Once your sensei comes to get you and talk to you, then I am officially no longer your sensei, he said with a smile as he glanced over the whole class. It's been a pleasure to teach you all. And if you ever need me, remember that I am here during the school terms and in the mission hall during the off seasons. He said before holding the ram seal, so long. Poof asterisk as the smoke from Uruka's shunshin dissipated, the class began to talk to their teammates and seeing as Shikamaru was sitting in the center row while Naruto was on the left and Hinata was on the right, they met around Shikamaru's seat as Naruto sat on the desk while Hinata took Choji's seat as the Akamichi Genin went to sit by Shino. The three were quiet for a moment before Hinata spoke first, it's a, um, pleasure to work with the two of you. She said quietly, though with no trace of a stutter. Naruto grinned, you too Hinata, so does anyone know who this Asuma guy is? Naruto asked the two of them. Shikamaru nodded, yeah, he used to be one of the Fire Temple's guardians. All I know is that he's literally the only active ninja who has wind chakra and that apparently a big deal. Shikamaru said before the door to the classroom opened and in walked six Jonin. Some Jonin looked around the room and called out their teams, emptying the room slowly, but Naruto was looking for the fire temple's sash that would signify their sensei, which he spotted on the goatee man walking up to them. So, Asuma said as he leant against the table next to Naruto, placing himself in front of Hinata and Shika, you guys are team 10, he said as he glanced over the three of them making them feel slightly nervous at his smirk, I think you'll do well. Now, follow me, he said as he stood and left the classroom, his team following behind him. After a minute of walking in silence, Asuma opened the door to the back of the academy, walking out to a standalone tree which he calmly sat under, leaning against the trunk as he motioned for the others to copy him, come on guys, no need to feel nervous or nothing I ain't gonna hurt y'all, he said as he pulled out a cigarette, lightening it in a simple practiced movement before blowing out the smoke and watching the trio. Naruto broke the silence, honestly, I'm not nervous, I'm a little disappointed though, he said with a shrug. Asuma raised a brow, disappointed, he asked. Naruto nodded, thought you'd be more flashy since you're so great and stuff, he said with another shrug. Asuma took another drag as he smirked, flashy huh, what do you want me to do that would be flashy then? He asked, obviously amused. Naruto shared a look with Shikamaru and Hinata before shrugging, not having an answer. But Hinata was curious enough to ask, maybe, a simple show of your rare wind chakra Asuma sensei? She asked quietly. Asuma nodded, so, you want to see something basic about wind chakra? Asuma said as he picked up a stick in his hand. Naruto nodded, yeah definitely, he agreed. Asuma smirked, alright, watch this stick. Asuma said as he let in lay flat on his palm, apparently doing nothing of significance. The three genin watched in fascination as nothing happened. Asuma smirked, any one of you see that? He asked. Shikamaru was the one to respond, see what? He asked, not noticing any change in the stick. Naruto was about to ask something when he saw Hinata reach forward, with an awestruck look on her face as her keen eyes noticed the small lines suddenly on the stick. Amazing. She whispered as she picked up the middle of the stick, leaving the other two pieces on Asuma's hand as it fell into perfect thirds. Shikamaru and Naruto's eyes widened as Asuma chuckled out a cloud of smoke, now how about a little introduction I, starting with you Shikamaru, he said. Shikamaru yawned as he began talking, 
I'm not sure what you mean sensei, maybe you should go first yeah? He mumbled. Asuma chuckled, all right, my name is Asuma Serutobi as you all know. I like the lifestyle I've been able to maintain since I left the fire temple and the little shogi club that meets down at this little cafe on Thursdays. He started as he took another drag of his smoke, things I dislike are those that threaten the leaf's way of life, from outside or inside. He said with a pondering look on his face, hobbies, I guess trying new smokes and cigars, though I'm still inclined towards Winfield Gold as my classic favorite, he said with a smirk as he ashed his cig, and dreams for the future, to watch a team I can proudly call my own grow strong and maybe start a family someday. Asuma said with a kind smile at the three before nodding to Shikamaru, your turn, he said. Shikamaru sighed before talking, Shikamaru Nara, I like relaxing and stuff. I dislike having responsibilities and having to put out too much effort for something not worth my time. Hobbies include cloud watching and mind puzzles. Dream for the future, he said, yawning as he began to talk of his dreams, to live an average life as an average shinobi. I don't need anything more than that, Shikamaru said with a shrug. Asuma nodded and looked to Hinata, who blushed at the attention as the three males looked at her, um, my name is Hinata Hayuga. I like the forests of our village and um, someone who has inspired me a lot. She said, forcing herself not to look up at anyone in particular, I dislike the way that my clan is being run. She said strongly, surprising everyone with the forcefulness of her usually quiet voice, and my dream is to abolish the practice of clan separation, she said sternly. Asuma nodded with a smile, a very noble dream, he said before nodding finally to Naruto. Naruto grinned, my name is Naruto Uzumaki, honestly I really like the way the past 24 hours have been for me and I'm still stoked about it haha, he said with a laugh before trying to focus, so, my dislikes are, well I dunno, I guess the best way to put it is stupidity, I don't like stupid people, and my dream? Naruto said with his grin growing back, to be Hokage, Naruto shouted with excitement. Asuma nodded before looking over the group, well, this will be interesting. He mumbled to himself as he stood, taking another drag of his smoke at the same time. So what's the plan sensei? Naruto asked as he followed their sensei's lead. Asuma sighed as he blew out a lungful of smoke, I like you guys, but unfortunately we're not a team just yet. There is still another test of mine that you have to take part in before we're a proper team. He said with an apologetic smile. Another test? Hanada and Naruto exclaimed while Shikamaru sighed. Asuma nodded. Training ground 2, tomorrow at 8 in the morning you are expected to be there. You'll have 3 hours to train and warm up etc, then I'll be there at 11 to start the test. Be ready as if you are about to go on a mission. You know absolutely nothing about this mission except for the fact that it is for less than 24 hours. Asuma said before taking one last drag and dropping his smoke, sorry to drop this on you guys, I recommend you spend the rest of the day training together. And to keep it interesting I'm going to give you one clue about the test, a shinobi's strength isn't how many enemies they can beat, it's how many comrades they can protect. Asuma said as he stomped his smoke before winking at them, later. Poof the three sat in silence until Shikamaru stood, damn, if I fail a test again my mother's gonna kill me. He whined before turning to Hinata and Naruto. Well, since Asuma sensei is a combat focused ninja I can only assume that his test will involve fighting. So why don't we go see what combinations we can come up with okay? He said with a yawn. Hanada and Naruto shared a look before standing by Shika's side, okay, so um, where do we start? Hanada asked. Shikamaru glanced at the two of them before sighing, guess they're gonna keep looking at me for leadership. Well at least this way we won't die anytime soon. He thought before instantly coming up with a plan, if we train this whole time at the training grounds and get a good feeling for it. Then we can spend tomorrow morning warming up and then setting traps for if we have to fight, he said. Naruto grinned as he gave a thumbs up, sounds like a good plan to me. Naruto agreed before he began walking off, he paused though as he turned back with a sheepish grin on his face, um, where is training ground too? He asked curiously. Shikamaru sighed as Hinata smiled at Naruto, I know, here follow me, she said before running off, Shikamaru and Naruto following after her. This is it, Hinata said softly as she came to a stop at the entrance to a training field. Naruto looked around and grinned, cool, nice and close to home and Ichiraku's, Naruto exclaimed as he began to walk through the training grounds. 
Shikamaru yawned as he walked up towards the standard training posts, so, if we're a team we have to know everything about each other right? That's the best way to learn to trust one another. Shikamaru said as he leant back against the post. Naruto and Hinata nodded. Let's start with our ninja skills. Hinata suggested questioningly. Shikamaru nodded. Sounds good to me. I don't know about you guys but I always held back in the academy. Way too troublesome to actually put in the effort, he mumbled to himself before looking at Hinata. I assume your father told you to hold back like mine did? Shikamaru asked. Naruto blinked with wide eyes as he looked at Hinata. Yes, he did tell me to do that but there wasn't much I could hold back, she said, her soft voice trailing off as she looked down. After a few moments of silence, Shikamaru and Hinata both glanced at Naruto. So, what about you Naruto? Anything we haven't seen yet? Shikamaru asked. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, he, uh, maybe you guys should show what techniques you held back first, he suggested. Shikamaru could easily tell that Naruto was nervous about something, but he just couldn't bring himself to care about forcing it out of him, all right. Shikamaru muttered as he stood tall, as you know I can do the academy ninjutsu as well as my clan's basic technique, he said as he formed a single hand seal, shadow possession jutsu. Shikamaru's shadow stretched over to Naruto and connected the two of them, forcing Naruto to move the same ways Shikamaru moved, causing the blonde to frown while Shikamaru continued talking, but there is another jutsu that's sort of a combination of this technique and the substitution, it's called. Shikamaru began again as he formed three hand seals, shadow portal jutsu. He shouted, causing his shadow to detach from Naruto and change to a darker shade of black. Hanada and Naruto watched as the shadow moved over to a stick on the ground, the moment it touched the shadow of the stick. The stick seemed to fall into the shadow only to pop up out of Shikamaru's shadow at a speed which allowed him to easily catch it. Naruto picked his jaw up off the floor, Whoa, you can teleport stuff? Naruto asked. Shikamaru shook his head, not exactly, but kind of. You see at the moment I can't do anything too big, like a dog or one of these training posts. The biggest I can go is my school backpack. Shikamaru explained before going back to his lazy position leaning against the post. Since Naruto and Shikamaru looked at her expectantly, Hanada nodded before she began speaking. Well, you both know about the academy jutsu, so um, I'll show you my bloodline, she said as she held a one-handed ram seal, by a kugan. The veins around her eyes bulged and she could see everything in a 359 degree radius and even through the objects as well. And after explaining that to her teammates, she deactivated her technique as she performed hand seals, other than that, the only jutsu I know is a pretty basic earth jutsu that my father taught me, earth style. Harden? Hanada proclaimed as her skin began to take on a much darker tone, the brown-gray color crawling up from her feet until her whole body was the same shade while her eyes became a glazed gray instead of their violet-white appearance. Shikamaru nodded, I've heard of that technique. It makes the body's skin take on the same attributes as a stone, though it takes a lot of chakra to start but nearly none to maintain. That's why it's great with a Hyuga clan member, Shikamaru said with mild interest. Naruto raised a brow, sorry, but what makes it so great with Hinata in comparison to other people, he asked. Hinata smiled patiently at Naruto as her jutsu faded while Shikamaru sighed, ah, uh, explaining this is such a drag. Look, the Hyuga are primarily taijutsu fighters and with a technique like that it covers their main weakness. Long distance weapon attacks. Got it? Shika asked. Naruto nodded with a grin. Yeah, that's awesome Hinata. Naruto exclaimed cheerily. Hinata blushed at the praise as her jutsu completely faded through her feet back onto the ground. Thanks Naruto. So um, what about you? She asked. Naruto grinned feeling much more comfortable about his news after finding out that Hinata's moves change her appearance even more than his own does, all right. Well there was a little mix up when it came to me becoming genin, but even though I still can't do the clone jutsu, but now do not only do I heal from any wound near instantly, but I gain something else instead, Naruto exclaimed before pulling his jacket up and over his head and lifting up his shirt, look, he said, gesturing to his abs. Shikamaru raised a brow, Curious as to how Naruto went from an average build to being more built than his own father, an elite Jonin, in only a single night, not to mention his apparent new healing factor or that his facial structure seems slightly slimmer as well, troublesome blonde, what have you done now? Shika thought with a sigh. Hanada on the other hand, 
blushed redder than an apple and was focusing all of her energy on not getting dizzy. Naruto then dropped his shirt and held up his fists, and last but not least, Naruto started before sending the chakra through his hands, his claws extending out instantly as the metal shined in the light. My claws! Naruto proclaimed with a swing of his arms, accidentally cutting the training post near him into pieces with no resistance. Naruto and the others stared at the post with wide eyes as it fell into pieces, causing Naruto to scratch his head sheepishly, he he he, whoops, he chuckled. Shikamaru's eyes focused on the claws intently, seeing very clearly that they were of a different kind of metal than what their kanai were made from. He was quiet for a moment of thought as Naruto retracted the claws, letting Shikamaru see as they moved back into his wrist, that they had aligned between his bones and muscles perfectly. Naruto knelt down to try and fix the post, though he had no idea how, when Shikamaru began talking. Those came from inside you Naruto, I'm guessing the reason you're so muscular now is thanks to metal like that spread throughout your entire skeletal structure, right? Shikamaru asked. Naruto just blinked in confusion, skeletal structure? He asked. Shikamaru sighed as Hanada smiled lightly at Naruto's, cute, expression, your bones idiot, he thought with a sigh before realizing he would have to put up with this for the entirety of their team placements, this is such a drag. He sighed as he looked up to the sky pleadingly. Boo, Naruto said in realization before smiling at his teammates, so, what do we do now? Naruto asked. Hanada smiled gently as she stood, stretching her arms above her head, why don't we all warm up some? She asked as she hopped backwards, getting into her clan's stance of the gentle fist. Naruto jumped to his feet excitedly as he took a slightly off version of the academy taijutsu style. Shikamaru stood up and sighed taking less than a second to analyze both of his opponent's styles in a little less than a glance, Naruto, you need to practice your taijutsu a lot. Hanada, your style focuses purely on defensive or counter maneuvers. Shikamaru said bored as all he did to take a stance was to shift his legs slightly wider apart. Naruto frowned, oh yeah? He shouted before running at Shikamaru and throwing a haymaker. Shikamaru squatted before spinning on his front foot, tripping Naruto with a sweep kick as he stood calmly, hands in his pockets throughout the whole maneuver, you're too heavy to use that style anymore Naruto. Your forward momentum makes it way too hard for you to change course in your attacks. Shikamaru deduced before turning to Hinata, attack me. Shikamaru said, this time taking one hand out of his pocket. Hinata frowned as she glanced between Naruto and Shikamaru, poor Naruto-kun, she thought as she moved towards Shikamaru. She started with a basic palm strike. Bam Hinata gasped as she brought her hands to her chest in pain, nearly falling to her knees as she was winded. Shikamaru sighed, see? If anyone is slightly faster than you they will land a hit easily. You guys need to improve a lot. Shikamaru said as he shook his hand and flexed his fingers. Feeling a grip on her hand, she looked up and blushed lightly at Naruto holding her, hey Shika. What the hell did you hit Hinata so hard for? Naruto shouted. Shikamaru sighed before holding his hands up in a surrendering pose, you're right, sorry Hinata. But please tell me you two understand why I did that and what I've shown you, he asked with a raised brow. Naruto frowned while Hinata nodded, standing up with the assistance of Naruto, why you're right Shikamaru-san, I get it, she said with a slight pout. Naruto's frown stayed in place as he glared at Shikamaru, not really understanding what had just happened. Shikamaru smiled softly at Hinata, cool, is there anything I can do to help? After all, we are a team, Shikamaru said. Hinata shook her head, no that's okay, I think I have an idea, she said as her gaze traveled to Naruto's face. Seeing him still stuck in a frown, she tilted her head in thought before realizing the problem, oh, he didn't understand what Shikamaru was pointing out to him, she thought before clearing her throat, making Naruto look at her. Seeing that she was in fact all right, Naruto stepped away slightly while frowning still, so, why did you throw us around Shika? Naruto asked. Shikamaru sighed, troublesome blonde, he mumbled under his breath. Hanada quickly interjected, Shikamaru-san just means that I need to be a lot faster for my style and that your fighting style is not really compatible with your body now. He's trying to help us improve, she explained with a soft smile, her blush finally fading. Naruto seemed to drop his negative expression as he blinked widely, yeah, well, your style isn't perfect either Shika, Naruto said with a pout. 
Shikamaru shrugged, yeah I know, but mom has been drilling me with this style for as long as I can remember, so I hope I'm getting close, he said as he rubbed the back of his neck. Hanada nodded, as has my father. Those of us from the clans have a very different way of doing things. Hanada said with a slight pout. Naruto looked off to the side, slightly saddened, at least they had a family to teach them. He thought before his mind suddenly flashed to his, sister, maybe Enko Ne can help me somehow. He thought, suddenly emboldened to learn more as he thought of what he could learn from an Anbu member. Shikamaru smirked, thinking the look on Naruto's face was inspired because of him. So, do you two want to spar a little so I can analyze your styles completely? That way I know how we'll fight best together. Shikamaru explained. Hanada blushed, thinking about how much her and Naruto will be touching each other throughout the fight. Oh okay. She said slightly hesitantly before sliding into her stance. Naruto grinned as he got into his stance again, follow your instincts. Naruto blinked at the phrase that entered his mind, just follow my instincts, Naruto thought as his breath slowed and his stance slid a little lower. Shikamaru's eyes narrowed at Naruto's movement, hum, something change. He thought before Naruto charged forward to hit Hanada, doing a wide sweep with his fists. Hanada used her style to dodge his moves easily while stepping into Naruto's guard, moving to hit Naruto's chest. Stop, it's over. Shikamaru said. Hanada and Naruto both paused in confusion as they looked to their third teammate, E.H. They both said in confusion. Shikamaru sighed, if Naruto's claws were out he'd have slashed your face right off Hanada. And if Hanada was using her chakra then your heart would have stopped Naruto. Shikamaru explained. The other two looked at each other and blinked as they realized both their styles were extremely deadly. Shikamaru clapped, all right, maybe this wasn't the best way to start, he said while scratching the back of his head before clicking his fingers as he came up with an idea, why don't we just start on what our techniques can do when combined, he suggested. Hanada nodded as she stepped out of her stance, okay, she said excitedly, liking the idea of working with someone rather than against someone. Naruto nodded with a grin, sounds good Shika, he agreed as he let his claws slip free. Stepping into his front door, Naruto placed a plastic bag on the table full of food, not my favorite, but it was the only place that would serve me those dango things. Naruto thought to himself before going to take a shower, dropping his jacket on the stairwell railing as he walked past it towards his old bathroom. Only to once more enter a short stair off with a tank of pythons. Naruto blinked, oh yeah. Sorry guys. Naruto said to the large tank as he closed the door once more and headed downstairs to the other one. Walking through the two story apartment, Naruto accidentally took a glance in Enko's room on his way past it. He paused as he saw her cloak thrown on the floor, must have just left it there. Naruto thought as he was about to leave it. He paused in his step before pivoting back to face her room, maybe I can try it? He muttered to himself before chucking his towel on the floor of the hallway and chuckling as he entered her room, picking up her coat and throwing it over his shoulders. Even though it was too big for him, making it slide along the ground and the sleeves dangle further than his arms, that didn't stop him from posing in strength positions in front of her full-size mirror, the great Naruto. Ninja of Steel. Naruto announced before making the sound of hushed applause as he pretended to receive the cheers. Ninja of Steel? That sounds like a weird Superman rip-off. Naruto turned with wide eyes to see Anko casually sitting on her bed in her Anbu attire, her mask sitting on her lap as she used a wet cloth to wipe dried blood off of her arm and neck. Naruto blinked twice before throwing off the coat, Anko ne. When did you get here? I wasn't touching your stuff I swear, Naruto shouted in shock. Anko chuckled as she stood using her non-bloody hand to ruffle his hair, really? Cause I got a few of my older ones from back when I was a chunin, they'd probably fit you you know. She said with a smirk as she picked up her coat from the ground, tossing it over the back of her chair that sat in front of a small study desk. Naruto blinked widely before grinning, Can I try them on? I want one too? Naruto exclaimed excitedly. Anko chuckled to herself as she kicked off her ninja sandals, Go have a shower Naruto, you reek of sweat. I'll have an outfit ready for y'all. She said with a grin as she went over to her cupboard, beginning to pull out an old trunk. Naruto nodded before hugging Anko from behind, knocking her onto all fours as he landed on her back, thanks Nei-chan. He shouted happily before running off towards the bathroom, grabbing his towel along the way. 
Anko shook her head at Naruto's antics as he left, though the moment she heard the bathroom door close, she sighed, this is gonna take some getting used to. She mumbled as she stood once more. Anko opened the old trunk, smiling lightly at all her old chunin and genin stuff she kept there, including her first trench coat, it ain't snakeskin like all my good ones, but it does have the extra storage space, she thought as she shook it out, holding it up to her torso as she did so. She glanced at the mirror before smirking, hey, probably should start saving for one of these again. She muttered to herself as she realized just how small the coat would be on her now. She tossed it over the back of her chair with her newest cloak before looking back in the trunk, frowning as she caught sight of a picture of her genin team, all of whom were no longer a part of her life, the that cursed me, the that left me and the who died for me. She thought with a saddened expression as her hand ran along the Sharingan eyes of the only person she considered a friend from her old team, White Ya Did Ya Moron. She thought to herself before turning her head away from the picture, a single tear building its way over her eyelids. She dropped the picture back into the trunk as she reached inside it again, grabbing an old bag that she pulled free. Distracting herself from the picture, Anko emptied the bag onto her bed, seeing her old assortment of mesh shirts. Guess it was a good thing I wasn't so bright back in the day. She thought as she looked from the uni stretcher shirts through to the stuffy weighted shirts. Okay, now I'm starting to realize why the academy teachers thought I was so thick headed. She thought with a little chuckle before picking up one of the more elastic uni mesh shirts. She stretched it a little, seeing that it popped back into position easily enough. This should fit him well considering I got it before my girls developed. She muttered as she remembered her annoyance at suddenly developing S at a younger age than most would consider normal. Chucking the shirt over with the jacket, she frowned as she looked at the only two pairs of pants she'd have worn at the time. Well, those aren't gonna come close to fitting him properly, she said as she looked over what was obviously women's anbu tights. She shrugged, not really dwelling too much on the no pants thing. She suddenly paused as she smelt food. Dango? She exclaimed before grabbing Naruto's stuff and heading after the smell. Getting to the bottom of the stairs, Anko grinned as she smelt the food from up in the kitchen. Oh yeah! She exclaimed before chucking Naruto's clothes on the handrail and running upstairs for food. Would I think? Anko looked over the back of the couch she was lying on and grinned. You look ready for a mission, that's for sure. She said before seeing his pants and frowning. Don't y'all have pants that are a little less, target why? She asked. Naruto pouted as he looked down at himself. The mesh armor shirt fit snugly, showing off his muscles underneath the shirt easily while giving extra protection from the standard shuriken and kanai. The leather cloak was a dark black unlike Anko's and it seemed to fit him almost perfectly as he had flicked the collar up, buttoning it together with only the top button so that it flared out from his mid-chest downwards. His pants were the same bright orange as before though at least three quarters of the bright color was blocked from view thanks to the new leather coat. Naruto looked up at Anko, pout still in place on his face, but my favorite color is orange, Naruto said. Anko raised a brow before sighing, come here Naruto-chan, she said as she sat up properly giving him room to sit on the couch as she shimmied over. Naruto took a seat next to her as she began talking, do you know what color is my favorite, she asked. Naruto shrugged, um, purple? He asked, wondering about her hair. Anko shook her head, nope, gold, she said with a smile. Naruto frowned further, how was I supposed to know that? You're not wearing any gold stuff, Naruto said. Anko nodded, that's because gold shines brightly, and as a ninja, I don't want to be noticed. Get it? She lectured. Naruto tilted his head in thought as he nodded, yeah I get it, so I gotta get stuff that'll help me with my ninja life first yeah? he guessed. Anko nodded again with a grin, exactly, do all your favorite stuff and eat your favorite things and wear your favorite clothes around the village all you want. But when you're on a mission, I want you in combat attire, got it? she asked, ordered. Naruto nodded before reaching over to the small coffee table and grabbing a skewer of beef and veggies, but these are the only clothes I'm allowed to buy, Naruto said with a fake smile. Anko scoffed, who told ya that? Anyone can buy whatever they want, just gotta find the right store. She said, knowing for a fact that while many civilian stores turn away those with connections to a dark past or limit their range, ninja stores will sell to anyone with a Konoha headband. Naruto looked up at Anko, his fake smile dropping, huh? But all the stores I've been to have said that I can only get stuff like this. Naruto said in confusion. 
Anko shrugged as she glanced out the window, seeing that there was still some light peaking the horizon, she grinned as she hopped to her feet, keep them clothes on and grab your wallet, I'll be back in a sec, she said as she leapt over the couch and blurred downstairs at John and speed. Naruto watched her disappear with wide eyes before he hopped to his feet as well, moving over to his orange jacket that was still hanging on the stair rail. After a minute of fumbling with it, Naruto pulled out his froggy wallet and his hidden kanai, almost forgot about them. Naruto thought as he took them out of the secret loops, trying to find a place on his cloak to hide them. Hey, what time is your test starting? Anko asked as she reached the top of the stairs, pulling her cloak on over her mesh shirt, though she still wore her anbu pants and shin guards. Naruto smiled up at her, um, eight am I think, Naruto said. Anko nodded, awesome, leave those knives here and I'll show you where they can go tomorrow morning, Anko said as she walked to the door, opening it and looking back at Naruto expectantly, come on, let's get going. Naruto nodded as he followed her out the door, so, where exactly are we going? He asked as the door closed behind them. Good evening. Welcome to Shinobi Tools. We have everything we've imagined in stock and will gladly custom make anything you imagine. A twenty-something year old man said in a bored drone from his place behind the counter. Anko frowned. Hey ya dumbass where's the old hag? Anko asked. The guy behind the counter looked up from his magazine with a bored look on his face at Anko before sighing. What do you want Anko? He asked. Anko chuckled as she put her hand on Naruto's shoulder, pushing him ahead of her so that the guy could see him. Naruto chan here needs a ninja makeover. No price limit, just make it happen, she said with a grin. Naruto looked up at Anko with wide eyes, eh? I do so have a price limit, Naruto exclaimed. Zoom, but it was too late. Wow. No restrictions. I'm gonna have foon. An older lady shouted happily as she blurred around Naruto. The genin was stunned silent by the old lady that had swiftly appeared from the back room, with the quick glances he managed to get of her as she blurred around him he was pretty sure that she was taking his measurements before she blurred back behind the counter and into the back room. Naruto stood on an odd angle as he blinked in confusion, um, what's going on? Naruto asked. Fighting style. Naruto jolted as he turned away from a smirking Anko to see the old lady sticking her head out from around the corner, hey lady I. Up close Taijutsu, he uses claws kinda like the Inazuka. Anko said calmly, cutting off Naruto's words. Naruto looked up at Anko, but Nei chan I don't really have a chakra element? Naruto looked back and forth between Anko and the reappearing head in major confusion as Anko shrugged. Dunno, leave it as a blank. Anko replied. Focus. Anko shrugged, her smirk still in place at Naruto's bewilderment. Um, close combat, tracking and assassination type. Naruto looked up at Anko again, I'm not that good at track. Done. Naruto finally got to see the woman standing still as she came to a stop in front of Naruto, holding out a bunch of what appeared to be clothes before she dropped them on the ground in front of Naruto. Naruto blinked with wide eyes at the old lady who stood in front of him, she barely seemed able to stand let alone sprint around in a blur like that, uh, Naruto said staring in major confusion between her and the clothes. Anko nodded, grab your stuff Naruto, how much is it? Anko asked. The lady merely stood with a weird smile on her face as the guy behind the counter sighed, bring it over here I'll rack it up for ya, he said as he slid his magazine to the side. Naruto began picking up as much of the clothing as he could hold, placing it on the counter piece by piece while the lady watched him. Naruto began to get nervous and leaned over the counter to talk to the guy quietly. Hey, why is she looking at me like that? Naruto asked. The guy merely sighed, she's waiting for you to discover your chakra element so that she can modify your clothes some more to make them suit you. He droned on as he continued scanning. Naruto nodded slowly for a moment before looking at the guy again. What's a chakra element? Naruto asked. The guy paused as he scanned one of the last items looking at Naruto with an annoyed expression, what do I look like, your teacher? He said in return before continuing with his work. Naruto pouted and seemed to give up, not quite understanding what was going on until Anko leaned against the counter next to him, causing the blonde to look up at her, Nei chan how much will this cost? He asked, knowing for certain that he wouldn't have enough. Anko shrugged but smiled, don't worry, this stuff will be perfect for you at this point and you'll be able to afford it, she said to Naruto before looking at the guy behind the counter, right Eri? 
she asked. Airy looked up and nodded as he scanned the last item, we'll do what we do for most people. As long as you pay 10% of the price now we'll just take a fraction of your mission wages until it's paid off. With a week full of D ranks you should be just over halfway when it comes to paying. He explained before grabbing one of the coats. Naruto smiled and took the offered coat, seeing that it looked almost exactly like the one he was currently wearing, though now it had a large dark orange tinged X across the back, that's awesome. I'll take it then, Naruto exclaimed happily. Anko chuckled at Naruto's exuberance while pulling her cloak open slightly. Poof Naruto watched as Anko swung the longest part of her cloak over the five plastic bags filled with clothes, he stood amazed as the bags disappeared in a small burst of smoke. Whoa Nei chan how'd you do that? Naruto asked. Eri sighed, find out later kid, the same seals are in your coat so she would have copied those same seals into the new clothes. Ya just have to learn to activate them at the right time and in the correct way. He explained in the same drone as he went back to his magazine. Naruto grinned, pulling out his frog wallet happily, so how much do I owe ya Eri san? He asked excitedly. What do ya think? Naruto asked with a twirl as he reappeared from the staircase. Anko looked over her shoulder from her breakfast of eggs on toast, smirking at Naruto as he posed in a combat stance. He stood in his new near black cloak, the dark orange X on his back being the only real color on it, it stayed closed by a few small pieces of string that stretched around the collar of the cloak, ensuring that the top half of his torso was covered while the rest of the cloak flowed outwards. Underneath the cloak, Anko could see a darkened mesh shirt that was basically a better fitting version of the one she gave him, though this new shirt had elastic on the lower hem, causing it to be tighter on his stomach. Naruto's pants were the same near black as his cloak, tight like Anbu pants except for the very bottom which flared outwards as if it had been ripped to be shorter. His shoes were making him somewhat uncomfortable since he had never worn shoes with their design before. His toes wiggled in the, barefoot, shoes showing their dexterity and flexibility to be top-notch while they still protected his feet. Anko grinned, now y'all look like a ninja kid, did you practice that trick with the seal? Anko asked. Naruto nodded and grinned as he lifted his arm with a flowing movement, causing a kanai to slip from his sleeve into his hand unnoticeably before he showed it to Anko. Got it Nei-chan? Naruto exclaimed as he pulled his wrist back, bringing the kanai back to be pressing against the storage seal inside his sleeve. Anko stood up with a smile, looks good to me Naruto, and the emergency seal? She asked. Naruto grinned and gave her a thumbs up, already Nei chan Naruto exclaimed. Anko smiled again as she picked up the last bit of toast, awesome, you're gonna do well Naruto-chan, I can tell. She promised before taking the last bite. She used one hand to grab her own cloak from the back of her chair while the other was ruffling Naruto's hair, eat up good and I'll see ya this afternoon yeah? I should be home first so I'll do us some dinner, she said. Naruto nodded as he grabbed his two pieces of toast and began to make a sandwich out of his meal, got it Nei-chan? Naruto said as he placed the two halves of his sandwich together. Anko chuckled at Naruto's exuberance as she moved over and opened the upstairs door, now come on we both have things to do. She said, the morning sun streaming in through the open doorway. Naruto nodded as he took his first bite of the egg and bacon sandwich walking out the door quickly and waiting for Anko to lock up. Naruto caught Anko off guard with a hug as she turned from locking the door, finding herself being thrown to the ground due to Naruto's weight. Naruto finished his hug and jumped to his feet, catch ya later Nei chan Naruto said before turning and running off. Anko sighed as she heard the floorboards creak under Naruto's weight, later Naruto. She shouted to him as she shook her head, he's such a heavy kid now there's gotta be a way to use it or else it could be used to his disadvantage, she thought as she stood and dusted off her clothes. A few seconds later, Anko was roof hopping in one direction as Naruto sprinted down the road in the opposite, ready to start a new day. Morning guys. Shikamaru mumbled with a yawn as he strolled onto the training grounds. Naruto looked over and waved as he entered from the other side of the training field while Hinata shared a polite smile from her place sitting atop a center training post. Unseen by the three of them, Asuma stood hidden in one of the high up branches as he formed a few hand seals, this is my test, nowhere near as hard as Kakashi's but it will push them far I think, he thought as his genjutsu took effect. Naruto laughed at something Hinata said before he caught the scent of someone he was somewhat familiar with, I know that scent. Come on think. 
Naruto thought as he looked around, trying to see who it was so that he could try to memorize the smell so that he could put a face to it at any time. Naruto turned again as Shikamaru suddenly noticed his silence, what is it Naruto? Shikamaru asked as he followed Naruto's gaze. Stepping out of the tree line from just upwind, was a cloud village Anbu. Hearing a worried gasp, Naruto and Shikamaru turned to Hinata to see another Anbu holding her up in the air, a hand around her throat, finally, an unsealed Baikugan user. The Anbu said in a deep voice. Naruto bared his teeth in anger. Hey! Put her down! Naruto shouted as he leapt forward towards the Anbu and Hinata. Shikamaru span back towards the first ninja as he formed a hand seal, either the first was a distraction, meaning this will disable it, or we have to be against two Anbu. Two Anbu would be impossible, but if I catch this guy then maybe two on one would be able to catch this other guy off guard. He reasoned in the few seconds it took for his chakra to form. Shadow Possession Jutsu The first Anbu paused as Shikamaru's shadow latched onto him, only for Shikamaru to smirk, hey, so it was a fake. He thought as his shadow retracted, the clone dissipating as his chakra pierced it. Shikamaru shouted in pain as Naruto slammed into him from behind, the two of them sprawling before Naruto rolled onto his hands and knees, drop her now, Naruto nearly growled. Shikamaru got into the attacking stance of the Nara clan, cloud ninja. Maybe, Shikamaru thought before he stood tall, Naruto stop. Naruto paused as he glared at the Anbu who was now holding Hinata still against his chest, smart kid, you should listen to your friend Blondie, I need this Hyuga for the cloud village, the Anbu said as he moved to run away. Hold on a sec, Shikamaru said, she's not a Hyuga, Shikamaru said calmly with a shrug. The Anbu paused for a moment, glancing down at the top of Hinata's head, not being able to see her eyes from the angle, huh? Yes she is, she has the Byakugan, the Anbu said surely. Naruto's stance lowered as the muscles in his legs coiled, he had no thoughts other than to save his friend, but whatever Shikamaru was doing was making the guy stop hurting Hinata, so he stayed still as he prepared to attack. Shikamaru sighed, I'm sorry Miss Ninja, but you're mistaken, look at her eyes. Shikamaru as he took a step forward so that he was facing the man side on, pointing at Hinata with his front facing hand. Naruto glanced at Shikamaru in confusion about his lies but his eyes widened as Shikamaru's free hand had stealth fully pulled out a few shuriken, causing Naruto to look at their opponent again as cognitive thought came back to him, the moment this guy lowers his guard, that's when we'll strike. Naruto thought as he felt his heartbeat in his ears. Hanada gasped for air as she looked ahead at her new teammates, tears in her eyes as she was reliving the trauma of her kidnapping a few years prior. The Anbu sighed as he brought his attention to Hanada but she closed her eyes as she began thrashing in his grip. Hold still will ya? The Anbu said as he tried to grab Hinata's chin so that he could see her pupils. Shikamaru shifted his weight, now Naruto. Shikamaru shouted as he threw the shuriken. The Anbu looked up at Shikamaru, realizing the shuriken were heading on a path for his face, causing him to duck low behind Hinata in a dodge as Hinata closed her eyes again. Hinata. Hanada opened her eyes and dropped to her knees, revealing Naruto to the Anbu as the genin was mid-lunge with his claws out. But the Anbu was at least Jonin level, and rolled backwards to give himself a second of time before leaping forward, landing a fist to Naruto's head. Crunch! O.W. The Anbu shouted in pain, having hurt his fist against Naruto's metal skull. Naruto held his head in slight pain as he dropped into a wider stance, his claws shining brightly as he stood protectively in front of Hinata. You'll never touch my teammates, I'd sooner die than let Hinata be harmed, Naruto roared. Shikamaru smirked at Naruto's words while the same words seemed to make Hinata snap out of her fear induced shock. He's right, I can't let one of my teammates fight alone. Hinata thought as she quickly formed a hand seal, by Akugan. That got the Anbu's attention, causing him to smirk as he brought out a kanai. Now there's my proof. The Anbu said with a laugh as he sprinted forward. At the speed he was going, he was barely a blur to Naruto and Hinata as he appeared between them, kicking Naruto back a meter before he turned, thrusting the kanai forward before he suddenly froze a few centimeters from Hinata's face. Shadow Possession Success Shikamaru said calmly, his shadow having connected to Hinata's so that the moment the Anbu came near again, he'd be captured, now you too, Shikamaru proclaimed. 
Hanada and Naruto nodded as they lined up to attack, Hanada from the front and Naruto from behind. Gentle step. Palm heel strike. Hanada shouted as she leapt forward, her hand gently tapping the Anbu's chest. Claw lunge. Naruto shouted as he leapt forward with a front flip, cutting off the Anbu's arms at the shoulder in a simple move as he soared over his head, landing behind Hanada with a smirk. Poof asterisk the smirk fell as Hanada, Shikamaru and Naruto stared on confusion as their enemy disappeared in a cloud of smoke, causing the three of them to turn and come to a stop back to back as three more Anbu appeared. E.H. He had to use the escape seal against these kids? One of the Anbu said casually. The tallest of the group stepped out, shouldering a massive blade as he pointed at Hanada, You three, give us the girl or we'll kill you all, he said menacingly. Naruto bared his teeth, touch her and you die, Naruto growled. Shikamaru smirked, dropping his battle stance with a sigh, This is too troublesome, they know out move sets now and we've proven that we'll protect one another. Can you stop the test now Asuma sensei? Shikamaru asked. Naruto and Hanada turned to Shikamaru with wide eyes as hidden behind his high level genjutsu, Asuma smirked, so he figured it out, but let's see how far his conviction goes, Asuma thought. The leader of the Anbu glanced around defensively as if looking for this supposed, Asuma sensei, uh. Right kid, the Anbu said with a shrug, causing the other Anbu to laugh and for Shikamaru's eyes to narrow as he began to doubt his own analytical deduction, now step aside he said as he threw a handful of kanai in a blur. Shikamaru and Hanada went to dodge, while Naruto leapt forward. Chlink asterisk everyone paused as Naruto coughed up a mouthful of blood, the multiple kanai sticking from his torso making everyone stare at him in shock, damn. Naruto said before falling to his side. Hanada's Baikugan eyes widened as she was about to scream, but before her very eyes the wounds healed as Naruto got back up to his feet, you won't, he began as he ripped the last one from his chest, the others falling to the ground as his wounds healed. Touch my friends! Naruto shouted as he ran forward. Kai! The whole world shimmered around them, showing Asuma to be standing in the place of one of the other Anbu as they all faded from existence. Okay, let's call it a day, Asuma said with an eye smile. Shikamaru sighed in relief as Naruto and Hanada paused in shock. Hey, Asuma sensei? Hanada asked suddenly seeing the levels of genjutsu unravel around them with her special eyes. Asuma nodded as he walked forward, you all pass my test, do you want to know why? Asuma asked. Naruto's anger began to peak again, though at least his claws had retracted as he ran at Asuma, you bastard, why do you almost kill us? Naruto asked. Asuma openly laughed at that, completely dissipating the serious atmosphere in Naruto to pause in his run, don't you see something about where you're standing? There was no real danger, Asuma said. Naruto looked back to see that up until the Anbu faded, the three were in the same spot they were standing when Naruto first picked up Asuma's scent, causing Naruto's eyes to widen before he face palmed. Oh damn! I had a clue before and I completely forgot it, Naruto exclaimed. Shikamaru smirked. Hey if you were able to pick up on his presence give us a shout next time yeah? Your nose may be able to tell when anyone gets near but Hinata's Baikugan will be the tool we use to analyze the enemy before they arrive. Shikamaru said calmly. Naruto nodded to Shikamaru with a smile before his gaze traveled to Hinata, who seemed to be on the verge of crying. Hinata? Naruto asked. And then she fell to her knees, her tears pouring from her eyes as the shock wore off. Naruto's eyes widened as he ran over to her and pulled her into a comforting hug looking up to Shikamaru for an answer since that was where they all seemed to be coming from. But instead, Asuma spoke as he approached them again, there is only two worries that I have for this team, and we'll address the first one right now, Asuma said as he knelt in front of Hinata, all of the details pertaining to your kidnapping has to become common knowledge for this team Hinata, because as we all just saw, just seeing a cloud ninja is enough for you to freeze up for at least a full minute. More than enough time to kill you. Asuma said with a no-nonsense tone in his voice. Shikamaru cut in, I addressed that as I'm sure you noticed Asuma sensei. Shikamaru said, causing the janin to look up at him as Naruto just decided to hold Hinata as she cried, I called you out as a missed ninja in that fight and you didn't flinch because all you were focusing on was this test and that you had to hold your technique. Even if she didn't realize that was the moment she began to regain control over her fear. I think she needs an actual professional to look at her rather than a theorizing combat janin, 
Shikamaru said calmly before seeing Asuma frowning at him, not that I'm saying you're not good enough or something, it's just that, well there are people who specialize in things like this and Hinata only deserves the very best. Shikamaru said with a smirk. It doesn't matter, Naruto said with a blank expression, I'll take the damage, she won't be killed. Neither will Shikamaru, Naruto said, only now realizing that he should have died from the weapons that hit him and pierced his lungs and stomach. At those words Asuma frowned again, and thus comes problem number two, Naruto I don't quite understand how you survived let alone how you were healed in less than 10 seconds, but you'll die if you jump into danger like that, Asuma said seriously. Naruto looked Asuma dead in the eyes as he stood, dead? Naruto asked as his claws came out. The group gasped as Naruto crossed his arms and stabbed his own lungs, I can feel it, Naruto thought as he felt his own body healing around the steel, it hurts, but I've felt worse. I can take this, Naruto thought calmly, letting only a twitch show on his face at the pain of being skewered, after acknowledging that the pain doesn't matter, it's easy to ignore without the fear creeping in. Naruto thought as he pulled his claws back out. Asuma's eyes widened as he stepped forward to help Naruto, but watched with wide eyes as the wounds healed, Naruto. How? he asked in shock. Naruto looked up at Asuma before glancing around the team, realizing that this moment was key in their development as a unit, so he decided to tell the truth. My name is Naruto Uzumaki. I am a Jinchuriki. You know what that means? Naruto asked. Asuma stared at Naruto completely stumped that he actually knew about his condition, but it was Shikamaru that nodded, it means, the power of human sacrifice, it's a term used to classify those who have had a demon inside of them, Shikamaru said with a straight expression. Hanada's eyes widened to that of Asuma's as she looked at Naruto, but, what, she asked. Naruto spoke again before anyone could finish, his mind reeling as he felt something change inside him, not something physical, but his will, his aim in the world. Naruto held his arms to his side with a shrug, I am a sacrifice for the better of the village, and my nindo is to live up to the fourth sacrifice, Naruto said as he gestured to his chest with his thumb, I hold the nine tails and I control its power now, no more useless destruction and loss of life if I have anything to say about it. Naruto swore unblinkingly as he kept eye contact with Asuma. Asuma blinked before sighing and smiling, geez, that's awkward. Asuma said as he gestured to himself with his thumb just like Naruto did, that's almost the exact same thing I said to my sensei, but I was talking about my dad, not the fourth. Naruto blinked as Asuma's smile grew, my nindo is to protect every single person in this village. As long as the next generation grows happily and healthily, I'll be happy. Asuma said as he showed pulled up a sleeve, showing a gash down his arm, I think we'll get along fine Naruto he said before tilting his head in consideration, though. I think you may need to learn some more control over yourself. Asuma said seriously before looking to his other students. Hanada was still staring at Naruto as tears formed in her eyes, thth the Kyubi? She stuttered out. Naruto's gaze turned to Hanada, his eyes softening as he saw the fear in hers, Hanada. Naruto said as he stepped towards her. Hanada stepped back as the sunlight bounced off his bloody claws, shivering in fear for a moment and causing Naruto to stop his approach and retract it into his fist. Naruto, it doesn't matter that you're a Jinchuriki. Asuma and Naruto turned to Shikamaru as he placed a hand on Hanada's shoulder, causing her to turn to her side and look at the Nara as he smiled at Naruto casually, I've known for about three years now Naruto, and well, he said with a shrug, though I do believe a demon could play dumb, I don't think they can play that dumb. Shikamaru said with a chuckle. Naruto's brow twitched as he pointed at Shikamaru, hey, I'm not dumb, just cuz I wasn't in the top 10 like you. Top 5. Shikamaru said with a smirk. Naruto growled animalistically before Asuma placed a hand on his head, sorry Naruto, but what you just did kinda proves Shikamaru right, and besides, the way I hear it you were the dead last of your class, he said with a joking smile. Naruto face faulted before turning back to Asuma, completely forgetting about Hinata's fear as she watched the two talk in confusion, I don't understand. Naruto-kun. She thought with a tilt of her head as Naruto pouted up at Asuma and yelled back, causing Asuma to laugh, but demons are evil aren't they? She thought. Demons are forces of nature Hinata, beings that can manipulate the earth itself with their massive volumes of power. Shikamaru began, causing Hinata to look at him again as he frowned at her 
I though a comrade of mine would be able to hear difference between a being like that and the boy that's protecting us all from its destructive presence. Shikamaru said before walking over to Naruto and Asuma. Hanada blinked as tears formed in her eyes as a sudden memory occurred to her, of the bullies at the playground that would hurt Naruto and call him a monster and a freak. Is this why? Did the older boys and girls know? She thought as she looked at Naruto and how normal he was. Asuma looked over to her, raising an arm in a wave as he smiled to her. Hanada, come over here, you're part of the team too, Asuma said kindly. Hanada nodded as she swallowed nervously and jogged over. As she got close, she noticed Shikamaru nod to Naruto while Naruto was looking down again, trying to hide his face from hers. It hurt to see him so sad after seeing the happiness that was on his face a few minutes earlier, so she hugged him. Naruto jolted as Hanada hugged him from the side, Hanada? He asked in shock. Hanada smiled up at Naruto before shaking her head as she stepped back, sorry about before. I was just, um, shocked, she mumbled nervously. Naruto blinked at her before grinning as he scratched the back of his head, he, no worries Hinata-chan, Naruto said happily. Shikamaru stepped up to the two of them and placed a hand on each of their shoulders, hey you two, Asuma-sensei wants us. Shikamaru said with a nod to their sensei as the bearded man walked away from the group. Naruto and Hinata nodded before following after Shikamaru, jogging after Asuma for a few moments as he stepped out of the bushes on the other side and stopping. The trio stepped next to Asuma as he gestured to the small monument in front of them. This is the memorial stone guys, Asuma said as he held his hands in a prayer position. Those who have fallen in the name of protecting the will of fire have had their names carved into this stone and someday I hope to be on it too. Asuma said with a smile on his face. Naruto and the others looked up at Asuma in shock as Shikamaru asked, You want to die? He asked. Asuma finished his prayer and turned to his team with a serious expression. The statistics are that one in three ninja will die on the job. If I am the one, then that means that two others who aren't prepared to fall yet will be able to move on and protect the next generation until someone can replace me and inherit my will of fire. Asuma said before looking over the three members of his team, seeing the unrest and shock in Shikamaru and Hinata's eyes. But as he looked at Naruto, he saw a calm smile. Naruto nodded, well, since there's three of us I choose to be the one who will pass on my will of fire too. Besides, it'll take way longer to kill me than it will to kill my friends, Naruto said calmly. Shikamaru and Hinata stared at him in shock while Asuma couldn't help but feel a sense of kinship with Naruto's beliefs. Naruto, you're not gonna die, Shikamaru proclaimed, though he couldn't think of something else to follow up with. Naruto shrugged calmly, I'm a sacrifice already, this is the natural flow Shikamaru, Naruto said before clapping his hands in prayer and bowing to the memorial stone. The group was quiet as Naruto finished his prayer and looked up again, his eyes spotting one name on the stone out of the many, Mito Uzumaki. Naruto thought, smiling as he recognized the name not just as the first Hokage's wife, but as another strong Uzumaki who carried the same burdens he did. That didn't stop her from living a full life, I won't let it stop me from spending mine doing what's right. Naruto thought before turning back to his team. Shikamaru and Hinata offered a quick prayer as well before turning to chase after Naruto and Asuma as the two men had kept on the move. As the four of them came to a stop back at their training grounds, Asuma turned to his team with a kind smile, All right, meet up here tomorrow at 8, I'm gonna explain the first lesson then we'll take a D-rank mission while you think on that lesson, then once the mission ends we'll do the practical side of the lesson, Asuma said with pause as he pulled out another cigarette. We're gonna continue like this for the first 10 lessons before we swap to body conditioning in the mornings and then 2D ranks missions a day. Once we have you guys above 30D ranks then I'll consider getting something higher. Asuma finished as he lit his smoke with his silver lighter, got it? Got it sensei. Naruto said with a thumbs up. Hanada nodded with a smile, excited to start her growth as a ninja. Shikamaru on the other hand groaned. More lessons? Oh man, what a drag. Shikamaru said, causing the other three to laugh at his lack of enthusiasm. Naruto panted as he fell onto his butt, thanks, for the training, he said between deep breaths before clearing his throat, Anko ne. Anko smiled at Naruto, the morning sun beginning to rise behind her and casting the rooftop they were standing on to be lit up a bit brighter, no worries Naruchan, but get back up and do it one more time, she said with a grin. Naruto groaned, but you said that last time, 
Naruto said as he stood. Anko's grin didn't budge, I know I did, but you always have to prepare to keep pushing forward Naruto, now once more and that's actually it for the morning. She said calmly, not even slightly tired even though Naruto was getting pretty worn out. Naruto nodded as he shook out his limbs and rolled his shoulder, readying his chakra to run over certain parts of his skin and into the hidden the seals stitched into the clothes, ready. Naruto said calmly as his eyes calmed. Anko nodded as she revealed five shuriken and tossed them above her in the air. Naruto span quickly, the movement hiding the fact that he had just unsealed three shuriken in a kanai. Naruto tossed the shuriken and hit three for three before tossing his kanai, it took out one more shuriken from the air as its shadow moved over the final shuriken, revealing one more shuriken hiding in its shadow that knocked the last one of Anko's from the air. Naruto smiled as Anko grinned, good, now not only do you have the shadow shuriken technique, but you can do it from a quick launch like me. Anko said happily as she began picking up the shuriken. Naruto nodded and grinned himself as he looked down his sleeve, seeing that the stitched in seal was in no way changed or damaged, thanks. Anko ne. Naruto wheezed out as he fell on his back. Naruto paused as he heard someone land on the rooftop, but since Anko was smiling in that direction, he figured it was someone she knew, oh yeah, food time. Anko said happily as she sat next to Naruto. Naruto rolled onto his stomach and looked up, seeing another Anko placing a tray down between the two of them. Naruto sat up and grinned, Ichiraku ramen? Awesome, Naruto exclaimed in excitement. Anko smiled as she sat down next to Naruto, grabbing her chicken ramen as Naruto began to scarf down his own food, yeah, she said as the shadow clone disappeared in a puff of smoke, and the two there say hi by the way, she finished. Naruto smiled as he finished a mouthful of the noodles, I haven't seen them in a while, can we go eat dinner there sometime? Naruto asked. Anko shrugged as she had her own mouthful, covering her full mouth as she spoke, yeah, why not? Naruto smiled again and slurped the last of his bowl down at a remarkable speed, can I go have the first shower Anko ne? Naruto asked with a smile. Anko nodded and gestured to the rest of the rubbish from their food delivery and his leftover bowl, go ahead, but take the trash with ya, she said as she turned and flopped her legs over the side of the roof, watching the people walk by below her, I'm just gonna rest here for a while, Anko said before yawning. Naruto nodded as he stood, scooping up the rubbish in his arms, see ya soon, Naruto said before jogging over to the gap in the ledge, hopping down to the rundown walkway to enter through the front door to the top floor. And now for our first day as a team, Naruto thought excitedly as he rushed to get ready for the day ahead. Tree climbing? It was Hinata's turn to sigh for once as opposed to Shikamaru, it's one of the most basic chakra control exercises, you two really haven't heard of it? She asked her teammates. It was half past eight in the morning when the group of three had finished their fifty laps of varying running types around the field. Sprinting, high knees, back kicks and the worst one for all of them, handstand laps, though luckily the handstand lap only had to be done once since it was still their first week. This was when Asuma had them start their stretches as he explained the first skill he was going to teach them. Asuma blew out the smoke from his lungs as he leaned calmly against the center training post, yep, tree climbing. But here's the plot twist, no hand allowed, Asuma said with a smirk at Naruto and Shikamaru's confused expressions. Naruto nodded, I'll use my claws, he exclaimed as he slid his claws out. Shikamaru sighed, then it wouldn't be a chakra control exercise idiot, Shikamaru said before stepping forward, so, how do we do this then? And how will it help with our chakra control? Shikamaru asked Asuma. Asuma smirked before waving them over to him the three of them surrounding him as he sat down and put his feet about halfway up the training post, what we're gonna be doing is channeling chakra to the soles of our feet, like so, Asuma said as he focused his chakra, causing his feet to lift off the slightest bit from the tree, now since all of our weight is on the ground, you can calmly regulate just how much chakra a body of your size will need to create the right chakra platform for you. As you can see, mine are off the post now, that's because I'm using too much chakra, Asuma explained. Hanada confidently went to the post next to Asuma, taking a seat next to it as she put her feet on the training post, forming a ram seal to concentrate her chakra before she suddenly stood horizontally, if you do just the right amount your feet stick, but not enough and you'll fall too. Asuma nodded at Hanada's explanation and stood up from the ground, now while Hanada's in the middle, 
I want all of you to have a single turn at this. Just remember three things. Your chakra coming out from the soles of your feet with an even spread, your chakra level maintaining and varying as you walk and finally the perfect amount of chakra for you, Asuma said with a smile. The kids nodded as Shikamaru and Naruto moved to the posts, readying their chakra as they lay on their backs and placed the bottom of their feet to the posts. After a few seconds of silence, Shikamaru opened his eyes, ready sensei. He said calmly, theorizing that even if he overshot it, that meant he knew that it would take even less effort than he thought. Naruto held his seal for a few moments longer than Shikamaru as he formed a random amount of chakra, estimating that however close he was, he could just add more until he had gotten the right amount, ready, Naruto exclaimed. Hanada turned on her post so that she was walking horizontally around it, her Byakugan active and showing her their chakra, Shikamaru is close, but still needs work. She thought before focusing on Naruto her eyes widening at the massive amounts of chakra he had in just one foot let alone the both of them. She opened her mouth to warn him, but it was too late. Whereas Shikamaru merely couldn't grip the log when he tried to stand horizontally, sliding back down without any show that he was even close, Naruto had only just placed his feet on the log after channeling the chakra. Asterisk THOM Asterisk Asuma reached out after Naruto as the boy shot from the clearing with a shout, causing the three left there to stand in silence as they saw a plume of water splash up through the air about 20 meters past the clearing, causing Asuma to sigh in relief as he heard the sudden sputtering and complaining from Naruto as he stormed back to the clearing. A sopping wet Naruto marched into the clearing with a frown, what the heck was that? Naruto exclaimed loudly. Shikamaru smirked in amusement as Hanada giggled at the, cute, expression on Naruto's face. Meanwhile Asuma was shaking his head in disbelief. That was enough chakra for the beginner's version of the burning ash technique. He thought as he took a drag of his smoke. This thought made Asuma look up in realization, hmm. I know it's early for elemental manipulation, but if I find out what they're aligned to then I can at least plan for the future and in Hinata's case, give her some actual training to do. I wonder what they'll get. Asuma thought before looking around the group as Hinata explained Naruto's overuse of chakra to the two of them. Well. I guess I can ask for our first D rank to be in the Shinobi district, that way I can pick some elemental chakra paper. Asuma thought before turning back to the group. Attention, Asuma said loudly. The three genin jumped in shock at his shouted before Shikamaru stepped forward to Asuma, just waiting patiently as Naruto and Hinata got the idea and did the same. Asuma smirked, All right, you three, I want you to keep thinking about this technique today as we do our first D rank mission together though I'll be there to watch over you guys it's actually up to you, got it? Asuma said. Naruto nodded with a grin as Hinata nodded nervously, though Shikamaru just sighed, so, what do we have to do? Shikamaru asked. Asuma opened the double doors on the first floor of the Hokage Tower, this is the mission hall. From here you collect a mission and once the matter is resolved, you fill out a report and return it here, gaining your mission pay relevant to how the mission went. Until you guys do your first day rank, that's how the process is always gonna be. Asuma explained as he led the three over to the only empty line. Naruto glanced around curiously as they approached the desk with a large purple print of the letter D on the sign above it. Where do you guys think the others are? Shouldn't they be here too? Naruto asked. Shikamaru shrugged. I guess they were here earlier? Or maybe were the early ones? Shikamaru theorized. Hanada stood on her toes as she began to walk slightly faster making Naruto and Shikamaru refocus on the task at hand as they all arrived at Asuma's side at the mission desk, the Janin smiling at the Chunin sitting there. Hey Katetsu, thought you'd be on the gates today? Asuma asked. Katetsu looked up, the guy smirking as he took his hands back from the ten scrolls spread across the table. Nah, since Azumo is still recovering from that bodyguard mission I'm being assigned single tasks until he's better. Someone else is covering it, he said with a sigh, gotta admit. I miss the radiant sunrises through those gates. He said, smirking at the memory before gesturing to the scrolls for Asuma. Asuma stepped aside and gestured to the genin, actually they need the full introduction, Asuma said. Katetsu leaned with a smile, oh, you guys are the first of the new graduates, congrats. He said kindly before gesturing them forward, letting the three step up to the desk in front of Asuma. Two of the genin smiled while the third just sighed again. So Asuma spoke up, is there any of the beginning missions in the Shinobi district? Something that'll get us near Higurashi's? Asuma asked. Katetsu laughed, yeah perfect, 
This mission is to collect the discarded metal scraps from the three major ninja tool sellers in the district and deliver them to Higurashi's forge, the last privately owned forge in the village. Kotetsu said, gesturing to the second from the right, it's also the highest paying of the lot today. Kotetsu said with a grin to the kids, estimated time four hours, he finished. The kids looked at each other smiling before looking up at their sensei, getting a nod in return for their look. Shikamaru nodded, we'll take it. Hanada's Bayakugan eyes led the way as they walked down the main road, turning left around a corner store as she pointed to the large building on the next corner, that's it there, Higurashi's weapons, she reported. Asuma nodded, glad that they had found the place easily, alright then, for this mission I want the three of you to choose on a captain for the team. This time through they'll do the talking and planning. For every D rank that's how I want it done guys. So go ahead, Asuma said with a smile as he considered pulling out a smoke but decided against it as Naruto pointed at Shikamaru. Shikamaru raised a brow as Naruto grinned, you should be the troop leader, Naruto said. Shikamaru frowned as he looked to Hinata, seeing her nodding silently in agreement, before sighing, what a drag. He muttered as he began walking ahead, holding out his hand to Hinata, give me the scroll and get out some paper or something, we have to get the name of the other stores so we can go get the stuff, he said as he left. Asuma waited outside as his genin team went in, I'll let them handle this part by themselves. He thought as he stopped at the door, letting it close in front of him. Asuma glanced through the glass window as Shikamaru showed the mission scroll to the guy at the counter, good, straight to business. He thought as he glanced behind the counter to the shelves, yep, and they still sell the chakra paper here. He thought before his mind trailed off, seeing a shelf of weapons exactly like his own, well damn. If they become standard then my technique won't be as surprising, he thought with a frown before stepping out of their potential view. Asuma waited a few minutes before the trio walked out, pausing as he addressed them, so, what did you find out? Asuma asked. Shikamaru smirked, we have to go to three of the other ninja tool shops and bring their trash here, he began explaining as he held his hand out to Hinata. Hinata finished writing on her notepad and tore the sheet out to give it to Shikamaru, specialist ninja garb two blocks down the eastern road, Shikamaru said. Hanada gave Naruto his notepad and he blinked before looking across the road, uh, right there, Yin Yang Shinobi where, Naruto said. Hanada held up her notepad to Asuma, and mine is just one block south, Hanada said. Naruto frowned before he interjected, hey Shika, why don't we swap, he offered. Shikamaru raised a brow at Naruto, why's that, not that I mind less work for me, Shikamaru said. Naruto smiled, well, I can carry it all. Trust me, I know I can, Naruto said. Shikamaru raised a brow, in one go. Well, I guess if you say so, he said before swapping notes with Naruto. The three looked up at Asuma as the man just nodded, if you guys think that's good enough then go ahead, Asuma said with a smile. The trio looked at each other and nodded. Hanada and Naruto in determination and Shikamaru with a defeated expression before the trio split up. Asuma watched them all leave with a chuckle, these guys are way more goal driven than I was as a kid, he mumbled as he pulled out a smoke and lit up, though I think Shikamaru just thinks putting up with the effort is less effort than dealing with Naruto's complaining, he thought as he exhaled the smoke, walking into the shop to buy some elemental chakra paper before the kids got back. Next. Shikamaru stepped up in line and gestured towards his headband tied around his bicep, Hey, I'm the ninja sent to pick up your metal scraps. Shikamaru said in a bored tone. The man behind the counter nodded, Oh hey, he said before turning to face the back, Yo boss, the delivery guy is here, the man said loudly. An older man stepped out from the back and nodded to Shikamaru, Follow me out the back, the trolleys are there, he said. Shikamaru just nodded as he followed along. Hanada opened the door to the quiet shop. Um, hello? She asked softly, her voice echoing around the apparently empty room. Hearing the sound of a muffled voice, she walked through the shop until she walked past what looked like a stack of fallen books. MMPH. Hanada blinked before forming a ram seal, by a kugan. She announced, looking through the pile to see what was making the noise and where everybody was. Her eyes widened as she ran over to the books, oh no, are you okay? Hello? She asked over and over again as she pulled books out of the pile, soon digging out a hand and a head and then the rest of the person came out with a sigh of relief. Yeah, 
I'm fine now, thanks, the young man said excitedly as he jumped to his feet, shaking Hinata's hand fiercely. Hinata blinked at the odd man who suddenly ran around the counter into the back room. Hinata stood in silence for a moment as she once again used her Byakugan to watch the odd man through the wall behind the bookshelf. Um, excuse me? Boom Hinata jumped back as the man pushed out a large trolley with a tarp in it, filled to the brim with scraps and small shards of metal. Yep, this is it for the little things, can you come back for the large stuff in the next trolley? I'll have it ready in a few minutes. The guy said as he ran back around to the back of the shop. Hanada just blinked for a moment as she stared after the disappearing man. Shrugging before turning and beginning to push the trolley towards the door, well, nearly halfway there, she thought as she left the store. Hey, are you sure kid? The man said, his wife staring at the blonde over his shoulder. Naruto nodded as he was walking on all fours, eight trolleys chained together before the chain was wrapped up around his torso, yeah, this is great training. Naruto said as he went to crawl forward, trying as best he could. The couple blinked as Naruto barely managed to roll the trolleys a few inches before they came to a stop, even on flat ground this be hard, I don't think that kid can do it up this hill in one go. The woman said, even though it was only a slight incline. Naruto's ear twitched, having heard the quiet comment before he gritted his teeth in determination, come on, he growled out as his claws came out. People gasped as Naruto hooked his claws into the ground and began to steadily pull himself along, grinning in victory as he was on his way, his muscles screaming in resistance even though nothing was slowing him down. Asuma nodded as Shikamaru stepped out the shop's front door for the second time, finished sensei. Can I just wait with you? Shikamaru asked hopefully, looking like the ten minutes of effort on his part was too much. Asuma chuckled at Shikamaru before nodding as he saw Hanada arrive with the first trolley got the first one, she said as she went to push it to the front door. Asuma stopped her, if this mission had to be done at maximum efficiency what could you do right now to make it more likely to finish sooner? He asked her. Hanada blinked up at her sensei for a moment of silence before her gaze drifted to Shikamaru. Shikamaru-kun. Could you please take this inside for me while I go grab the second one? She asked softly. Shikamaru sighed before nodding, yeah sure I guess. He mumbled before getting to work again. Asuma chuckled as Shikamaru went inside with the trolley and Hinata jogged off. Good, now the only one left to worry about is Naruto. Asuma thought as he had another smoke. A few minutes later, Shikamaru came back out of the shop with a heavy sigh, done, now I don't have to. Oh man what a drag. Shikamaru said, his shoulders slouching as he looked past Asuma. The Jonin turned and couldn't help the chuckle that came out as he saw Naruto crawling along the road, dragging a ridiculous amount of weight behind him in the form of metal-filled trolleys, how ya go in Naruto? Asuma asked. The blonde grinned as he stabbed his claw into the ground, crawling forward another step as he spoke, pretty. Good. Sensei. Naruto managed to say between pulls before dropping onto his face in front of the door. Shikamaru sighed as he looked over Naruto and the trolleys but he glanced inside and noticed that the area they were supposed to wheel them all around to was not only empty, but covered in the shadows. Shikamaru smirked as he began forming hand seals, ninja art, shadow portal jutsu, he exclaimed. Asuma blinked as Shikamaru's chakra fluctuated and the first trolley dropped into its own shadow, interesting, a small-scale transport technique. Asuma thought as he watched Shikamaru do the next couple of trolleys. Naruto grinned as he watched the trolleys disappear one by one. He started undoing the chain that connected him to the trolleys from around his chest as he looked up, noticing Hinata coming around the corner with her second trolley. Hinata chan, he exclaimed before he ran off. Shikamaru sighed as he was left to transport the last three trolleys inside with his jutsu, glancing over to Asuma once he finished. Are we done now? Can I go home? he asked with a yawn. Asuma chuckled out a cloud of smoke not yet Shikamaru, but I'll tell ya what, you can go on lunch break early. At midday I want you back at the training field and if you're late, I'll tell your father. Asuma threatened, hoping that the threat of a clan head looking over his shoulder would motivate him. Shikamaru smirked, K, thanks sensei. Shikamaru said before sitting down where he was and closing his eyes. Asuma blinked at Shikamaru before taking another drag of his smoke, glancing over to Naruto and Hinata as Naruto continued pushing the trolley in front of him, Hinata standing at its front to steer it since Naruto couldn't see. After all, 
only she could see through solid objects. As they arrived Hinata pouted, this one won't fit through the door, she muttered, noticing a single thick piece of metal sticking up taller than the rest. Naruto nodded, thinking that was her way of asking him to do something about the problem, got it. Naruto said as he simply pulled the one tall piece out and carried it overhead. Hinata smiled at Asuma and Shikamaru before pushing the trolley the rest of the way through into the shop, Naruto following along with his random big chunk of metal. Asuma nodded to himself as the two of them went to finish the last of the mission, once they come out I'll tell them about the completion signature. Asuma thought as he decided to stand tall, stretching out his back for a moment as it cracked and popped. Asuma glanced through the glass of the shop again, noticing Naruto was no longer visible and Hinata was talking to the woman in the shop over the counter, causing Asuma to smirk as he saw Hinata holding the mission scroll out to the woman, huh? Looks like at least Hinata knows what to do. Asuma thought before seeing Naruto come around from behind the shop, the large blacksmith being the one to lead out the blonde boy while laughing in the background, causing Asuma to smile softly at their interaction. Well, now we'll go get our payment. Whoa, this is great, Naruto exclaimed with a grin as he counted out the notes in the envelope given to him from Asuma. Asuma chuckled as Hinata and Shikamaru smiled at Naruto's loud announcement, that's only a D ranks pay Naruto, 30 bucks isn't that much. Shikamaru said as he pocketed his own envelope. Naruto grinned at him, it is to me, and if this is what we get for a D rank. Naruto said before looking up at Asuma, how much do we get for an A rank? Naruto asked. Asuma chuckled, well, we won't be going on any A ranks soon, but you do bring up a good point, Asuma began as he lead his team down the road towards the training grounds, D ranks are minimal cost, about 20 to 50 dollars depending on the mission. And C ranks are usually above the 50 mark but can stretch to be way more depending on the mission's time frame. The higher ranking missions have their own variables which may or may not affect costs and things of the like, he said before lifting his sig to his lips. Hanada glanced up at that moment, so, um, sensei, what are we doing now? she asked. Asuma smiled, remember this morning with the chakra exercise? Well I hope you listened before and thought on it cause we're learning it this afternoon he said with a chuckle, and you're not going home till ya do get it. Shikamaru and Naruto paled slightly at that, though Hinata sighed in relief, Anyo. What about me then? I already know the training, she said, hoping she wasn't being too boastful. Asuma smirked at that moment, yes I know, I have something a little more advanced for you to begin on today. He said smugly as if he knew some big secret. Damn it! Naruto shouted as he fell from high in the air flipping at the last minute to land heavily on his feet, cracks appearing in the ground beneath him as he growled up at the tree in front of him, why can't I get this? He shouted angrily before punching the ground. Naruto. Calm down, Asuma said, you can't keep letting your emotions rule you like this. Look at me, Asuma ordered. Naruto was still growling at the ground for a moment before closing his eyes and taking a deep breath, sorry sensei. This is just really frustrating. Naruto said with a scowl before looking up at Asuma. Asuma smiled softly to Naruto, letting him know it was alright, I want you to look at Shikamaru over there, Asuma said. Naruto turned to look at the Nara boy as he practiced his recently learned tree climbing technique, standing horizontally out from a tree as he watched the sky above. See how he's relaxed? He is probably the smartest out of you all because of the fact that he can keep a cool head throughout almost any situation. And Hinata got this good from her years of training the skill in the Hyuga clan, Asuma said with a smile to Naruto. You know how long it took me to learn this when I first started? He asked Naruto. The blonde shrugged, still watching Shikamaru's calm stance, a few hours? I mean we've been at this for four hours now and I can barely make it past halfway. Naruto said with a frown. Asuma chuckled, it took my brother just over six hours. I thought that was amazing since I only managed to get it after two days of training. Asuma said, causing Naruto's eyes to widen as he turned to his sensei, it's not easy to do Naruto, you're actually making incredible progress. Asuma said encouragingly. Naruto beamed at the praise, really, thanks sensei. Naruto exclaimed with a smile, turning towards the tree again as he cracked his knuckles, I got this, he said before running forward. Asuma smirked at Naruto's predictable behavior. Just give him a dash of motivation and he'll accomplish anything. He said before seeing Shikamaru and frowning as the boy had once again stopped to sleep on a branch, 
Shikamaru. Back to work. Asuma shouted across the clearing. Do you really want your father to know how much you're slacking off? He asked. Shikamaru didn't seem to react at all, causing Asuma to frown. Sensei? Asuma glanced to his side to see Hinata blushing slightly as she watched Shikamaru. He um, Shikamaru-kun has an inherent fear of his mother for some reason, and um, she said as if embarrassed to be talking about her teammate's personal life, his father is supposedly lazier than him. She said before turning and jogging back to her little patch of ground and picking up her leaf again. Asuma raised a brow at that little tidbit of information before turning to Shikamaru and once more shouting across the training field, Fine, if you're that confident I won't be able to contact your father I'll just tell your mother, he said, noticing Shikamaru's back stiffen at the words, She works at the Nara's herb house right? He asked rhetorically. Asuma blinked as suddenly Shikamaru was back to work at twice the pace as before, running up and down the tree in a near blur, forcing the Jonin to stifle a chuckle. Their team dynamic is a bit off, but with Hinata's skill, Shikamaru's mind and Naruto's raw power, I doubt any of the other teams would stand a chance against them at this point in time. Alright, that's it for the day guys, Asuma said with a clap, getting their attention while he stomped out his cigarette, last revision back on the logs, come on, he said as he walked over to the training posts, coming to a stop next to it while his genin came over to him. Naruto and Hinata came to a stop at Asuma's sides after jogging over, though they all had to wait a few moments before Shikamaru lazily walked over, so just like this morning? Naruto asked curiously, staring at the log in front of him in determination. Asuma nodded as he stepped back, watching the kids all lie on their back before putting their feet to the posts. Hinata stood instantly and walked the few small steps that was available up the post before she walked around it horizontally, perfect Hinata. Asuma said, provoking a small blush from the girl. Asuma turned his attention to Shikamaru and Naruto, seeing the two of them walking slowly around the post just as well as Hinata, though Naruto's facial expression made it rather obvious that he still had to actually focus some of his attention to the task at this stage, Shikamaru, Naruto. I can gladly say that you both have learned this skill in a single afternoon and I reckon if you guys are to try to use this skill in everyday life, then it'll become second nature to you as well, he said with a nod of approval. Seeing that his job was done, Shikamaru disconnected his chakra, letting himself land heavily on his back and honestly not caring, so what's the last thing then sensei? He said with a glance to Asuma's hip. The jonin smirked, so, you noticed I have something? He asked. Shikamaru nodded while Hinata and Naruto got down from their own posts, turning to face Asuma as the man conversed with Shikamaru. Yeah, ever since you had a split up for the mission you've been double checking your pouch and looking at Hinata. Obviously you were wondering if she should start on this new training earlier since she was done ahead of us, Shikamaru said. Asuma smirked, very astute Shikamaru, but you missed the part where I actually did have Hinata go ahead with the training. He began before his eyes trailed to Hinata. Knowing that while the Hyuga girl could speak for herself, she needed a confidence boost, Hinata, why don't you explain it? Asuma asked as he held out something from his pouch. Hinata blushed before nodding as she took the sheets of paper from her sensei. Okay, um, she began, turning to Shikamaru and Naruto as she bit her lip in thought, this is elemental chakra paper, and um, it's made from a tree inside the compound of the fire temple thanks to a specific breed of trees, she said, blushing as Naruto and Shikamaru seemed intent on her and her words, as so, you just channel your chakra into a piece and it'll react in a way to signify your elemental affinity. She said as she held up a single piece of the paper and channeled her chakra into it, making the paper wet as the very edge of it crumbled to dust. I have water nature chakra and a slight affinity towards earth that's natural in most Hyugas. The earth part at least. She said with a forced smile as if having water chakra was actually a fault. Cool, Naruto exclaimed with a grin, so you can learn water stuff like what sensei showed us with his wind stuff right? He shouted excitedly at the idea of throwing cool water jutsu here and there, way flashier than invisible wind chakra. Seriously, what's the point of having an awesome technique if no one could see it? How lame is wind chakra? Naruto was pulled from his thought as Hinata offered the other two pieces to her teammates, so all you have to do is channel your chakra. She said in conclusion to the two of them, trailing off as she looked up at Asuma. The Jonin nodded to her, causing her to smile at the silent praise something she was far from used to. Shikamaru sighed as he channeled his chakra into it, it'll probably come out with shadows or something, 
he thought before the paper took effect. Shikamaru raised a brow as the paper ignited in fire. Huh? I'm a fire type? He asked rhetorically. The three others turned to him as Asuma smirked. I'm guessing you were expecting shadows after seeing how Hinata's paper was affected by her bloodline. He asked, earning a frown and a nod in return. That's one of the key differences in your clans. While those of the Hyuga have a Keke Jenke which is in their blood, the Nara's skills with shadows are actually a secret technique that can be taught to anyone once they know how to use pure yin chakra, which has only ever been closely done by the pure yang chakra that the Akamichi can utilize to change their physical shape. Asuma explained. Naruto blinked in confusion as Shikamaru nodded. Interesting. Maybe this can work to my advantage. He mumbled to himself before going back to looking up at the sky. Asuma smirked at Shikamaru's words, but he was quickly distracted by Naruto's shout. What the? Mine broke! Naruto exclaimed as he watched half of his piece of paper fall to the ground. Hanada and Shikamaru raised a brow while Asuma's eyes widened. Naruto, what happened? He asked as he stepped closer to Naruto. The blonde frowned up at Asuma. I channeled my chakra, but the paper just fell in half. It didn't get wet like Hanada's or flamey like Shika's. Naruto whined, making Shikamaru frown slightly at the nickname he thought he had kicked back at the academy. Asuma quickly took out a spare piece of the paper and held it out to Naruto, here, do it again, Asuma said with a hopeful smile. Naruto raised a brow at Asuma's behavior as he took the paper. He channeled his chakra and frowned as it fell in half again. He looked up at Asuma and blinked at the weird grin on Asuma's face. Um, sensei? Naruto asked with a fearful look on his face. It had been exactly three weeks since then. Though Asuma was a usually unmotivated person. Discovering that Naruto had wind chakra seemed to kick his need to teach into hyperdrive, but the man knew that showing favoritism wouldn't go down well with two clan heirs on his team, so he upped the ante for all of them. Each morning started with a demonstration of their current skills and a warm up before taking two or sometimes three D ranks a day, ending with a lunch before Asuma set them on their paths for self improvement. During their team training, Asuma found a jutsu for each of them to train in, and now was when all that training would come to fruition. Asuma smirked as he looked over his three students, the four ninja standing in the center of their battered training grounds, all right everyone, time for a check of your ninjutsu, he said around the sig in his mouth with a loud clap. The trio nodded as they looked at one another, but Shikamaru yawned as he began to walk away, I'll go first, he said lazily as had become his habit, after all, the earlier he started, the sooner he finished and could relax. As Shikamaru crossed the halfway mark of the field, he stood in a small circle that had been scratched into the ground, from here okay? He asked loudly. Asuma nodded and ushered Naruto and Hinata into place, over double the distance of what Shikamaru's shadow techniques could usually reach, do it, Naruto yelled excitedly. Shikamaru formed three quick hand seals before blowing into his closed fists, he pulled his lips away as he smirked, fire style, flare, he announced as he calmly tossed what looked like a small ball of fire behind him. The ball hit the ground and exploded upwards in a bright light, not enough to really do much damage to anything, but its brightness temporarily blinded his targets as his shadow was magnified and made far more prominent. So before the light faded, Shikamaru made the rat seal, shadow possession, Shikamaru shouted. With his shadow already stretching further and being way darker than usual, it took little effort to not only grab one target, but both of his teammates. The flare died down but their shadows were already connected so it didn't distort or break. Shikamaru smirked as he walked forward, causing Naruto and Hinata to come towards him. Asuma nodded, good work Shikamaru, alright, who wants to go next? He asked as Shikamaru let his technique drop. Naruto and Hinata looked between each other and he gestured her forward towards the river nearby. She nodded and began forming hand seals, finishing a few seconds later, water style, water wall, she exclaimed. Water whipped out from the river, encircling her slowly before it shot up in a 10 meter tall wall for a few seconds, raining down and causing a circle around Hinata to form in the grass. Um, I can hold it for nearly 10 seconds now, but I can't manipulate it yet, she said with a saddened look. Asuma patted her on the head, great work Hinata, that's a B-rank jutsu for a reason, it's extremely difficult, he said with a cheeky grin as she looked at him with wide eyes, sorry that I lied earlier saying it was easy to make you confident. It worked Hanada. 
You are a powerful water user now and wielder of the best defensive move on the team. He said with a smile towards the stunned Hyuga, and the next steps are S rank anyway, so I never expected you to get them while you're a genin, Asuma said casually. Hanada blinked in shock, I learned a B rank? Just like the advanced A trigrams techniques? She asked. Asuma grinned and nodded, yep, good thinking, you should learn those too since you can knock over B ranks so easily. He said with a confident smile in her direction before turning to Naruto as the boy took a deep breath and crouched near the tree line. Now, let's see how he's managed, Asuma said softly. Hanada activated her Byakugan and Shikamaru glanced over at Naruto as the blonde took a few deep breaths. I got this. He muttered under his breath as he closed his eyes and clenched his fists. Naruto's claws slowly slid free from his left hand as his right hand formed a ram seal to help focus causing his claws to glow slightly with chakra before naruto shifted his stance wind style wind cutter naruto shouted as he slashed his claw through the air three meter long blades of wind flew out in a straight line spinning through the air and cutting through the tree a few meters in front of him before they hesitated in the air holding still for a few seconds before they dissipated into air naruto grinned in success as he turned to his sensei seeing the janin clapping loudly with a smile very good naruto i knew you'd get it if you had the right push asuma said proud to have his student in wind chakra getting down one of asuma's own trademark wind jutsu naruto couldn't hide the grin that stretched across his face well you know what that means sensei naruto exclaimed asuma blinked for a moment in though before realization hit him oh yeah i did say once you guys got these down i'd ask for a c rank but i still have to check if you have cleared the minimum 50 d ranks Asuma mumbled to himself. 47 missions, Shikamaru said with a frown. Oh man, that means we only got one or two days left before this C rank, what a drag. Shikamaru groaned. Asuma blinked, huh? We really have done 47 D ranks already? He asked. Hanada and Shikamaru nodded while Naruto was counting on his fingers, though it was once again Shikamaru who spoke after a heavy sigh, yeah. For the past three weeks we've been doing these stupid house chores, he complained. Hanada smiled softly at Shikamaru, can we request specific missions? Maybe if we ask for some that are more adequate for our new skills, we can finish the last three tomorrow, she said, her voice lifting at the end as if she was asking permission. Asuma nodded with a grin, yeah, good thinking Hanada, tell ya what, let's call it an end early today and I'll go sift through the missions to find the ones we want most he said before smiling over the laziest member of his team, letting his gaze wander across all three of his students with a smile, you know, as a sensei I didn't think I'd have to work too much, but I guess you guys make it fun. He said with a supportive smile gracing his lips, I hope you guys realize what you've fully achieved as of today. These techniques were the first steps to fully mastering your own chakras and now I want each of you to learn something from home, Asuma said. That earned him a round of blank looks, though it was Shikamaru who frowned as he asked, so, I gotta do more shadow training with my clan. He asked, earning a nod in return, hmm. Okay, I'll train with dad. Shikamaru said with a slight smirk, knowing his father's training was easy enough. Naruto grinned, alright, now I'll have Enko Ne teach me a clone technique, Naruto shouted energetically. Hanada smiled at her teammates before her smile fell slightly. I doubt father will want to stop in Hanabi chan's training. I don't want to slow her growth. Hanada thought with a slight frown. Asuma quickly scanned the three of them with his eyes, noticing Hanada's reluctance for home training and making him sigh. Damn, I thought they'd all want training at home, less work for me after all. Maybe if I find out why she's hesitant, he thought to himself with a nod. All right Naruto, Shikamaru, I'll come pick you guys up each around seven tomorrow. So be out the front waiting all right? We're gonna go straight to the missions and get them done. Asuma said as he stepped up to Hinata, placing a hand on her shoulder to hold her back for a moment. Shikamaru just nodded and turned to leave. Seven. Oh man what a drag. He whined as he walked away. Naruto nodded with a grin. Seven M. Got it sensei. He said, his grin turning to Hinata. CYA tomorrow Hinata. Naruto exclaimed happily as he turned away. Hanada raised her hand in a wave, be by Naruto-kun, she said softly, though he seemed to hear as he waved over his shoulder to her. Asuma smiled as he noticed Hanada watching the two boys walk away, the smile that sat on her lips seeming oddly, 
sad. That made Asuma's smile fall. Asuma didn't consider himself a genius by any stretch of the imagination, but his bingo book name was Wind Guardian of Konoha, for his place amongst the Fire Temple Guards when he was actually the head tactician. So he was apparently smart, but he knew there was always more to know. Like why going home always made Hinata seem sad. Hinata, Asuma began, making the timid girl turn to him as her sadness disappeared behind her usual timid and tired look. I realize that I know a lot about you now, but I don't know your family. Can we talk about them? He asked softly, not wanting to pry while seeing how she'd react. To his surprise, she shook her head, S sorry Asuma sensei, but father tells me not to speak of the clan to anyone, she apologized. Asuma openly laughed, causing her to look up at him in shock, Hanada, you are the clan heiress. I think you are allowed to discuss with your sensei just little things about your family. I don't want to know any secrets. Asuma explained kindly. Hanada nodded slowly as she looked down again. Um, okay, she said, still feeling unsure. Asuma nodded as he began to walk Hanada back to the Hyuga clan compound. Great, so, you mentioned your father. What's he like? Asuma asked, already having his own opinion on the seemingly emotionless clan head. Hanada was just quiet as she continued to stare at the ground, causing Asuma to walk on in silence as a confident seriousness came over him. Asuma casually lit another cigarette as he followed Hinata from a half step behind, I'll just come talk to him myself then. Asuma thought confidently as he adjusted his outfit slightly. It was a few more minutes of silence where Asuma just enjoyed his smoke as he thought of the challenging situation ahead. This is such a drag, why are we following them? Shikamaru asked as Naruto dragged him across the rooftops behind their teammates. Naruto grinned as they leapt the gap between two buildings. Hey you're the one that said sensei was weirdly persistent about Hinata's family, we gotta know why, Naruto exclaimed somewhat loudly. Shikamaru sighed, no, we really don't, he complained. Down, Naruto shouted, tackling Shikamaru to the rooftop. Shikamaru shoved Naruto off of him, ow what the hell, he asked angrily. Naruto crawled off of Shikamaru and up to a sign, peeking over it as Hinata led Asuma down another smaller road. What's down there? Naruto asked. Shikamaru sat up next to Naruto and sighed, the Hyuga compound and the old Uchiha compound. She's probably just going home. He said with a frown, although, it is odd that Asuma sensei is walking her all the way there. He thought as he turned to Naruto. The blonde slid down into the next alleyway. Come on, hurry. Naruto stage whispered as he ran out and across the street. Shikamaru sighed as he formed a hand seal. Idiot. Shikamaru muttered. After a few moments of concentration, he formed a few more seals before dropping into his own shadow. Hash 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 Asuma smirked as he noticed Shikamaru and Naruto move past them in the shadows. Hmm. Well I guess if they make it in they can listen, at least it's a free of charge infiltration skills analysis. He thought happily as they approached the gate. Hanada looked up at the guard who nodded and opened the door for her though he looked pointedly at Asuma, M my sensei. Hanada explained. The other guard shrugged, that's not enough to allow entrance. My name is Asuma Serutobi, he said while placing a hand on his hip, clearly showing them his sash that he had hanging like a belt, and I'll be speaking to Hiyashi now if you don't mind, he said as he smiled politely. The two guards frowned for a moment before opening the gates completely, allowing the two of them entry and causing Hanada to look up at her sensei in a new light, S sensei? she asked as she jogged in after him. Asuma smiled as he led her to her father's office, yes Hanada? he replied innocently. She stared up at him wide-eyed as most of the people they walked past either bowed to him or walked the other way, w why were you let in so easily if you don't mind me asking? she asked softly. Asuma raised a brow at her, well, I've got a bit of an important position in the land of fire, you see. I'm one of the few ninja who is solely under the jurisdiction of the daimyo of the land of fire and so technically I am equal to the Hokage when it comes to political power and the standard laws of this village don't apply to me, Asuma said with a shrug, that doesn't mean I don't love my village, it's just the reputation that comes with the role. Hanada looked up her sensei in a new light as they continued to wind their way through the halls. Are you crazy? I'm not going inside the compound, Shikamaru said with a scowl. Naruto sat on Shikamaru's back, then I'm not getting off, Naruto said with a fake yawn before laying down as if Shikamaru was a mattress. 
The Nara member scowled as he formed a quick succession of hand seals, shadow port jutsu, he exclaimed before they both fell into his shadow. Falling out of darkness, the two found themselves inside a small closet, white ya pikir shika? Naruto asked as he peeked out the tiny gap in the door. Shikamaru groaned as he got to his feet, I haven't exactly mastered it yet, I just aimed for Hinata's shadow and slam Naruto and Shikamaru went quiet as they heard the door slam open, a fire temple guardian. Here? Why? A powerful deep voice said angrily. I don't know Hiyashi-sama, he just followed in Hinata and he wears the sash of the fire temple, a nervous voice said. Naruto and Shikamaru stared at each other, Hiyashi-sama. They whispered in slight fear, knowing that even a spark of chakra would make the man activate his Baikugan and spot them hiding in his closet. Knock knock Hiyashi took his seat at his desk, quickly sitting tall as his branch member assistant moved to the door and opened it. Asuma and Hinata walked in the two of them bowing as they approached Hiyashi, Hanada, take a seat. Asuma Serutobi, Hiyashi said with a completely blank face, to what do I owe the pleasure? Hanada took her seat at the side of the room with the branch family member as Asuma walked up and sat opposite Hiyashi, calmly picking up Hiyashi's picture frame which held a picture of him and his father on the day Hiyashi achieved clan head status. He smiled at it, huh, look how cute you used to be Hanada. Asuma said casually as he pointed to the small girl in the bottom of the picture, too strong to maintain cuteness now, too busy being a ninja of true worth to the village. Asuma said with a pointed glare at Hiyashi. Hiyashi visibly flinched at his words before a scowl graced his lips, this is about my daughter then? I understand you have the authority to look into clan business but not the business of specific families, he said sternly. Asuma smiled at the photo for a moment longer before putting it back on Hiyashi's desk and leaning back in a relaxed position, I don't know what you're talking about Hiyashi, I'm just here to go over a few points in my student's training that I need you, as her father, to take care of, Asuma said. Hiyashi scowled, student? You applied for Jonin sensei? I'm surprised you would lower yourself to that standard from being an honored fire guardian. Asuma laughed as he took out his cigarettes, lowered myself, please. This way I get to do something that Hannah would have wanted, you know your dead wife? He said as he offered Hiyashi a cigarette. Hiyashi glanced over to his daughter and the branch house member for a moment before looking back at Asuma, leave us Hinata, Kabuko. Hiyashi said sternly. The branch family member and Hinata left the room quickly, Hinata waiting outside as Kabuko closed the door behind them. Hiyashi turned back to Asuma and took the offered cigarette, why do you bring her up? Hiyashi asked as he dropped his Hyuga facade. Asuma offered his lighter to Hiyashi, because Hanada has the same ailment she had, at least I'm pretty sure of it, Asuma said. Hiyashi paused after his first drag, she. The water chakra? Hiyashi asked, obvious shock on his face. Naruto and Shikamaru shared a confused look as Asuma chuckled, yep, so, I'm gonna need you to teach her the water whip like her mother and then whatever she needs he said as he blew smoke. Hiyashi looked down in thought, but, it's supposed to be a once in 100 years occurrence for Hyuga to be born with water chakra, this means she has to go into flow training, he said with a sigh, no wonder she can't do the 8 trigrams techniques, she'll need the scrolls on the 8 rivers techniques. Asuma raised a brow, I've never actually heard the names, the 8 rivers, he asked. Hiyashi nodded, targeting the body's veins rather than the chakra pathways. The Eight Rivers focuses around eight major arteries, carotid, aortic, subclavian, axillary, renal, iliac and femoral, Hiyashi said as he ashed his cigarette into his empty teacup and gestured for Asuma to do the same, to think we'd have another bloodbender so soon. Hiyashi mumbled to himself. Asuma raised a brow at that, bloodbender? He asked. Hiyashi shook his head, don't think too much into it, it's just a title. Apparently one of the first could not only reverse the blood flow with her attacks but apparently control it after making a connection. A ridiculous notion that has never been replicated, but, he said with a shrug, the name remains, Hiyashi explained. Asuma nodded in thought, cool, but on another note, I couldn't help but notice your daughter is rather depressed at the mere mention of returning home at the end of the day, Asuma said suddenly as his eyes hardened, why is that? He asked forcefully. Hiyashi raised a brow probably due to her intense fear of disappointing anyone. It's crippled her learning ability to such a degree that I had near given up on her. Asuma raised a row again, near given up, 
he clarified. Hiyashi shrugged, I may seem heartless to her, but to the majority of my clan I am vastly appreciated. So do not expect me to hesitate, even if I have to sacrifice my own child to ensure the protection of my clan's future I will do it. I do not care if I'm portrayed as heartless for my actions. The truth is I will die someday, and if she's not strong enough to protect herself I always thought at least the clan will be strong enough to protect her, Hiyashi said with a sigh. Asuma sighed, even if Hinata ends up fearing you, I honestly thought there may have been a case of domestic violence here, he said. Hiyashi looked down, it's, I didn't know she feared me, he muttered softly, I thought. I thought she resented me for not saving her mother or uncle. Hiyashi said softly before looking up at Asuma with genuine shock evident on his face, she's really afraid of me? he asked. Asuma sighed and nodded, you know there was a similar issue in another clan, the heir being afraid of what the head was capable of, Asuma said. Hiyashi raised a brow, which clan was that? The Uchiha, Asuma replied casually, knowing the gravity that his words would carry. The room was silent for a few moments before a heavy sigh left Hiyashi's lips. I will teach her what I can, but it will be difficult for her as there is no one to teach her with physical knowledge, I will do my best though. Hiyashi promised, wanting to rid his daughter of this apparent fear of him. Asuma nodded as he put out his smoke in Hiyashi's cup, sounds good to me, but what would you consider her training to be? He asked. Hiyashi nodded, I'll have her mastering new katas daily and. Let me just stop you there, Asuma cut in, daily katas? That's ridiculous, maybe two a week at best. Hiyashi seemed to bristle slightly, you doubt the Hayuga teachings? Asuma scoffed, I doubt the Hayuga's sanity if they think that's a normal learning curve. I will handle the focusing of the chakra itself and jutsu if you just help her learn the basic forms and yeah, then we'll see if she can get to that organ pulverizing technique your wife had yeah? Asuma asked. Hiyashi shook his head as he put out his own cigarette, that is one of the final level techniques, if you're lucky she might have all the taijutsu forms down by the time the chunin exams roll around. Hiyashi said with a shrug. Asuma smirked, that's good enough for me Hiyashi, I'll be teaching her a few minor water ninjutsu and I was wondering what basic earth jutsu you have for standard Hayuga class fighting, Asuma asked. Hiyashi smirked at Asuma, how about tomorrow I have Hinata take a list to you, if you don't mind. I will be going to reschedule my younger daughter's training. I don't want my eldest to be fearful of me any longer, he said as he stood. Asuma pushed himself up onto his feet as well, yeah that's fine with me Hiyashi, I'll put in a good word for the Hayuga at the next political gathering for our lord, he said, knowing that a good word with the fire daimyo was worth more than gold. Hiyashi smiled slightly and nodded, I thank you then, he said as the two walked out of the office, closing the door behind them. After a few moments silence, Shikamaru and Naruto stuck their heads out of the closet, Hinata-chan is like, some kind of legend huh? Naruto asked. Shikamaru sighed as he looked back at Naruto, didn't you pay any attention in history? Don't you remember Katara the bloodbender? Shikamaru asked, earning a blank look from Naruto, never mind, it's too troublesome to explain it, he said with a shrug. Naruto nodded as he looked around the large but now empty office, so, how do we get out of here? he asked. Shikamaru shrugged, give me some more time and I'll have enough chakra to get us out. It'd be way easier if we were closer to the outer wall of this place. He whined with a sigh as he sat in a meditative position to try and stimulate his chakra flow. Naruto looked around bored before seeing a vent against the wall behind Hiyashi's desk, just like the Hokage Tower. Naruto muttered with a grin before turning to Shikamaru, I can get us closer to the exit. Naruto said with a grin. Hanada looked up and stood, prompting the branch family member sitting opposite her to do the same as they turned to Hiyashi and Asuma as the two walked into the room. The two came to a stop at the head of the table, Hiyashi turned to Hanada and nodded to her, Hanada, any training I've given you or things I've said about you up until this moment was wrong. You deserve better than what I have given you and your sensei here thinks now is the time to try and fix things. Hanada stared up at her father in shock, never having heard her father admit he was wrong before, it was earth shattering. Asuma placed a hand on her shoulder, Hanada, your father has realized that the style he's teaching you isn't exactly the best style for you as a person with a water affinity, so he's going to teach you a different style over these next two months. While you're doing all your physical training here, you'll be doing all you chakra training and jutsu training with me and the team. Understand? he asked. 
Hanada nodded slowly. B, but what about the T team workouts? She asked. Hiyashi nodded. Your physical training will take place here, Hanada. So mornings will begin here instead of with your team before you meet up with them at a later time. Hiyashi said with a glance to Asuma. About nine, we'll meet up for missions. Is that good for you? Asuma asked. Hiyashi watched Hanada nod slowly. This means two hours in the morning and two hours in the afternoon for your training, Hanada. I will continue to push you, but I realize this style will take long to learn. Hiyashi explained to Hanada. The little girl nodded, a small smile on her face. You'll train me again, father? She asked with a slight shine in her eyes. For once in the presence of others, Hiyashi let his hard facade fall and he smiled softly at Hanada. I will do my best, Hanada chan, Hiyashi said. Hey, look. Naruto paused as he pointed out the grill he just crawled past, looks like Hanada and her dad made up. Naruto whispered before crawling ahead. Shikamaru's frown didn't leave his face, good for them, but seriously how much further till we get out? Did you hear that? The two of them heard a voice on the outside of the wall say. The two froze as Naruto managed to glance back at Shikamaru. Yeah, sounded like it was in that wall. Scan? Their eyes widened. Yeah, basic scan. Shikamaru quickly formed hand seals as he took a hold of Naruto's leg. They fell into the darkness of the ventilation system, barely making it in time as the Byakugan users looked through the now empty wall. Anything? Nah, must have been nothing. Naruto and Shikamaru fell out of the shadow of a tree near the Hayuga compound, Naruto landing on his head as Shikamaru landed in a crouch. Ow. Where's the warning? Naruto asked. Shikamaru sighed as he sat down. Hey, we were about to be spotted, Naruto. I just did you a favor. Shikamaru said before lying on his back, not really caring that they were on the side of the road. Naruto? Shikamaru? The two looked over at Asuma as he calmly turned the corner and smiled at them. So, what did you guys learn from this experience? He asked with a smirk. Naruto went to open his mouth when Shikamaru's hand covered it. What experience? We'd never admit to breaking laws such as breaking into clan compounds. Asuma chuckled, and I'd never admit the slight dampener I keep in my smokes so that Hiyashi's chakra sensory ability is destabilized. I mean if it wasn't in his system, he'd be able to feel the activation of a jutsu through the wall next to him, he said with a smirk. Naruto and Shikamaru shared a look of bewilderment. Wait, you knew we were there? Naruto asked. Asuma nodded as he pulled out his pack of smokes. Yeah. I use the dampener in my smokes as a training exercise. It also lessens the risk of lung cancer by 85%, so it's kinda easy to notice the chakra of two people I've been hanging out with for the past three weeks straight. Asuma said with another chuckle as he put a smoke between his lips. Shikamaru and Naruto shared a look of embarrassment now. So, are we in trouble? Shikamaru asked. Asuma chuckled. Well, normally I would say yes, but today, I have some things that we need to do. Asuma said to the two of them. Shikamaru, I want you to go home and ask your mother and father to be ready for a small meeting. Naruto, we're gonna go back to your place quickly. Asuma said with a grin as he lit his smoke. Naruto gulped, you aren't gonna tell Anko ne or ya? He asked nervously. Anko opened the door after a few seconds of waiting. Asuma, how's it going? She asked before spotting Naruto behind him. Ah, oh, this is a team thing? She asked as she opened it the whole way, letting the two of them in. Asuma nodded as he walked in and glanced around the two-story apartment, hold on, that looks like. Asuma began as he looked closer at the steps up to what used to be Naruto's flat, was that renovation legal? Asuma asked Anko. The purple-haired woman shrugged, I told the old man about it and he just laughed, so I don't really care, she said before putting Naruto in a playful headlock, what's Naruto-chan done this time huh? she asked. Asuma chuckled as he watched Naruto trying and failing to squirm out of her grip, so there's some things I was hoping I could talk to you about. Asuma began as he stepped past them to look around the room. Anko raised a brow at Naruto, eh? I'm not gonna training your students Asuma. She said, thinking that Asuma was wanting her to come help him with them. Asuma shook his head with a laugh, I think Naruto here might be the only one who can handle your eccentricities. Asuma began with a chuckle earning a playful glare from the snake mistress, but that said I also think he's the only one among all of the active genin who can do janin level jutsu, Asuma explained. Naruto grinned at that, realizing that Asuma wasn't dobbing him into anko, janin level, like what? 
I want to learn more, Naruto exclaimed. Anko chuckled and pulled Naruto along by the arm as she led him and Asuma to the couches, Asuma taking a single chair as Anko used Naruto like a pillow across the couch, so anything ya need him to learn specifically? she asked. Asuma held a hand to his chin in thought, well, I was considering teaching him more wind jutsu but I think this time he should be filling in the gaps in his skills, like clones and such, Asuma explained. Anko grinned, I know what to do. I know three different clone techniques so I reckon he'll have one of them mastered in a week at most, she said with a wink to Naruto, but when? Cause I don't have that much time on my hands. Asuma nodded at her words, well, at the moment Hiyashi is going to be doing two two-hour training sessions a day with Hinata so I was hoping you could clear up some time to help out your little brother, Asuma said with a smile. Anko shrugged, yeah, I guess I could. I can push things back till like, nine I guess. Anko mumbled in deep thought. Naruto wriggled from his place underneath her back and head, Nei chan. You're crushing me, Naruto complained. Anko smirked at Naruto over her shoulder, think of it as karma for crushing me in weights training, start your push ups, she said to Naruto. Asuma chuckled as Naruto actually started to do so, making Anko's chest rise and fall in Asuma's direction, something the Jonin noticed, looking good, Anko. He joked flirtatiously, knowing that any other flirting with Anko may result in dismemberment. Anko winked at Asuma with a grin, I know I do, so how's nine-ish? Anko asked. Naruto continued doing push-ups, with one hand now, as Asuma and Anko kept talking about training plans, yeah sounds good, same as Hinata's morning training, he said as he stood and cracked his back. Anko rolled off of Naruto making the blonde lose balance and fall back onto the couch as Anko stood and threw her arms around Asuma in an overdramatic hug. Oh Asuma-chan! Now you'll get to see my work firsthand, she exclaimed happily. Asuma returned the hug before she stepped away, and what work is that? he asked. Ah! A sudden shout from Naruto made Asuma turn his head, seeing the single senbon sticking into Naruto's shin, fear training. Anko said with a playfully malicious grin aimed at Naruto. Naruto pulled the senbon out, watching the wound heal before he chucked it back at Anko, who caught it in her teeth, where was the warning Anko nay? Naruto exclaimed. Ninjas get no warnings, Anko shouted before she and Naruto ended up in a game of cat and mouse, running around the apartment a few times before they retreated upstairs. Asuma flinched as he heard something smash upstairs, I'd best be going now, Asuma mumbled as he left through the front door. Hash 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 Asuma knocked on the door to the main house of the Nara compound, expecting an answer since the sun had only gone down an hour or so beforehand. Asuma waited, then waited some more before he noticed a sheet of paper had been left sticking out from under the door labeled, Asuma Sensei. Asuma raised a brow at it before picking it up and reading. Hey Sensei, I made the mistake of mentioning Hinata's training and my mom now says I have to do extra training the moment we finish missions so I guess that coincides with her afternoon lessons right, he's also pretty sure that is actually what you wanted to talk about but he couldn't fit in another meeting today, talk tomorrow. Asuma couldn't hold back the chuckle that escaped his lips as he walked away, sometimes the intelligence of that kid scares me, but at least I know where he gets it from. Asuma thought before leaving the compound. Okay, your final D rank will be your first out of village mission, Hiruzen said to the four across from him. Asuma raised a brow at that, I asked him for a good one for our last D rank but out of village should make it C rank right? He thought in interest. Naruto grinned, cool, where to? Naruto asked. Hiruzen chuckled at Naruto's behavior, not far, it should only take maybe a few hours at most. You see team 7 have gone on a C rank escort mission and. What? Sasuke Teme already is on a C rank, Naruto exclaimed loudly. Shikamaru and Asuma sighed in unison at his outburst, but Hinata's quiet whisper of, Naruto-kun, don't be rude, made the blonde just frown at the Hokage. Asuma cleared his throat, so, dad, what do we need to do? he asked. The Hokage smiled, we were sent word through the Yamanaka information link that Kakashi was ambushed by two chunin. They're dead, we just need cleanup and I hear that Shikamaru's new technique may be the easiest thing to get this done the Hokage said. Shikamaru sighed, for two bodies? My shadow isn't strong enough for that yet, he complained. Hiruzen nodded, 
but with Asuma's connecting Buddha technique and Naruto's massive chakra reserves, I'm betting that you can manage, he said before shrugging, if not, Asuma can just seal them in a storage scroll, but I want to see if this combination works. Hiruzen said. Asuma blinked before looking between Naruto and Shikamaru's confused expressions, well, emissions emission, he said with a shrug. Tracker, you're up, Asuma said as the four of them stepped out of the main gate of the village. Byakugan. Hanada exclaimed as she glanced at the still unrolled mission scroll in her pouch, practicing reading it correctly, five hours civilian pace and about an hour forty at ninja pace, Hanada said. Asuma nodded, strategy, he said. The Nara side, we can just do the standard movement formation, head tracker at the front, and secondary at the back, me and you in the middle sensei, he said. Asuma raised a brow at that, secondary? he asked curiously. Shikamaru nodded and pointed to Naruto, his nose, it let us dodge Kiba, he said with a smirk, twice. Shikamaru added to prove his point. Asuma's brows rose at that, you dodged an Inazuka? he asked as they got in formation. Naruto actually blushed a little as he nodded, yeah, just lucky I was able to use my shadow clones by that point. Naruto said with a grin. Asuma smirked at that. Over the past week the at-home training had been a hit. Though Shikamaru didn't seem too motivated, his mother's anger was more than enough to get the wheels turning. And the result of that was making his shadow portal technique evolve into its secondary form, the shadow pocket technique that held items in his shadow for as long as his chakra could hold it, so far, 10 minutes was his maximum while stationary. Hanada's growth on the other hand was ridiculous. Apparently Hiyashi actually had to teach faster than Asuma has thought was necessary due to her natural skill in the Eight Rivers style, since Hanada was taking to the Taijutsu forms like a fish to water. Asuma smirked at his little private joke, but seriously, she was now the best in the team at Taijutsu, and Asuma was more than glad for the new ego boost her father's training had given her. Asuma cleared his throat, all right, let's move out, he said before Hinata took lead and they leapt into the trees. Shadow Clone Jutsu. Asuma glanced over his shoulder as two more Naruto's popped into existence, forming a line of three so that the six ninja were in a perfect arrowhead formation. Naruto's fighting style hadn't changed that much, but now his skills with the Shadow Clone Jutsu and the Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu were more than battle ready as were his newfound skill with thrown weapons thanks to Anko's training. He was the main attack force for all of their combination moves, and boy could Shikamaru plan those. Asuma ducked his head under a branch as they flew through the trees, glancing at the three genin around him, and even though Naruto is still obviously excited about leaving the village for the first time, he's managed to keep his cool. Good, it seems him and Shikamaru hanging out has managed to calm him down a bit. Asuma thought with a smile. Asuma cleared his throat after about 20 minutes, continue along guys, I'll be right back. He said before hopping higher in the trees. Shikamaru moved directly behind Hanada as Asuma disappeared, what's he doing? Shikamaru asked. Hanada focused her already active Byakugan for a moment before sighing, he's using his wind chakra to make a shell in the canopy around his cigarette so he can smoke on the move, she said with a frown. Naruto laughed, sensei'll do anything for a smoke I swear, he said with a grin as they continued out into the forests of the land of fire. I smell blood, Naruto said, sharing a look with his clones that frowned alongside him. Asuma's brow furrowed, Hanada? Asuma asked. Hanada was silent for a moment as she squinted her eyes, I. I see a dog with a scroll, she said before her eyes relaxed, and a Konoha headband on, she finished. Asuma smiled, that's probably one of Pakun's gang, that mean we're close, he said as Shikamaru turned to Naruto. Scout it for us, Shikamaru said. Naruto nodded and his two clones dropped to the floor and used chakra to aid their high speed dash ahead. Asuma smirked, well then, how should we approach this, Asuma asked. Shikamaru took lead, Naruto's clones make contact, Hanada watches what happens and relays it to us, we go from there, he explained, earning a nod from Naruto. Contact made, Hanada said, waiting a moment before smiling, clone kuns are giving the thumbs up, she said with a smile. Asuma nodded as they all moved ahead together, dropping down onto the main road just as a small dog ran out onto the road, hey Asuma, glad ya made it. The dog said after dropping the scroll from its mouth. 
Asuma nodded to the dog while Naruto and his team gawked openly. Hey Pakun, long time no see, he said with a smile. The dog nodded. Yeah, I guess it is Asuma. Look, is there anything else you need? I'm pretty tired, Pakun said with a yawn. Asuma laughed and nodded. Hold on, can you give the confirmation to Kakashi? I've got something here for ya, Asuma said with a grin as he reached into his pouch. Pakun shrugged. Eh, maybe, depends what you've. You've. Pakun paused as he looked at what Asuma was offering him. Is that flame grilled jerky? I haven't had that since. Kakashi's mission to the fire temple, Asuma said with a grin. At least someone appreciates the good stuff. Asuma said as he tore open the bag longways and set them on the ground for Pakun. Pakun practically dove into the bag as Naruto stared at the scroll intently, sick of breathing in the awful smelling air. S sensei. Someone was cut up bad here. And someone got. Cooked. Naruto said as he looked like he was going to puke. Asuma raised a brow at that, though Shikamaru was the first to speak, probably Sasuke's fireball jutsu. They did have to fight after all, he said with a shrug before pointing at the scroll in Asuma's hand, and they're already sealed, what's this bull about needing my shadow? He asked with a groan. Asuma shrugged as he put the scroll in his ninja pouch, I don't know Shikamaru, maybe plans had to change. Asuma said out loud before his brow furrowed, maybe. Someone forced them too. Asuma mumbled before reaching behind his back and taking out the scroll again. Naruto looked away as tears came to his eyes, geez, it reeks. He murmured as he blocked his nose. Shikamaru raised a brow at his sensei's actions as Hinata turned to Naruto, sensei? Shikamaru asked. Poof the three genin paled as they looked at the two corpses in front of them. One burned through completely and the other having his shoulder gouged out, though a single stab to the throat appeared to be the death blow on the one-armed chunin. Naruto hissed in a single short breath before covering his mouth and nose, ew. Naruto groaned. After one glance at the bodies, Hinata frowned and turned away again, offering a piece of material to Naruto and helping him cover his mouth and nose with it. Shikamaru frowned, they're missing ninjas from the mist, he said staring over the kneeling Asuma's shoulder at the bodies. Asuma sighed and unzipped his vest halfway before reaching into it and pulling out a small book from an inside pocket. Listen up guys, here's another lesson, Asuma said as he began to thumb through the pages of the book. Actually, firstly I want you to activate your Baikugan Hanada, and sure there is no one in the area, Asuma said. Hanada nodded and once more activated her Baikugan. Area is clear sensei, she said with a nod. Asum nodded in thanks before going back to the back few pages of the book and looking through the index, Mist Village. Found them, Asuma said as he stopped on a page, guys, this is a bingo book and thanks to it I now know that these two are known as the Demon Brothers, known for working directly under the Demon of the Mist during the attempted assassination of the third Mizukage. He said, pointing at their picture, and they are still known to work with him and potentially more people, at least one of them being some kind of field medic. Asuma said with a sigh. And I don't remember dad mentioning anything about the identity of these guys, I doubt he knows. Asuma said with a frown as he stood tall from his crouch. Shikamaru groaned, this just got a whole lot harder didn't it? What a drag, he complained as he looked up at the sky. Asuma turned to Pakun as the dog neared finishing the bag of jerky, hey Pakun, would you be able to run a message to Konoha for us before going back to Kakashi? Asuma asked. Pakun pulled his head out of the bag and blinked, I dunno. That's like a whole day's running at this point, Pakun said. Asuma smirked as he pulled another bag of jerky from his pouch, if you do and bring our next orders back to us I'll treat you to another bag on your way back to Kakashi, Asuma offered confidently. Pakun nodded, he, it's hard to say no to that, Pakun said before stuffing his head back in the bag and continuing eating, one, me do deka mishage, Pakun barely said without pausing in his feast. Asuma nodded as he sent Chakra back into Kakashi's ceiling scroll. Poof. Yeah, give me a minute to think of something, Asuma said before turning to his genin team, Team Huddle Guys. The three sat down, Naruto still holding Hinata's cloth to his face, as Asuma began to explain the situation. As far as we know, Team 7 is prepared for a C rank mission. We also know that the presence of these chunin automatically make it a B rank, and if what the bingo book guesses is true, the Demon of the Mist. Zabuza Momochi will be right on their trail. Asuma said with a serious frown, 
Even Kakashi might not fare too well against him. Asuma explained. Naruto nodded, so we're going to help them right? He asked. Asuma frowned as did Shikamaru. I don't know Naruto, I mean, we gotta finish this mission right? I'm sure they can handle it. Shikamaru said. Asuma looked to the ever quiet Hinata, and what do you think? He asked. Hinata frowned slightly in thought before looking at the book in Asuma's hand. Can I see this Zabuza person in the bingo book? She asked Asuma. Asuma nodded and opened the book again, flicking back to the same page as earlier to see the reference number on Zabuza. He flicked a few pages back before passing it to Hinata. Hinata swallowed as she looked at the menacing picture of a man with a massive cleaver like sword, he's an A rank ninja, and one of the seven swordsmen of the mist. She said with a worried frown on her face as she looked up at Asuma, Do you honestly think you could beat him? she asked. Asuma was quiet for a moment before shrugging, I don't know. I've already learned a countermeasure to his trademark hidden mist technique thanks to my control with wind chakra, it's not a jutsu really, just a sensory enhancing type deal, Asuma said with a sigh. So, in all honesty I think this is one of the few battles where I would be more useful than Kakashi. Hanada looked back to Naruto and Shikamaru, I, we should go help them, she said with a resolved nod. Shikamaru sighed and raised his arms in surrender, fine, fine. Well at least this means we don't have to go all the way back to the village for a first C rank right? He asked rhetorically with a shrug. Asuma smirked at the three of them as Naruto cheered, yeah. Time to show Sasuke Teme who's boss, Naruto exclaimed. So that's my message then? Pakun asked as he finally finished eating. You want to go help with Kakashi's mission cause of this Zabuza guy? He asked. Asuma nodded, looks like it, we'll wait here for final confirmation before we head off any further though. And I think we'll keep this scroll with us for now, Asuma said, making up his mind. Pakun nodded, K. Hey, well, there's a river like 100 meters up the road about another 20 off to the right of the trail. Good place for a campsite. Hakun said before yawning, guess I'll see you guys in a couple of hours, he said as he stretched. Asuma nodded, looks like it, see you later Pakun, Asuma said. The dog nodded and ran off down the road at high speed, surprising the three genin at just how fast it could run. Shikamaru sighed, so now what, I don't know about you guys but I didn't prepare for a long term mission, Shikamaru said. Asuma smirked, well isn't it a good thing you guys did survival training in the academy, he said with a slight chuckle, come on, I still have my emergency pack and, Asuma said with a look at Naruto. The blonde grinned and opened his cloak wide, sending chakra into one of the seals on the inside against his lower back. Poof Naruto's backpack appeared in a plume of smoke, one arm already hooked in as he put his other arm through the strap, I got a two-man tent, two spare canteens food rations and some ramen cups. Naruto said with a grin. Asuma frowned, ramen cups? What happened to first aid kit? Asuma asked. Naruto grinned and opened the front of his cloak again, showing another storage seal over his heart, right here sensei. Naruto said with a short laugh. Asuma nodded, well, that's good enough I guess, he said before looking ahead, Hanada, can you spot the clearing? Asuma asked. Hanada's Byakugan flexed as she focused it forward rather than around her, increasing the range by sacrificing the 360 degree vision, I can sensei, at least. I think I can, she said as she squinted her eyes. Asuma nodded, then let's do as Pakun said and head to that river and fill our canteens. Asuma said as he began to walk ahead at a civilian's pace. Shikamaru sighed again as Naruto and Hanada followed calmly after their sensei, what a drag. Shikamaru groaned. Asuma sat with a frown on his face in a position similar to his father's famous, thinking pose, Pakun should have been here hours ago, he thought as he looked up at the sky, the sun beginning to set in the distance, I guess we'll camp the night. Either way we should be getting to the land of waves maybe even before them as long as we leave before 8 in the morning and they haven't been traveling through the night, he thought before looking over to his right. Shikamaru was taking a nap in the shade of a nearby tree normally something that Asuma wouldn't approve on a mission, but considering now Shikamaru had no reason to refuse taking first watch for when they camped the night. Hanada sat at the edge of the river, her bare feet underwater as she practiced her first level of water manipulation. Resting her palms face down on the water and rotating the chakra between her two hands, making a whirlpool that was barely stronger than a breeze between her hands. 
Naruto on the other hand had been practicing a skill that Asuma had to admit he found interesting. Naruto had been trying to combine his shuriken shadow clone with his shadow shuriken technique as well as his quick launch skill with the weapons sealed into his sleeves. Naruto took a deep breath as he crossed his arms, his claws flashing into view as a rather intimidating distraction before he ran forward at his target tree. Slashing his arms through the air, a pair of kanai shot from his sleeves, though the moment the two stabbed into the target tree, four more appeared from each shadow, forming a line that crossed in an X shape on the tree. Naruto finished his combo with a leap through the air before stabbing his claws into the tree. Asuma smirked as Naruto fell back on his butt as he yanked his claws free, always training to be stronger or faster than one. Asuma thought as he glanced around the group again. Naruto suddenly jolted into a sitting position as he looked off to their right, Sensei, Naruto said as he pulled his original pair of kanai from the tree, the remaining eight popping into non-existence, I think that dog is coming back, Naruto said. That dog, Pakun said as he slid into the clearing, is named Pakun, and he has a mission for you guys. He said as he ran over to stop in front of Asuma. Hanada took her shoes and joined Naruto and Pakun by Asuma's side as the man unrolled the new mission scroll from Pakun's back, thanks Pakun. Asuma said as he opened the second pack of jerky and laid it on the ground. Pakun nodded, no worries Asuma, he said as he licked his lips, but he paused before digging in. Do you mind if I rest here for a while? I could use a nap, he said. Asuma shrugged as he unrolled the scroll, his brow furrowing as he read the contents, um. I guess there's another change of plans, he said as he glanced around the group, Naruto, can you wake up Shikamaru? Asuma asked. The blonde nodded and took off his shoe, tossing it over his shoulder calmly as he sat down, so what now sensei? Naruto asked. Ow. Naruto began to chuckle as Shikamaru groaned and climbed to his feet, throwing Naruto's shoe back at the blonde's head. Yeah, so, the shoe hit his head, but he didn't even notice, what's the plan? Naruto asked with a grin. Hanada giggled as she picked up Naruto's shoe and passed it to him, what the hell's going on? Shikamaru complained as he fell into a sitting position next to Naruto. Asuma smirked as he rolled out the scroll between him and his students, it appears we have our C rank early. We're to go swap with a border patrol team who specialize in assassination and they're going to go back up Kakashi's team themselves by searching the area around Kakashi's team to try and locate any known associates of the Demon Brothers and if a certain undisclosed company is mentioned they're to take immediate action. Asuma said before nodding to himself and smiling at the group. Well, what do you guys think? Asuma asked. Naruto frowned as he pulled on his shoe. So, we're not saving Sasuke Teme? Naruto asked. Asuma chuckled, no we're not, and because of that we won't be resting during the night tonight. He said as he stood, this is your first exercise of body strain. Asuma said before beginning some stretches. Shikamaru sighed and began to do the same as Naruto and Hinata watched in confusion, Sensei, what's body strain? Hinata asked. Shikamaru just sighed again as Asuma began to explain, start stretching out your muscles and I'll explain, he said, giving the other two a moment to begin. Now, our best way to ensure Kakashi gets his help is to relieve our other comrades at the border ASAP. So that means we're going to each have a soldier pill once we start to get tired and that will not only help replenish chakra reserves but will keep you awake for another 12 hours before you get tired, Asuma said. Hanada sat in a full splits as she reached for her feet in a stretch, but aren't soldier pills dangerous? Hanada asked. Asuma shrugged, like any medicinal item, if you abuse it then yes but I'm saying we'll have one each and once we get there we can grab some sleep at the lookout located on the border. Then when we get up I'll explain our mission specifics. Asuma explained. Naruto raised a brow, how far do we have to travel that we'll actually have a chakra drain? Naruto asked worriedly. Asuma raised a brow at that, about three times the distance we did today, but are you telling me you felt no drain at all from today? Asuma asked. Naruto shook his head as he stretched out his arms, should I have? he asked. Hanada smiled at Naruto's impossible strength as Shikamaru groaned, that's so unfair, I was nearly halfway through my reserves when we first got here. Shikamaru complained. Looking at Hanada, Naruto blinked at her for confirmation as she nodded, it's true, your coils are massive Naruto-kun, she said with a smile. Naruto grinned as he got back to his stretching, hey sensei. That's why I can do the cage bunchin properly right. 
cause even Enko Ne looked shocked, but she never told me why, he asked. Asuma nodded, Naruto, I meant it when I said it was incredible that Hinata learned a B rank as only a genin, and she can only do a full wall three times. The cage bunshin is an A rank Naruto, and technically splitting the coils rather than the chakra. So yeah, I'd say your reserves are pretty big, Asuma said with a chuckle before pausing as he tilted his head in thought, actually, you won't be having a soldier pill Naruto. Let's see how long you can run before you really feel it, Asuma said with a smile. Naruto pouted, but, what if I get sleepy? You guys are gonna be kept awake and all from the pills, he complained. Asuma smiled at Naruto, you can catch up on sleep later if you really need it, but usually as long as your chakra is actively being used your body will not want feel it too bad, Asuma said. Hakun's head popped out of the now empty bag of jerky, so, are you going soon? Can I get a ride with you guys to meet this new team? May as well take them straight to Kakashi, Pakun said. Asuma smiled, you're a good dog Pakun, and that actually sounds like the best option right now. Asuma said as he stood tall and cracked his neck, you guys ready? Hanada nodded as Shikamaru sighed, ready to go sensei, Naruto shouted excitedly. Asuma chuckled at his team before he turned in a direction to the east of where they were heading, alright then, we got a long run ahead of us let's start easy. Asuma said as Pakun jumped up to land on Asuma's shoulder. A slight bit of chakra being all the dog needed to keep a tight enough hold. The group nodded as Naruto jogged over to their backpacks, focusing a moment before he flicked out the bottom of his coat, sealing his bag away easily before picking up Asuma's with a grin. Trade sensei? Naruto asked. Asuma smirked and Pakun shrugged, doesn't faze me, he said as he leapt over to Naruto's head holding on with chakra as Naruto passed Asuma his bag. The Jonin put it on as he turned away again, all right, let's get moving throughout the night guys. We'll be there round sunrise, Asuma said, earning a nod from his team before they leapt into the trees. Pakun looked down at Naruto as the blonde followed behind Hinata, the team in a single file as they blurred through the green surrounding them. Hey kid, is this really your first C rank mission? Pakun asked. Naruto nodded. Yeah it is, why? Naruto asked. Pakun yawned, well, I'm starting to think Kakashi is slacking off in his teaching is all, those kids can't even tree hop yet, he said. Naruto raised a brow, huh? They can't tree climb or tree hop? But that was our sensei's first real lesson, Naruto said. Pakun chuckled, shit. Yeah, you guys are way ahead then. Naruto grinned at that, damn right we are, team 10 is the best, Naruto exclaimed with a laugh as the team continued on through the night. There it is, Hanada exclaimed with a smile as the lookout entered her advanced range of vision. Asuma nodded as he fell back slightly so that he was more or less running alongside the team, alright guys, when we arrive follow academy protocol for a stage 2 approach, okay? he asked. Unfortunately, only Hanada nodded as Naruto looked at him blankly and Shikamaru raised a brow, we were supposed to remember that stuff? he asked. Asuma sighed, all right, Hanada take lead with me we'll just do it, he said as he leapt slightly ahead along with Hanada. Hanada threw up an explosive tag into the air, letting it explode once before a pink cloud exploded from the top of the lookout, um, so it's pink sensei, Hanada said. Asuma nodded as he pulled out a seal, okay, so confirmation against pink during today. A blue tag, he said before throwing an explosive tag into the air that was blue colored instead of red. The tag exploded in a blue cloud signal and after a few moments, they came to a stop in a clearing as the double doors opened for them at the base of the tower, the two chunin holding a door each as they nodded to the four approaching ninja. They ran into the doors which were closed behind them as the one on the left smiled at Asuma, hey Asuma Taicho, said the one on the left as he closed the door properly, you guys are a day earlier than expected for the changeover, is everything all right? he asked as his teammate locked the door and turned. Asuma shrugged, we aren't quite sure honestly, we were sent early on purpose though. Kakashi might need your help. Asuma explained as he nodded to Hinata again. The girl bowed and offered the team's mission scroll forward, team 7 needs help, but they don't know how much yet, she explained as the ninja read the scroll. After a few moments of silence, the two ninjas nodded, all right, we'd best move out sooner rather than later especially since we don't have a specified target yet, he mumbled. Asuma raised a brow, any estimates? he asked, 
The other ninja nodded, yeah. Zabuza Momochi of the Hidden Mist Village. He said as he looked up from the scroll. Asuma frowned as he looked between the two in front of him, leave clean up to us. You go ahead, take your time and be careful, Asuma said seriously. The two nodded, though their eyes were hardened at Asuma's words before they dashed off at high speed. That was abrupt. Shikamaru said with a frown. Asuma nodded silently. Naruto, Hanada, go search the place and set your things down. Shikamaru go to the top floor and take the post. Give your things to Naruto and Hanada. Asuma ordered as the team walked forward and entered the tower. What are we doing, Sensei? Naruto asked. Asuma smirked. Firstly, we're cleaning up. Then next, we're setting up the southern patrol path for the next two days, Asuma said. Shikamaru's frown increased as he groaned, Oh joy, sounds like a ton of fun, he complained. A day and a half later, Excuse me Kakashi-san, a young woman said as she looked at a gray-haired Jonin, There's some young men here to see you, she said. The Jonin looked up from his bed and nodded, giving her the go-ahead to let them in. kakashi I smiled as the two assassination specialists arrived. Ah good, THNKS Tsunami, Kakashi said with a nod of thanks to Tazuna's doubter, now, let's get down to business, he said with a groan as he forced himself to sit up. First checkpoint reached, Hanada said to the group as they leapt through the trees. Asuma nodded, this is it for you Naruto, branch out and look for signs of anyone not on our path. Naruto grinned and nodded, got it sensei, he exclaimed before dropping to the ground and running east. Naruto got to a gap in the trees and looked out, seeing that the border was clear before he took his opportunity and sprinted across the field. Naruto stepped into the slightly less green forests of the outer lands of the Land of Earth. Second checkpoint. Hanada reported. Asuma nodded, you take this one Hanada, I know the next two and I feel more comfortable leaving you or Naruto since I know you can find your way back, he said. Shikamaru sighed, I could track them by their shadows if I really wanted. Better not tell Sensei that otherwise he'll have me doing their stuff as well. Shika thought silently as Hanada dropped to the forest floor and sprinted east. Shikamaru, this is your stop. Asuma said. Shikamaru nodded and dropped to the ground before jogging east. All right, just go in the designated distance and wait for the other two. He thought as he entered the land of Earth himself. Asuma came to a pause atop a large cliff smirked as he looked up river to see two giant statues of the shodem and his best frenemy is that a word yet it should be asuma pondered for a moment before his eyes narrowed at something near the base of madara uchiha's statue asuma leapt down over the next few minutes eventually making it to the corpse that was obviously thrown from the cliff above after receiving the shuriken to his stomach and legs that were still sticking out a genin Asuma thought as he noticed the headband and age, either that or a young prodigy of some kind. Either way he's dead, and some of the blood is still not dry. So it's fairly fresh. Asuma thought as he looked up, so where is the killer? And where is the rest of his team? Asuma thought before kneeling to look over the corpse. Asuma wiped some blood from the headband before a scowl met his lips, the hidden rock village. Asuma said before looking up, shit. Naruto paused as he crouched into a bush. A serious expression on his face as he sniffed the air, blood. He thought as he frowned, which means someone is hurt. He thought as he took a deeper breath. Naruto looked left as he crawled forward, that way. He thought before dashing south, deciding to help whoever he can before asking questions. Naruto slowed his pace as the smell suddenly got way stronger. He used his tree climbing technique and ran up to the first thick branch, lying down on it as he surveyed the area. Seeing nothing. He quickly leapt forward a few trees before stopping as he spotted something. There was a clearing up ahead, and in it at least one person, a crying girl holding onto something in front of her, and a pathway of blood up to her. Naruto stealthily crawled down the tree before making his way to the clearing, circling around so that he could see the girl's face and the rest of the clearing. The girl was a ninja from Tsuchigakure, she was covered in blood but it wasn't hers. They hadn't made camp here. It appeared the girl had ran in and dropped the thing she was crying over and began to hug it. It was the source of the blood. Naruto's eyes widened as he focused on the thing she was holding, realizing that it wasn't a package. It was the top half of a body. Hanada stood with her back against a tree, her Baikugan taking in the view in the distance of one man killing another. No. Move. I need to help, she thought, 
though her shaking body did no such thing as she was frozen in fear, stuck as a spectator as she watched the two near identically dressed ninjas square off. The sword wielding ninja was laughing as he watched the masked ninja shuffle back a step. I see you got your mask back, tell me, has it helped you? Hinata read from the sword wielding ninja's lips. The masked ninja gasped as he stepped on his back leg, the kanai lodged in it grating against his bone. You're the one who took it? Why? And where is my team? The masked ninja demanded. The sword wielding ninja grinned, Your team? Oh, I killed two of them, he said casually. The masked ninja ripped of his mask angrily, What? No, he shouted pleadingly before stumbling again. The sword wielding ninja dashed forward, cutting off the man's guarding arm with his massive sword. Hanada gasped as the unmasked ninja fell onto his back in pain and shock, suddenly, her legs moved. The sword wielding ninja turned as he sensed a strong chakra signature behind him, still, nothing more than a chunin. He thought as he stabbed his sword through the downed man's shoulder, pinning him to the ground. The swordsman formed hand seals, hidden mist jutsu, he exclaimed. Hanada's brow furrowed in worry for a moment before realizing that her Byakugan let her see through the mist anyway. I can save him, she thought as she closed her eyes. She focused. Her mind's eye focused on one goal only, not winning, not killing, just saving that man's life. Hanada opened her eyes, I will save him, she thought as she formed hand seals, Hyuga art, summoning jutsu. The swordsman raised a brow as he felt a large chakra fluctuation, what was that? He thought guardedly as he crept through the trees. Suddenly, the air around him pulsed and he was blown back into a tree by the massive eagle that lowered its way into the area, not letting him see or sense as Hanada appeared from its back. Hanada leapt from her summon's back, grabbing the injured man and putting his one good arm over her shoulder, it's okay, I've got you, she said as she looked up at her eagle. The unmasked rock ninja looked up in amazement, eh, hey, Hayuga? he thought before passing out. The eagle reached down with its clawed leg and lifted the ninja into its grip before taking off, leaving the empty clearing behind as she looked back with her special eyes. Hanada's Byakugan watched as the man entered the clearing and looked down, seeing the bloody mask and SCD up area where its claws had dug into the ground near his prisoner had been, causing him to laugh hysterically as he picked up the mask and undid his missed jutsu. Hanada looked down at the man as she looked at his bloody limbs, he's not going to make it if I don't stop the blood she thought as she stood. She moved over him as her Byakugan concentrated, come on, she thought as she tried to emulate her training in the Eight Rivers style. Hanada slammed a palm into each of his arms just above the wounds and his legs just above the kanai, causing the man to shout in his unconscious state before the blood slowed flowing out of his wounds thanks to Hanada punching a hole through his flesh and reconnecting the veins so that his blood would flow through. She then focused and cleared her throat nervously before poking his wounds. The man grunted each time, but his blood was clotted over the bleeding areas. His bleeding stopped, Hanada sat back as her eagle landed, uh oh. She mumbled as she looked around, seeing a grey flare go off in the distance of the land of earth, yeah, that was noticeable, she thought as she gulped. Shikamaru sighed as he saw a green flare to go up to his far left, hum, Asuma sensei found something, he thought as he began to rush towards Asuma. Nearly five minutes later, the two found each other as Shikamaru reversed direction to keep up, what's the deal sensei? Shikamaru asked. Asuma tossed his cigarette, I found a dead body, looks like part of a genin team. We're getting the others and regrouping to investigate, Asuma said. Shikamaru nodded before looking further into enemy territory and frowning, hey sensei. We don't use grey signal tag flares do we? He asked. Asuma looked up, seeing the rock village flare go off, shit. Someone got noticed, Asuma thought before pushing Shikamaru to run faster. Your sensei did this? Naruto asked. The girl nodded in sadness, why yeah, I don't know why. He said he'd take a wash and make sure the river was safe for us to use before coming back with his mission mask on A and attacking us, she said as she cried into Naruto's shoulder. Naruto nodded sadly at the girl's story before glancing over at the corpse behind them, then we'll protect you. I can't think of a reason he'd betray your two teammates and kill them just to let you run away. It doesn't make sense unless he wants people to know he did this," Naruto said with a frown. The girl shook her head, I don't get it either, she mumbled sadly. Naruto nodded before looking up, 
A few moments later hearing the beating of a massive pair of wings before a large eagle arrived landing in the clearing before it reared its head. Poof Naruto stepped between it and his newfound charge protectively before his eyes narrowed, seeing two silhouettes in the cloud. State your name and stay where you are. Naruto growled, just waiting for a target to attack. The smoke began to blow away as Hinata stumbled out of it, Naruto-kun. She said weakly, her chakra already straining as it was from actually summoning something she thought might have been able to hold off a janin. Naruto blinked and ran up to her just in time to catch both her and the person she carried. Who's this? Naruto shouted in shock. The rock Kunoichi turned and her eyes widened, that's him. That's Kadate sensei, she shouted. Naruto's eyes widened as he put himself between Hinata and the unconscious man, letting him fall to the ground as Hinata gasped. Stop Naruto. He's injured and looking for his team. Some ninja was dressed like him and trying to kill him. Hinata explained as she moved to lay the man down on his back. And noticing the half corpse, ah. She shouted in shock as she leapt back. Naruto frowned as he noticed her reaction, though he sniffed the air and his eyes snapped to the south as he smelled something familiar. Asuma and Shikamaru appeared in a shunshin, Shikamaru looking around as Asuma talked quickly, there's a team coming in our direction. He need to leave back to the land of fire or set a trap and fight. If they see us we have to kill them so word doesn't get back that the leaf was attacking rock ninjas, Asuma said. The group looked at each other before Shikamaru looked over his shoulder at Hinata and Naruto. Hinata, give me a warning when they're within your range. Naruto, what's the story here? Shikamaru asked. Asuma smirked as he stepped back. Well, it'll only be a Chunin partnership before they even send out a hunting party. Worst comes to worst I can take them. Asuma thought. Naruto frowned behind him at the girl. She says her team was attacked by their sensei and killed this morning. Though for some reason he didn't kill her, she has no idea why he did it all of a sudden, Naruto said. Shikamaru nodded and glanced at the three strangers in the clearing before turning to Hinata with a questioning look, prompting her to explain what happened. I found Kadate-san being killed by another ninja dressed up to look like him. Kadate-san mentioned something about his mask being stolen before his team disappeared before I managed to get him away, Hinata reported. Shikamaru sighed, well. If that's the case it's fairly obvious what happened, Shikamaru began as he looked down at the unconscious man, this sensei of theirs had his mask stolen by the guy dressed like him so that he could kill the other two on this team easily and have the survivor return to the rock village to tell everyone this their sensei did it. Sounds like some form of twisted revenge scheme to me, he explained. The group nodded in realization before Hinata frowned, a team of two is approaching from the east, but so is the swordsman from the south, Hinata exclaimed. Asuma instantly frowned, shit, since she can see them it's too late to run. He thought before stepping forward, you girl, protect your sensei. He was framed. Shikamaru, Naruto, Hanada, I'm trusting you to take care of the two chunin from the rock village got it? I'll try to assist as fast as I can but I have to make sure this other guy doesn't get to us before we get to him. Asuma ordered. Naruto nodded in determination as Shikamaru cracked his neck and knuckles in preparation, though as Asuma turned to Hanada. He saw the girl's hesitation, he was about to give her words of encouragement when Shikamaru spoke up again, how about our fourth attack pattern? Shikamaru said calmly as he placed a hand on her shoulder. Naruto nodded as Hanada gulped, which one is that again? Naruto asked. Hanada sighed at Naruto before Shikamaru face palmed, the one you wanted to call, bait and tackle, Shikamaru explained. Naruto grinned and nodded, yeah, Hanada nodded nervously, but, that means, she said before clearing her throat. Shikamaru smiled comfortingly at her, don't worry Hinata, you've got this. The moment he's near you get the open shot, Shikamaru said. Hey Hinata-chan, Naruto said with a lopsided grin, can you watch my back? I'd ask Shika but, well you know, you're better, Naruto said with a chuckle. Guys, Asuma said seriously, this is great and all but I can sense them now. Those Chunin will be here and by the looks of things, so will our swordsman friend from earlier. Asuma said as he reached into his weapons pouch. Hanada nodded in agreement before the three leapt into position, Naruto and Hanada standing side by side before Shikamaru knelt behind them and connected his shadow to their chakra, though not taking control, ready? Shikamaru asked. Asuma smirked over his shoulder as he walked forward, well, guess it's best I cut him off. Asuma said as he pulled out his signature weapons. 
chakra conductive trench knives. Asuma ran into the bushes as the girl began to look after her broken sensei, though not ten seconds later, two young men with chunin flak jackets ran into the clearing, one holding a kanai and the other wearing knuckle dusters. Go! Shikamaru shouted as he threw a flurry of shuriken. The two chunin slowed as Naruto and Hinata leapt up into the air, the shuriken forcing them to dodge, one of them by leaping up into the air and the other by rolling forward under them. The one that leapt up raised his kanai defensively as Hinata's descent cut him off, her foot hitting his wrist to knock the kanai away before she flowed around him, her palm hitting his shoulder as their shadows crossed over. The one that rolled forward barely managed to look up in time before seeing three Naruto's falling at him, one which only served as a punching bag from his knuckle dusters before it popped and the second one managed to kick him in the jaw from below his guard. He regained his bearings just as the real Naruto landed claw first on his shoulders, their shadows intertwining before Naruto pulled his claws free and rolled past him. The two rock chunin shouted in pain before freezing, Shikamaru's shadow possession connected to them thanks to Hinata and Naruto, shadow possession success. Shikamaru said with a smirk. The two frozen chunin's eyes widened as Naruto and Hinata turned back to face them. Hinata pulled her hand back, eight rivers. Aortic shudder. Hinata shouted as she folded down her pointer and middle finger before slamming the heel of her palm against the man's back. Naruto leapt up in a backflip before landing knee first on his enemy's sternum, making him splutter before Naruto's claws stabbed through his chest. Shikamaru disconnected his shadow from the two dead men before looking over to the side of the clearing as mist rolled in. This is his technique, Hinata said, the swordsman I mean, she said. The group was on guard before seeing a man walking out of the mist, a large shape over his shoulder that made Hinata lower her guard. Hinata? What is it? Naruto asked in worry. Asuma walked out of the mist with the massive longsword over one shoulder and dragging a dead ninja with his other hand, the mist slowly dissipating around him as he smirked at the team. You know, I was worried for nothing. This guy may have stolen the gravity sword from Suchigakure, but he obviously had no idea how to use a sword properly. Some mist ninjas never learn, it's more than a sword and a jutsu that makes a man," Asuma said with a confident chuckle. The rock kunoichi stared in amazement, W who are you people? she asked. Asuma smirked as he turned to look at her, Asuma Serutobi, leader of team 10 of Konoha, he said. Naruto grinned, Naruto Uzumaki, he exclaimed. Hanada bowed slightly, Hanada Hayuga. Shikamaru yawned, Shikamaru Nara. So, what are you going to do? He asked. The girl looked down sadly, if I do anything other than turn myself in as your prisoner you'll have to kill me, she said. Asuma nodded, yep, can't have you telling your village about us, he said. The girl nodded with tears in her eyes before taking off her headband, well I don't have much of a choice then do I? She asked rhetorically as she used a kanai to slash her headband before she put it back on, I'm Koyuki Vulhara, ex-rock ninja and trainee of the explosive core. She said as she stood, putting on a fake smile as she saluted. Shikamaru raised a brow, the explosive core? He asked. Koyuki sighed, yeah, she said, ready to explain. That's nice, great to have y'all with us, Asuma said as he got everyone's attention, but we have to move out now. Shikamaru, chain your shadow to hers and Hinata keep an eye on her. Naruto you lead them all back to our first campsite and I'll be along behind you with their sensei after cleaning up here, Asuma said. The group nodded in unison before Shikamaru linked himself to the girl and ran, the others soon forming around him before they disappeared into the distance. Asuma smiled until they were gone, sighing as he turned to look at the three corpses and the one near dead man, Shutendoji Akimono. I may be able to help the girl start a new life in Konoha, but your crimes list pretty far, and you're already near death anyway, he thought before lifting the gravity sword, sometimes I hate my job. Asuma thought with a saddened expression as he put the man out of his pain. Asuma looked over each of the bodies, deciding that there was nothing distinctly leading to Konoha other than the fact that one of the men died from the gentle fist style of fighting, so he stabbed the downed man through the heart with the gravity sword to ensure he looked murdered normally. Asuma turned to the stranger who stole the second Suchikage's gravity sword and lifted the blade for himself. I wonder if the old rumors are true. Asuma thought as he sent his chakra through the sword. He stood for a moment before feeling a pull on his chakra located at the bottom of the handle, there it is, he thought as he placed a hand over the spot. 
As his chakra flowed in, the sword glowed purple before he cut the corpse of the stranger slightly on the leg, making him begin to float away as though he weighed nothing. I guess they are, he thought with a chuckle. No sighting here. The Konoha Chunin clicked the button on the mechanism around his neck, ditto, that leaves one place, he said as he looked up from the tree he was hiding in, Gato's tower itself, he said seriously. Moving in now. First room there are some thugs and guards. No Zabuza. There's only one room per floor in this tower and it appears that all of Gato's hired men are on this one. The Konoha Chunin nodded, then move on to the next floor. We've only got a few more days while he's out of commission. Once you locate his quarters, we can make a plan and finish this tomorrow night. Right? He asked into his headphone. The Konoha Chunin frowned. Hey, what's going on? He asked. Your friend tried to find Zabuza Sama. He needs his rest, so I made sure you two couldn't wake him up. The Konoha Chunin's eyes widened. Who the hell? He asked in shock before looking up at the tower. His eyes widened even further at the size of the moon, lighting up the tower from behind along with two other things. A body flying through the air, and a masked mist hunter ninja falling at him, shit. Hidden Jutsu. A thousand water needles, the next day. Alrighty. Wake up time. Hanada and Koyuki stirred as they looked up, making Koyuki blink at Hanada, not able to do much else considering how she was tied up for the night. Hanada opened the tent to see Asuma crouching as he looked in. You okay, Hanada? She didn't try anything? Asuma asked. Hanada shook her head. I don't think so, Sensei. We woke up together just now, Hanada said before looking to Koyuki and undoing the gag. How was your sleep, Koyuki chan? Hanada asked. Koyuki cleared her throat and spoke after sighing. It was all right considering I was tied up throughout the whole thing. Asuma san. What am I going to be allowed to do in Konoha? she asked asuma frowned slightly i'm hoping whatever you want but considering you used to be a rock ninja it may be difficult he said koyuki frowned does it make any difference that i didn't choose this life i was born with the she glanced at hanada before looking at asuma you know the thing needed to be put in the explosive core she mumbled asuma nodded i know that's what i was hoping to be honest either way though you'll have to be interviewed by the hokage first before a decision is made Asuma said. The girl shrank back, T the Hokage. Isn't there anyone else who can handle it? She asked fearfully. Asuma sighed and turned to Hinata. Hinata, I want you to tell Koyuki here about the Hokage's two favorite duties and answer any questions she may have about him. Don't hold back, just be honest. Asuma said before stepped away from the tent and letting the door flap shut. Hinata nodded as the girl looked to her in confusion. Hokage sama likes to visit the children at the orphanage to play with them whenever he can. Other than that, the only hobby I know of is that he likes to enjoy the sunset over the village from the top of the Hokage mountain. Hanada explained. Koyuki seemed shocked at that. He, isn't he a dictator? she asked. Hanada raised a brow at that. Huh? Our Hokage? I think he's probably the furthest from it in the village's history. The only thing he dictates is his lunch breaks. She said before tilting her head in thought, though Naruto kun and Konohamaru kun always seem to be taking up that time, she said with a giggle. Koyuki nodded as Hanada helped her get out of the sleeping bag she was provided. Maybe the leaf isn't as bad as Suchikage sama always made it out to be, she thought curiously. Are you sure, Kakashi? Just yesterday you were in bed, Tazuna said. Kakashi eyes smiled and nodded as he hobbled alongside Tazuna. Yeah, I'm sure. Having those three as extra hands for you won't hurt and a bit of sunlight is good for everyone, he said surely. Ah. Kakashi and Tazuna looked up at Ino's scream, their eyes widening as they rushed forward through the fog to see the end of the half-constructed bridge. Kiba was throwing up off the side of the bridge with Akamaru barking at him as Sasuke glared at the bloody display with an angered expression on his face as he held Ino as the girl cried on his shoulder. Tazuna paled as Kakashi's one visible eye hardened, how? dare they kakashi mumbled as his fists tightened at the end of the bridge the two konoha chunin's heads were sitting on top of a pair of spears their bodies mutilated by multiple swords knives senbon spears and what appeared to be a flag's posts through them as the mist continued to clear to show what was written on the flag between them all who face lord gato shall fall to the demon of the mist join or die so we're just gonna keep her like a pet Naruto asked curiously. 
Shikamaru and Asuma sighed, though it was Asuma who explained. No, we're taking her back to the border patrol lookout and dropping her off there after you and Hinata do the last checkpoint by yourself okay? Naruto and Hinata nodded, though Naruto did so with a salute while Hinata blushed. Yes sir. Naruto shouted before grinning at Hinata. Hinata nodded before sharing a smile with the still partially restrained Koyuki. We'll be back in about five hours I think, right sensei? Hinata asked. Asuma nodded, should be. Just follow the river when you get to it, head away from the final valley and when you get to the lake check in with the lookout there. Tell them the situation and they'll send a letter off to update dad. Then come back and when you meet up with us we'll head back to the other tower. Got it? He asked. Naruto and Hinata nodded before Koyuki leapt forward. Though unable to do much, her hands were only cuffed so still somewhat usable. And it surprised the team to see her leap over and hug Naruto. Thank you Naruto-kun. For coming for me yesterday. For saving me. Koyuki said as she began to cry. Hinata frowned at the obvious show of affection, though before anything could be done Naruto had patted her on the head with a hand, though he didn't return the hug, any time Koyuki-chan, he said with a grin before looking to Hinata, we better get going, Naruto said. Hinata nodded and turned away as Naruto and Koyuki stepped apart, the girl wiping her eyes and nodding with a small blush and a smile. Naruto and Hinata began to jog off before they leapt into the trees, you're on point Hinata-chan, Naruto shouted. Hinata smiled and nodded as she closed her eyes before they snapped open, now without hand seals, by Akugan, she announced. Naruto smirked as she lead the way quickly, ever since she began that training with her father her reserves have like, more than tripled, he thought before his mind wandered to his other teammate and he frowned slightly, Shika doesn't even want to train at all, Naruto thought. Hinata giggled at Naruto's apparently cute pout, better not get distracted, can't mess up in front of Naruto-kun she thought as she dashed ahead. Naruto hesitated for a moment before following after her, staying as low as he could as they scanned for any sign of potential damage or clues as to whether or not someone had crossed their border recently. You can't all quit now, Tazuna shouted. The large group of men nodded apologetically as they turned in their hard hats, sorry Tazuna-san, his close friend said, we don't want to die, look what happened to those ninja, we can't let ourselves or our families have that happen to them he said apologetically and fearfully. Tazuna gritted his teeth, fine. Those of you who want to be oppressed and enslaved sit back and hide in your homes, while you're in there cowering and starving to death I'll be out here protecting my family and fighting for them, Tazuna shouted. Tazuna's expression faltered as he began to see that it was almost everyone who had left, his brow furrowing as he noticed that there was literally only 12 people left willing to help. Team. We're going to start helping them build all right, Kakashi declared, though he was still standing only with the help of crutches. The trio nodded as Kiba knelt and tossed a soldier pill into the air. Akamaru jumped up and aided before landing on his back, man beast clone. Kiba shouted as Akamaru took the form of Kiba, no worries Tazuna san. We'll have this done in no time, Kiba exclaimed. Tazuna smiled at them before seeing everyone begin to get to work. I hope Kakashi is better soon. Only four more days until that Zabuza fella is expected to be back. Tazuna thought before starting his work for the day as well. Kakashi watched the people walk off before sighing and hobbling off the bridge. He found some privacy and took out a soldier pill. This may hurt like a. But if anything it might actually make my reserves grow a bit. And there's no way Zabuza did this. Whoever did is just as strong as Zabuza and obviously on his side. Kakashi thought before pulling his mask out a little and eating a soldier pill. Kakashi formed hand seals as he dropped the crutches, summoning jutsu. Hanada and Naruto paused as they looked up and down the final valley, whoa. Naruto said with an awe-filled smile at the sight of the massive waterfall. Hanada nodded with a similar smile, though she had seen it three times now throughout her life, it was still beautiful. She then turned to look down river, do you want to run up here along the top? She asked. Naruto raised a brow before looking down seeing that there was no ground to run on next to the water, where else would we run? he asked curiously. Hanada smiled, oh right, he doesn't think multilaterally yet, she thought before turning to the edge of the cliff, follow me, she said before stepping off the edge. Naruto's eyes widened before he ran to the edge and looked down, seeing Hanada standing sideways on the wall, oh. He mumbled before following after her slowly. He came by a stop at her side and grinned, got it, 
he exclaimed before they ran off horizontally. An hour later the awake Shunan of the two alternating ninja raised a brow as he looked down, is that a dog? He mumbled as he looked at the animal that ran into the clearing. From his point of view, the dog ran at the wall like it didn't see it coming before it climbed the wall, oh, a ninja hound, the man exclaimed. Pakun stopped as he landed on the railing in front the ninja and spat out a scroll, hey, is there any mobile teams coming through here soon? Kakashi needs backup ASAP, Pakun said seriously. The man blinked before picking up the scroll, seeing the Konoha symbols on Pakun's headband and the scroll itself. Damn, I don't know of any Jonin in the area that can back up Kakashi. The Chunin thought with a sigh, maybe I should check the logbooks. He thought before turning, come inside, we got some leftover bacon from this morning if you want it, he offered. Pakun nodded, sure, but this is kinda serious, he said. The Chunin nodded, I know, you rest and recover and I'll look, he said as he closed the door. I can see it, Hanada announced with a grin. Naruto nodded as he ran along behind her, dragging an oversized fish that had jumped up to eat him behind him, awesome, let's go, he shouted to her. Hanada ducked as Naruto threw the fish as high as he could before leaping up after it twirling as the lower point of his cloak moved over the fish and sealing it instantly as they continued moved closer towards their target. After a minute more of running, the clones stopped as Naruto and Hanada looked up in success, found the check in tower, Naruto exclaimed. Hanada nodded as they went up to the front door, knocking excitedly before waiting. And waiting. Where is everybody? Naruto exclaimed. Suddenly, the door opened in front of them, the two looking up as they expected a ninja to answer the door, but to their surprise, it was the familiar face of Pakun wrapped around a piece of bacon. Pakun? Naruto asked. What are you doing here Pakun-san? Hanada asked as she crouched. Pakun seemed to grin before finishing his bacon to talk. Hey, you guys are with Asuma right? He asked. Naruto and Hanada nodded as the lookout Chunin poked his head into view. Asuma's team? He asked. Naruto looked down at Hinata in sudden concern, why is that important? he asked. Pakun looked up at them, found my team kid, count them as checked in on your own time cause we gotta go. Pakun exclaimed as he ran between the two of them. Hinata and Naruto turned as the Chunin approached the door, we do. What for? Naruto asked. Pakun paused and looked over his shoulder, Kakashi needs backup and your sensei fits the bill. So take me back to him cause we gots da go. Pakun exclaimed. But what about our mission? Hanada asked. The Chunin interjected, I've got a Chunin trio coming through here in a few hours, I can redirect them to take the path back to cover you. Can you get to the others and back by midnight? He asked. Naruto groaned as Hanada forced a weak smile, another five hour run. Yes, we'll be back around nine tonight, she said as her and Naruto moved to help. Pakun nodded before raising a brow at Naruto's behavior. I thought you wanted to save Sasuke and rub it in his face or something kid. What's the problem with that now? Pakun asked. Instantly, Naruto was by Pakun's side grinning, let's go puppy, he said before dashing off. Hanada sighed before turning to run before waving at the Chunin, thank you. We'll be back as soon as possible, she said before dashing off after Naruto, blinking her Byakugan on on the way. Hanada smirked as she saw Naruto pick up Pakun the overtired dog smirking in appreciation at the lift, 1D rank, AC rank and now a third mission all on one trip. I wonder if we've set a record for a genin team's assignment take. She thought as she caught up to Naruto and ran with him along the river's edge again. The next day, morning, well I must say that's very impressive Eno, Kakashi said with an eye smile to the blonde girl as she ran up and down a nearby tree after only half an hour of trying the tree climbing skill. How about you two boys? Kakashi asked as he turned to Kiba and Sasuke. Akamaru stood sideways on the tree like it was an instinctual thing while Kiba tried again and again to run up the tree. Though Sasuke was glaring at the tree like it was his sworn enemy before he began to run at it, and fall after a handful of steps. Kakashi chuckled at them before a shadow moved over him, making him look up and raise a brow at what he saw, a messenger bird. Finally, some good news. He thought as the bird swooped down towards him. Kakashi raised his arm to let the bird land on it, taking out the letter tied to its leg before reading it. Don't worry Kakashi, Asuma Serutobi is on his way with his. Genin team as potential backup, they should be there. 
by approximately 13 hours after this message gets to you. Kakashi smirked under his mask, Asuma, that's lucky. No one knows how to fight one of the seven swordsmen like the one of the twelve ninja guardians. He thought with an eye smile before raising his arm and letting the bird return to its post. Hey sensei, Ino said, what was that for? She asked curiously. Kakashi eyes smiled at her, that backup we asked for is on its way, and luckily along with it is some of your friends from the academy, isn't that joyous? He said calmly to her. Ino smiled back uncomfortably, these clones still creeps me out, she thought with a shiver before looking at her sensei again, well, since I can do it should I go help the real Kakashi and the other four copies? She asked. Kakashi blinked and nodded, makes sense, though you don't have to point out I'm not real all the time, he mumbled as Ino ignored him and walked away. Sasuke paused as Ino walked past him, expecting her to stop and commence her fawning. She walked right past him. Sasuke scowled as she left, though his scowl turned to Kiba's tree as he glared up at Akamaru, the small dog wheezing in laughter at him as Kiba tried to hold it in. Shut that damn mud up dog boy, Sasuke ordered. Kiba just laughed more. Oh no. Is Sasuke-chan upset cause he ain't the hot topic anymore? He said before laughing again. Sasuke turned back to his tree angrily before he kept training, channeling his rage as a fuel to get stronger. Are you sure she'll be okay back there? Naruto asked in concern. Asuma nodded, yeah, she'll be staying there until we're on the way back. Take a detour, pick her up, no problem, Asuma said. Hanada's frown increased as Naruto once again brought up his concern over the new girl. She'll be fine Naruto, why do you care so much anyway? She snapped at him. Naruto looked ahead to keep his face out of their view, she's got no one left. I know what that's like. Naruto said seriously as he continued to look away. Instantly Hinata felt bad, causing her to look down at her feet quietly before Shikamaru spoke up, hey, isn't that the border? The group looked up as Asuma nodded, seeing the beginnings of what looked to be a lake and a few crossing rivers. Yep, good catch Shikamaru. Asuma said as he was the first to drop down from the trees and begin running down the one road. The group began to follow him as Naruto spoke up, where are we exactly? He asked. Asuma laughed, the land of waves guys, welcome and remember not to get lost or die. Hanada, I need you to activate your Byakugan and keep it active until we find the township Tazuna is located in. It can't be too far, he said before they dashed ahead. Crash the man chuckled as the mug exploded in his hand, causing the masked person by his side to kneel and begin picking up the pieces. I am happy you're regaining your strength Zabuza-sama, but you must rest for another day before you can have the last set of herbal medicine. The masked person explained. Zabuza chuckled, just get the herbs tomorrow and make sure you do this right. You don't want me to get mad do you? He asked intimidatingly. The person giggled at Zabuza's scary expression, I like it when you're mad Zabuza-sama, it means you're passionate about something still. Zabuza sighed as he sat back in bed, yeah, well, just clean up and get some rest, he said before turning away. The masked person smiled softly as they continued to pick up the pieces of mug, cleaning and clearing the mess before moving around and taking a place on the other side of the bed. Zabuza's breathing eventually evened out to show he was asleep, letting the masked person remove their mask and shuffle backwards, her soft face smiling as Zabuza unconsciously pulled her into a hug against in his chest. Haku sighed in contentment, please, just sleep Zabuza-sama, she thought as she fell asleep in his grasp. Kakashi stumbled before catching himself against the wall of Tazuna's house, maybe I shouldn't have pushed it with that soldier pill, he thought with a sigh before standing tall again. Kakashi walked calmly, the only difference to usual was that he wasn't reading his ever-present porn so that he could focus on his footsteps, then again, the shadow clones and summoning really have helped us out, guess it all depends on Asuma to see if it was worth it, Kakashi thought. The door opened and Kakashi eyes smiled at the woman who smiled out at him. Kakashi san, the boys didn't come back for lunch like Ino chan and you, are they okay? She asked. Kakashi nodded as he walked in behind her, don't worry about them, just a little training is all. Kakashi said before closing the door behind him. What's our heading Hanada? Asuma asked as the group paused at the edge of a small island. Hanada's Baikugan scanned the area around them through the mist, I can see the edge of what looks like a massive bridge pointing to the mainland, if that's it then it's just there, she said as she pointed. Shikamaru sighed, 
We can't see where, there, is Hanada, he reminded her. Naruto stepped forward as he sniffed the air, Hey Hanada, can you see anyone you recognize? I smell something familiar, he mumbled. Hanada's face scrunched slightly as she focused her by Kugan, yes, Ino san is up on the bridge helping with the construction. And I think the other workers are someone's clones, she explained. Asuma nodded, you're friends with Ino right Shikamaru? Is she on Kakashi's team? Asuma asked. Shikamaru sighed, unfortunately, yes, he said with a frown. Asuma chuckled, well then, you three stay in formation and follow Hanada, I'll take the scenic route. He said before running out across the water as if it was the most casual thing to do at that moment. Whoa! Naruto exclaimed as Asuma disappeared, how'd he do that? He asked. Hanada smiled gently, it's the water walking skill, the next step after the tree climbing when it comes to mastering chakra control, she said as she stepped onto the water herself. Shikamaru sighed as he and Naruto ran along the beach adjacent to her, though as she nodded, the two turned and leapt into the mist. Landing on the small island she ran up to before moving around it, over me, 30 meters, she said. Shikamaru and Naruto leapt again to land on the small island before Hinata came into their view again. How many more? Naruto asked curiously. Hinata paused and looked around as she counted, 18 more before we get to the bridge, then we can go up there, Hinata said. Shikamaru groaned while Naruto chuckled at him for it, this is such a drag. Shikamaru complained. Hash 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 Sasuke fell back off the tree again, flipping so he'd land on his feet at the last second, damn it, he shouted before punching the ground. His shout made Kiba look over at him with wide eyes, whoa Sasuke, you okay? He asked as he sat up from his place lying on the grass. Sasuke panted for a moment before glaring over his shoulder at Kiba, how did you and that dog learn this? Sasuke demanded. Kiba blinked before smirking. Oh yeah, he can't accept being second best, let alone last. Kiba thought before climbing to his feet shakily, having been training for hours to only achieve the skill a half hour earlier, the fact that you're staying stuck for a while means you've got the perfect amount of chakra, it's just keeping the shape of a platform when you're climbing. Make its balance an instinct before you concentrate on climbing up. Kiba said before turning to his dog, right Akamaru? The dog barked and ran over to Sasuke barking up at him for a moment before he sighed maintain the platform balance it sasuke mumbled before walking up to the tree sasuke stepped up onto the tree and instead of running he held himself horizontally for a moment focus he thought as akamaru began to bark to him in encouragement sasuke began to walk slowly before the walk turned into a jog his brow relaxed as he found the perfect balance for him i have it he thought as he began to run getting to the top of the tree Sasuke leapt through the air to land on another one, running back down it with apparent ease before he ran onto solid ground and slid to a stop in front of Kiba and his dog. The two cheered for him as Akamaru jumped on Sasuke's lap as Kiba laughed, Awesome Sasuke! You made that look easy, he exclaimed with a grin. Sasuke smirked, damn right! He mumbled before falling to his side, just like Kiba had done when he first did it. Kiba blinked as Akamaru barely managed to crawl out from under Sasuke, um, Sasuke? Seeing that he was unconscious or at least near to it, Kiba pulled Sasuke's arm over his shoulder, come on, let's go get ourselves an early dinner, Kiba said with a chuckle as he began to limp out of the clearing, Akamaru barking after him and Sasuke the whole way. They hobbled back to the river, finally arriving at the river opposite Tazuna's small fishing wharf. Kiba sighed, great can't just jump it with Sasuke, Kiba thought. Sasuke groaned as he stirred, Kiba didn't even see him open his eyes before he nodded, together then, Sasuke said. Kiba nodded, one, two, three, Kiba shouted before they pushed off together weakly. They landed heavily on the wharf before Kiba helped Sasuke back up, you good yet? he asked. Sasuke shook his head, think it'll take longer than that, he said with a chuckle. The two got to solid land again as they saw Akamaru doggy paddle out of the water and shake himself dry. Kiba smirked at the dog as he lead the way to the house barking, Kiba, smell, Akamaru barked to him. Kiba raised a brow before taking a deep breath through his nose. His eyes widened before he grinned, no way. What are they doing here? Kiba asked out loud as he used his free hand to open the back door. 
Sasuke and Kiba looked into the room to see the entirety of Team 10 along with Ino and the two Janin looking at them from around Tazuna's dinner table. Sasuke glared at Naruto as if he had made some kind of heinous mistake, Hey guys, how's it going? Naruto asked, happy to see his two old classmates. Sasuke shoved his way to the table, pushing off Kiba to do so before he glared at the blonde, You're in, my spot, he said between deep breaths. Naruto bit his lip to hold in his laughter, sure. Tell ya what, if you can take it from me you can have it. Naruto said challengingly, seeing that Sasuke could do little more than stand at the moment. Asuma sighed as Kakashi raised a brow, damn it, don't tap into his competitive nature. Asuma mumbled, causing Kakashi to chuckle. Yeah well, Sasuke isn't one to back down. The only reason he and Kiba get along is because Kiba sees Sasuke as part of his pack, Kakashi explained. Naruto just sat calmly as he lifted up his last morsel of food and ate it with a grin. Watching the barely able to stand Sasuke glare at him, take a picture, it'll last longer. Naruto said with a chuckle. Sasuke gritted his teeth angrily before shoving Naruto and falling back, not expecting his weight to counteract the pressure so much. Naruto raised a brow as he watched Sasuke almost fall over if not for Kiba catching him, making Naruto drop his challenging grin as he stood. Hey. Are you guys all right? Naruto asked seriously. Kiba nodded as he moved Sasuke forward, the Uchiha shoving his way past Naruto to take his seat. Yeah, just tired from training, Kiba said with a smile. Naruto's eyes widened as he nodded. Ooh, right. Why didn't ya say so? Naruto asked as he stepped aside for Kiba. Kiba nodded to him as they shook hands. Kiba kun, have you an Akamaru eaten? Ino asked. The group stared in amazement as Ino leaned over Sasuke, almost completely ignoring the man previously known as the love of her life, in favor of talking to the boy that only six months earlier she'd been calling Mudbaka. Kiba smiled at Ino, not yet Ino, he said, liking the attention though obviously too tired to do much. Kiba stepped towards the table before stumbling himself, though luckily Naruto was there to catch him, are you sure you're alright? Naruto asked in concern. Kiba nodded as Naruto helped out him in a seat, though the blonde genin had to quickly step away as Ino appeared in front of Kiba. Kiba kun? What's wrong? She asked with worry obvious on her face. Naruto sat down in Ino's old seat, glancing at Hinata and Shikamaru across the table for an explanation, receiving only a curious look from Hinata and a shrug from Shikamaru. How can you guys be so carefree right now? The table went quiet as everyone turned to the young boy sitting between Tazuna and his daughter, Tsunami. Kakashi lowered his book to glance at Inari, hm? Sorry? He asked, obviously having not been listening. Inari slammed his hands on the table as he stood, you're all gonna die no matter how hard you fight back. That training means nothing against someone like Gato. He'll just get one of his men to kill you, Inari shouted. The group was quiet for a moment before Shikamaru cleared his throat, tell ya what kid, we'll put Naruto on the front lines and then let them try, Shikamaru said as he finished his last piece of food but kept his knife in hand. Inari glared between Shikamaru and Naruto, though Naruto seemed more curious than anything else, what could he do? You guys have no idea what you're up against, hundreds of men with hundreds of swords and spears, they'll kill him, Inari shouted. Shikamaru smirked before throwing the knife across the table, stabbing Naruto in the center of the chest and knocking him back. Sasuke and Kakashi's eyes widened while Kiba growled angrily and Ino screamed, What the Shikamaru? Kiba shouted as he jumped to his feet, wanting to help Naruto in some way. Yeah man, Naruto said as he rubbed his sore head from having bumped it when he fell, ignoring the knife sticking out from his right lung, where was the warning? That hurt. Naruto said casually before slowly pulling out the knife. Everyone watched as Naruto looked down as his shirt and pouted at the blood while Inari just stared in awe and amazement, unable to move until Shikamaru spoke again, we'll have Naruto take all their weapons with almost no effort, I'll hold them all still, he said as Inari suddenly found himself unable to look away from him, and Hinata will poke them, Shikamaru said. Sasuke scoffed weakly, poke them? Like that's gonna help, he mumbled with a smirk. Hanada frowned across the table at Sasuke before realizing that the sweet innocent Hayuga heir would never be suspected as the one to kick someone under the table. Ow! Sasuke exclaimed as someone kicked him in the shin under the table. 
Inari went to get mad again when Shikamaru's shadow disconnected from him. You don't need to worry, kid. Even a genin can handle all of his thugs, and you got two janin here. Shikamaru said to him. Inari ran upstairs, tears in his eyes as Asuma and Kakashi shared a glance, no pressure. Kakashi said jokingly. Asuma chuckled, yeah, none at all. He said. The group talked quietly as Tsunami began to clear the table, though Tazuna sighed as he looked over to a picture of his whole family, the corner of it and subsequently a certain man torn from its place, poor Inari, he thought with a sigh. So where is the real you? Asuma asked as he had a smoke on the back porch. The Kakashi next to him I smiled, in bed upstairs. I pushed it with a soldier pill the other day to get some reinforcements as well as make a few clones. I'll be able to fight when Zabuza arrives, but honestly, not at full capacity. The clone explained. Asuma nodded, I'm guessing you overused your Sharingan again? He asked, earning a nod from Kakashi, why? Kakashi sighed, Zabuza. He's one tough opponent, but the kicker is he has someone else with him, someone disguised as a hunter ninja and as strong as a chunin at least, he said. Asuma nodded as he took a drag, since you've fought him once I assume you've made one of your crazy fight plans then? He asked with a chuckle. Kakashi chuckled, for once, not so crazy, simple works best when it's least expected. Kakashi said with an eye smile. The genin all laid down in the spare room of Asuma's house, the six of them in their sleeping bags along the far wall before Shikamaru glanced to his right, seeing Kiba sigh as Akamaru sat on his stomach and Ino took an arm free from her sleeping bag to hug him. Hey Kiba. Shikamaru began softly, pretty sure that Naruto's snoring would cover up from the other's hearing. How'd you and Ino start? Getting along so well? Shikamaru asked. Kiba smirked before glancing to his right, seeing Ino and Sasuke were either asleep or looked close to it before looking back at Shikamaru. There was these guys called the Demon Brothers that attacked us. We thought they took out Sensei right away so while Ino stayed back, Sasuke and I attacked. But Sasuke led his past him to see who his target was, leaving both Ino and Tazuna in the lurch, Kiba said with a frown, he shouldn't have done that, but luckily I managed to hit him with a smoke bomb to slow him down for Akamaru to get his ankle. Sasuke seemed angry that I stopped the guy but at least as I came in to finish him off and help Ino, he had my back with the first guy the first was fighting. Kiba explained softly. Shikamaru smirked, and since then she's looked at the both of you in a new light, you as her knight in shining armor and Sasuke as. Well the man willing to sacrifice his friends and clients for the mission. Shikamaru said as his smirk turned into a frown. Kiba nodded and smiled as he wrapped an arm around Ino in return, yeah I guess. But he's still part of our pack, he'll come around. Kiba said happily before yawning. Noticing the yawn, Shikamaru rolled to face away from Kiba sighing at naruto's wide open and snoring mouth before glancing past him to see hinata curled up into a ball to hug whatever it was she had in her sleeping bag if you say so just look after her all right she's not only my friend but if you knew her father you'd know he can literally mind you shikamaru warned kiba paled slightly at that you you don't think it'd be that bad do you he asked shikamaru shrugged depends if you hurt his little princess s heart he said with a sigh Kiba gulped before turning to look up at the ceiling, imagining the brain dead vegetable he could get turned into, and hugging Ino a little closer in comfort. Night Kiba. Yeah, night Shika. Two days later, the six genin of Konoha waited patiently outside Tazuna's house. So, you guys only just learned the tree climbing? Naruto asked. Sasuke's scowl was obvious as he glared at Naruto. You got something better? he asked. Naruto shook his head, not yet, but Hinata does, she can do all the chakra control exercises, even the blade balancing. Naruto said as he pointed to the now blushing girl. Ino frowned, not liking the fact that she didn't know something, what's that? she asked. Everyone turned to Hinata expectantly, causing her to blush bright red as she pulled out a basic kanai and held it over her open palm. Team 7's eyes widened as Hinata let go of the kanai causing it to slowly rotate above her hand as she moved her fingers in a flowing motion. See? Hinata said with a happy smile as she watched the kanai twirl. Hold up, Kiba said as he frowned at Team 10, how can you do that? And how come you guys know the tree climbing skill already? He asked. Shikamaru yawned from his place laying on the ground next to them, we got taught that first day after our sensei's test. 
Sensei had us learn all the theory of the next chakra control exercise as well since we were gonna learn it once we get back from our D rank. Which I guess we still haven't technically finished yet, he mumbled. Sasuke scowled at that, they were still on D ranks when their sensei taught them? On their first day? He thought, seriously ready to punch his own sensei in the face. Kiba was about to speak up when Akamaru barked, gaining his attention, huh, looks like they're coming guys, he said. Naruto took a deep breath through his nose and smirked, so I may not be able to smell things as good as Akamaru, but by the looks of things it better than Kiba's. Naruto thought as a few moments later, Kiba reacted as if smelling something only just then. A few seconds later, Kakashi led the way out of the front door and I smiled. Well guys, do you remember the plan? He asked as Tazuna and Asuma followed him out. The group nodded, hi sensei. Kakashi looked over to Asuma and nodded. All right guys, let's head to our checkpoint. Catch you at the bridge, Asuma said to his team. Ino looked like she was about to say something, but Team 10 was already on its way from the moment Asuma's order registered in their ears. Bye guys, she mumbled. Kakashi sighed. I really hope today isn't the day Zabuza attacks. This is still the first time we've headed out like this as a unit. He thought as he led his own team towards the bridge with Tazuna. All right team, Asuma said. We'll circle the block and then hit the roofs for our return. That way if Gatos sent anyone to interfere with Tazuna's family we'll be able to stop them. Next step is to head to the wharf underneath the bridge and mark our partners. You remember who has who? He asked, looking over his shoulder to Shikamaru. Shikamaru nodded, I've got Ino since my best ninjutsu will be near useless in the mist unless they get close. Her position will be by Tazuna's side the whole time. Shikamaru explained. Naruto grinned, I've got Sasuke since his ninjutsu is the most destructive. His position is the to right side of the bridge, Naruto said. Hanada spoke last, I am to keep my eyes on Kiba through the mist and if necessary be ready to give Akamaru a soldier pill, she reported. Asuma nodded, good work guys, I'll be on Kakashi's back okay? One of these next few days Zabuza will be attacking the bridge and on that day we need to be ready to take action, Asuma said sternly. Oh. And here I thought we'd have at least one more day. Kakashi sighed with an obvious frown under his mask. Team 7 and Tazuna stared at the thick mist that seemed to start just a few steps from Tazuna's bridge and make most of the structure disappear inside it. The group was quiet for a moment before Tazuna chuckled nervously, Why you first guys? He said as he took a step back. Clang Kakashi's kanai deflected the senbon that had been flying straight at Tazuna. So you brought some back up this time? Kakashi asked. The mist receded a few meters to show two silhouettes walking forward before Zabuza and a masked figure appeared. I thought you'd have figured out about Haku's true allegiance by now. What's the point in hiding her? Zabuza said with a dark chuckle. Kakashi reached for his headband, Ino, stay on Tazuna, Sasuke, Kiba. I'm trusting you to hold off that Haku person. He said before lifting his headband. Zabuza chuckled as the mist began to roll in quickly, sending in children to fight for you. He said before stepping back to become mere silhouettes again, how noble of you, he said with a laugh. Kakashi threw his kanai, stabbing it point first into what looked to be Zabuza, only for the silhouette to fade as the kanai hit it, damn. This mist will make it more difficult, he thought as he charged into the mist after Zabuza. Tunneling Fang. Kiba shouted as he seemed to turn into a drill and fly into the mist towards Haku. Sasuke charging in after him with a kanai in each hand. Ino backed Tazuna up and glanced down to ensure he was standing over the drainage system that led from the bridge down to the river underneath, just hold on old man, Kakashi sensei and the others will finish this quickly, she said comfortingly as she readied her own weapons. Tazuna gulped before hearing loud clangs beginning to come from the mist, oh shit. I really hope Asuma-san's team hurries, he thought nervously. Just like you thought sensei, Hanada began with her Baikugan active. Two men with swords are approaching from the wharf and there's another man watching from the dumpster there. She said pointing to a dumpster across the road from Tazuna's. Asuma nodded. Three? Kakashi knew about the spy of Gatos who's been hiding out in the dumpster. But if two men are coming as well, he thought with a frown, then maybe the attack is happening today, he thought. Asuma looked back at his his team, only to frown as he noticed they were gone. Uh oh. He thought as he stood tall to look down off the building. 
The man in the dumpster smirked as he peered out of the small hole he had drilled into the side of the dumpster. Perfect, they're on the way right on time, he mumbled. Not really. The man nodded, yeah it is, the ninja are gone to the bridge or the market section so this is the perfect time to grab the bridge builder's family, he said surely. Why would you think the market section? Cause that's where they've, the man paused as he realized he was supposed to be alone in his spying spot. He turned and lashed out with his fist, punching the steel wall of the bin with a shout of pain before Shikamaru's face appeared from the darkness, grabbing the guy's wrist with one hand as he held the rat seal with his free hand. Eh? Hey. Shikamaru smirked as the man fell into Shikamaru's shadow, popping out the other end which had reached up to be on the underside of the lip of the roof. Ah! Shikamaru opened the lid of the bin and looked up, watching the man fall down two stories before landing face first back on the metal floor of the bin and knocking him out rather painfully, shadow port success, he said with a smirk. The two fake samurai paused their walk along the wooden wharf as Hanada landed in front of them, well well, what do we have here Waraji? The samurai with a beanie said with a chuckle. Waraji, the taller of the two, chuckled as he looked Hanada up and down, looks like we got a lovely little treat before we get to the tsunami woman he said as his grin grew and he stared at Hinata, you mind if I have her Zori? Zori shrugged, sure, I prefer them a little older, he began before noticing the veins around Hinata's eyes, what's with her eyes? he asked curiously. Hinata smiled softly as her Byakugan watched Naruto hold his breath as he used his heavy weight to walk along the bottom of the shallow river, his claws sliding out while the two men in front of her talked and walked towards her, any time now Naruto-kun, she thought, hiding her slight nervousness with the calm smile on her face. She watched Naruto slash through the supports of the wharf, making the two men shout in shock as they fell off balance, giving Hinata the perfect opportunity to throw a single kunai each, her Byakugan showing her the arteries that were most easily accessible, their carotids. Naruto pulled himself up out of the water, gasping for air as he turned to see the two corpses floating down the river, you know, that plan would work better if we had some way for me to breath down there, Naruto exclaimed as he reached a hand out. Hanada grabbed it and helped pull him onto the wharf, glancing over at the bodies that had a kanai sticking out each of their throats, well at least you can breath, she said with a frown in Naruto's direction. Naruto glanced at the two who were dead and chuckled, fair point, he mumbled. Hey you two. Hanada and Naruto looked up at Asuma as Shikamaru looked at Naruto with a raised brow at the fact he was wet, Naruto. I want you to leave a handful of clones here before we head off, you okay with that? he asked. Naruto nodded and formed a hand seal, shadow clone jutsu. Clang! Ah! Uh. Kiba shouted as he fell into a roll, coming up back to back with Sasuke as he pulled the senbon from his leg, damn it! Kiba thought as he bit his hand to calm down. Sasuke panted, equally as tired as Kiba though not the primary target of their enemy, the moment this Haku guy has slowed him enough he'll attack me too. I gotta find a way to keep up with him, Sasuke thought. Haku dashed out from the mist, her fist barely missing Sasuke as Kiba blocked the knee aiming for his face. For just a moment Haku was suspended in the air, giving Kiba the chance to change his block into a grab and swing Haku over his head to slam her into the ground. Splash Sasuke rolled out of the way as Haku splashed, showing she was a water clone as Sasuke saw the real Haku standing behind Kiba holding a single handed seal. Kiba. Sasuke exclaimed. Kiba turned as Haku's chakra channeled through the water, hidden jutsu, a thousand water needles. The two genin's eyes widened as the water from the water clone lifted into the air, chakra to my feet, Sasuke thought as he focused. Kiba dove to the side as Sasuke disappeared with a jump, the Inazuka shouting in pain from the twelve needles of water that stabbed into his legs. Haku dashed to Kiba though she quickly stopped and raised her arms in a block from Sasuke's kick, now Akamaru, Sasuke shouted. Haku looked at Kiba as the genin only just managed to regain his bearings, who's Akamar? Tunneling Fang. Haku looked over her shoulder with wide eyes to see a second copy of Kiba about to drill into her back, she sent her water chakra under her feet as she grabbed Sasuke's leg, sliding forward as she pulled Sasuke over her head and into Akamaru's path. Haku's eyes widened as Sasuke burst into water, a water clone? She thought in shock. Got you. Haku turned just in time to receive a kick to the chest, making her roll back and leap onto the railing of the bridge. 
Akamaru landed on all fours in front of Sasuke as Kiba limped to stand by his side. When do you learn that one, Sasuke? Kiba asked curiously. Sasuke opened his eyes as they glowed red, the Sharingan spinning slowly in his eyes with a tomo in each one. Just now, he said with a smirk. Haku frowned behind her mask, a Sharingan? Just like the copy ninja, she thought as she watched Kiba pull the Senbon out of his leg and take a battle ready position. I can't hold back, she decided. Sasuke's Sharingan span as Haku moved, he's coming. Sasuke said, causing Kiba and Akamaru to get ready. Sensei. Hanada shouted as she spotted the bridge with her Byakugan, they're there, Zabuza and his accomplice, she exclaimed. Asuma frowned, spread out, let's move, he shouted before leaping ahead. Can you give me a pointer to Ino Hanada? Shikamaru asked. She nodded, just at the beginning of the bridge, she's got Tazuna, Hanada said. Shikamaru nodded, good. You two follow the plan all right? He said, earning a nod from his teammates. As Shikamaru dashed off, Naruto began to run beside Hinata, just like with those idiots at the wharf right Hinata? Naruto said. Hinata nodded, yes, Sasuke and Kiba are together, do you have their scent? She asked. Naruto nodded, I got Akamaru and Kiba so far, they kinda stink. Naruto said with a chuckle. The two leapt out over the water under the bridge, using their chakra to stick to the pillars holding up the structure, going to either side of the bridge to come up opposite sides. Gah! Kiba shouted in pain as he was kicked back into Akamaru, the puppy losing its transformation technique before Kiba accidentally landed on him. Kiba looked over his shoulder with wide eyes, no Akamaru, he shouted as he saw his unconscious dog. Sasuke blocked the first two strikes before Haku managed to stab a senbon into his elbow giving Haku the extra second she needed to leap back and hold a single-handed seal, ice style, ice shard barrage, Haku shouted as she flung out her arms. Sasuke and Kiba's eyes widened as a flurry of sharp shards shot at the two of them. Earth style. Harden. That hurts, Haku paused, who are you? Sasuke and Kiba looked up in amazement, Hanada's skin gray as the small shards fell to the floor and Naruto panting as the many shards stood out from his already healing skin, I'm Naruto Uzumaki, he shouted as the shards fell free, the wounds closing behind them, and I'm gonna kick your ass, Naruto shouted before charging forward. Haku threw some senbon to force him to dodge, though her eyes widened as he took them in stride and leapt at her unarmed, fool, she thought as she pulled out another senbon from nowhere and thrust it forward. And then Naruto's claws slid out. Ah, Haku shouted in pain as Naruto's claws slashed through her senbon and almost entirely through her left forearm. Eight rivers. Hanada began as she charged forward, aortic shudder. Hanada shouted as her palm raced towards Haku's heart. Haku barely managed to roll to the side in time to dodge Hanada's strike. Two more keke jenke. Haku thought in amazement at Naruto's claws and Hanada's baikugan. No more time. I need to pull out all the stops, Haku thought. Hanada and Naruto took battle stances as Hanada kept her eyes on everyone while Naruto glanced between Kiba and Sasuke. You guys all right? Naruto asked with a grin. Kiba's grin grew to match his ear with, Yeah, we are, good to have some backup though. He said as he pulled himself to his feet in front of Akamaru protectively. Get out of here, Sasuke shouted angrily as he glared at Naruto and Hanada. This is my fight. He shouted before charging towards Haku. Seeing the opportunity, Haku began to form one handed seals as Sasuke sprinted right past Hinata and Naruto. Perfect. I'll trap all three of them. Haku thought before holding the last hand seal secret jutsu. Crystal ice mirrors. Sasuke was forced to stop as a mirror of solid ice formed in front of him before suddenly, the mist in the air began to clear up as it converted into ice, forming a dome of mirrors around Hinata. Naruto and Sasuke. Guys! Kiba shouted in worry as he got to his feet just as Haku appeared to step into the closest mirror. The moment Haku did so, copies of her appeared in each mirror facing both ways, letting loose a barrage of Senbon outside the dome. Kiba's eyes widened as he curled over to protect Akamaru, the Senbon piercing his flesh and making him fall limp. Kiba! Hanada exclaimed as she saw him fall with her eyes. Sasuke stepped back as Naruto and Hanada stood back to back, Hanada, can you see that guy? 
Naruto asked as he saw all the copies facing them pull out some senbon. Hanada shook her head, yes, but it looks like he's in every single mirror at once, she said in worry. Just stay out of the way. Sasuke shouted as he began to form hand seals, fire style. Phoenix flower jutsu. Sasuke shouted as he launched his jutsu at the mirror Haku had stepped into. The trio watched as the fireball hit the mirror and seemed to do no damage, crap, Naruto mumbled, I had hoped that was gonna melt it, Naruto said. Hanada sighed, well, if that didn't work then he might need to try one of his bigger jutsu, she asked with a slight smirk. Naruto smirked in return, but had no time to take action in informing Sasuke since Haku felt it time to return fire, my move, Haku said. Sasuke shouted in pain as he was hit by a few senbon in the forearm while Naruto gritted his teeth as he covered Hinata's back, letting the senbon stab into him while she trusted her hardened ninjutsu to cover her. Sasuke stumbled back in pain, though he gritted his teeth as his Sharingan reignited, I have to move. Sasuke thought as Haku threw the next flurry. Hanada gasped as one of the senbon managed to hit her straight on in part of her armor's weak spots. The inside of her joints which in this case, was her left elbow. Haku's eyes narrowed, so she can be hurt, and that boy is far too reliant on his healing abilities. Haku thought before glancing over towards her sensei, mentor and Precious one, I have to hurry, that's too Jonin against Zabuza-sama, even he will have trouble with that. Haku thought as more Senbon appeared in all 21 copies of her hand, try and stop this, Haku exclaimed. Zabuza kept his eyes closed as he hid in the mist, this is impossible, how is that man dodging me? He thought as he once more stealthily made his way through the mist towards the new Jonin, Asuma Serutobi. Zabuza opened his eyes slightly to watch Asuma through the mist, as long as I don't make eye contact with Kakashi then I'll be fine. Is his eyes closed? Zabuza thought as he noticed Asuma's stance. The man stood with his eyes closed as his left hand held half a horse seal, a smirk on his face as Zabuza saw why he couldn't sense the man through the mist and had to follow his sound only, is that wind chakra? He thought. Asuma stood in a bubble of wind chakra, the air around him almost acting solid to not only repel the mist, but give Asuma a warning system for when anyone came near him or dislodged the air. Zabuza frowned before experimentally tossing a kanai at Asuma to see if he'd be able to react to a smaller object in time. Zabuza ducked as he was forced to dodge his own kanai after Asuma caught it and threw it back at him. Asuma smirked, come on Zabu-chan, let me handle you just like I got to handle your friend Manjetsu, he said with a chuckle. Zabuza gritted his teeth angrily before his silent killing skills kicked in, letting him hear a fast approaching number of footsteps from behind. Zabuza dodged what appeared to be a small dog, Chidori. Zabuza turned and leapt out of Kakashi's way as the man's jutsu launched through the mist, coming to a stop as the jutsu faded and Kakashi crouched again, his hand resting on the back of one of his fastest hounds. Good try, Urushi. Kakashi said to his dog before getting in a ready stance again. Zabuza scowled as he formed hand seals and began to retreat further into the mist. Looks like I have just wiped it all out if I want to get them. He thought as he finished his hand seals, water style, water dragon jutsu. Kakashi and Asuma formed hand seals together as they saw the mist around them twisting into a large ninjutsu, wind style. Wind stream, Asuma shouted. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Kakashi shouted. Zabaza's eyes widened as the massive ball of fire exploded towards him, evaporating his ninjutsu in a few seconds and forcing him to form a quick series of hand seals and substitute with some water at the edge of the bridge. I thought Kakashi not using his Sharingan meant this one would be easy. But with that dog of his he knows when I'm getting close, he thought as he turned his focus to Asuma, and that damn temple guardian knows the wind spear technique, the one ultimate counter to the silent killing. Zabuza thought as he closed his eyes in thought while moving through the mist. Secret Jutsu. Crystal Ice Mirrors. Zabuza looked over at Haku's fight, smirking as his property seemed to be easily keeping the three conscious ninjas stuck in her cage of death, perfect. She'll be done soon and can take out Kakashi for me so I can focus on Asuma. Zabuza thought. Hey Asuma, Kakashi said between breaths, I'm really pushing it with my chakra here, at this rate someone will have to carry me back to the village if you can finish him. Kakashi said as he glanced up at Asuma, his dog growling lowly from its place in front of him. Asuma nodded, his wind sphere pulsing once to give him a sonar-like sensory through the mist, 
then step back for a moment, I'm gonna see if I can get into a straightforward fight with him, then I know I can catch him off guard, Asuma said. Kakashi shook his head, not gonna work, he knows not to face you up close, there's no way he'll let that happen. He would have researched you just like they researched me, he said before his dog went quiet, causing him to take a ready position back to back with Asuma, got anything unexpected from the famous wind using Fire Temple Guardian? Kakashi asked. Asuma's brow furrowed for a moment before he smirked, actually. I just might have something, Asuma said as he dashed forward and killed a water clone, can you get me a minute? He asked as another two water clones appeared. Kakashi flicked out another kanai, now holding one in each hand as Urushi growled from between Kakashi's legs, I've got you. Asuma reached into his pouch as the water clones charged, each with a kanai in hand as Kakashi leapt forward in a spin, Urushi following underneath him. He parried the first kanai and landed a kick to one clone as his other kanai clashed with the second clone, giving Urushi the chance to leapt up and grab the extended arm, dispelling the clone before Kakashi turned and launched his two kanai over Asuma's shoulders. Poof Asuma turned away from the storage scroll as Kakashi's kanai flew towards two more water clones, one of them being pierced while the other leapt over the kanai to attack Asuma. Asuma pulled his hand from the cloud of smoke, slashing the gravity sword through the other clone's stomach before he completed his turn and aimed the sword forward, I've got this Kakashi, Asuma said confidently as he marched forward into the mist. Kakashi's eye widened as Asuma began to fade out of view, Urushi, let's see how Tazuna's doing. Asuma has this, he said softly. Urushi the dog nodded before leading the way through the mist, leaving Zabuza to frown in confusion as he noticed the trio separating. Zabuza used his sensory skills to look at Asuma, smirking as he saw the man's oversized katana, he thinks he can best me in swordplay? Zabuza thought with a dark chuckle, oh he's going to regret that, he thought as he hoisted his blade. Asuma took a deep breath as he sent his chakra into the handle of the blade making his chakra rotate around the handle clockwise, the blade feeling slightly heavier as Asuma's eye focused forward, there, Asuma thought as he saw the silhouette of Zabuza quickly approaching. What now Hanada? Naruto asked. Hanada panted as she pulled a senbon from the back of her knee, we need to fight back now, she said weakly. Fire style. Fireball jutsu. Naruto and Hanada frowned as they noticed Sasuke's fireball did little only managing to lift some steam from the frozen mirror, we can't melt it, it's ice, Naruto exclaimed. Hanada managed to move fast enough to actually deflect all of the senbon aimed for her this time, then what's another way to break ice, she asked him rhetorically. Naruto grinned, he he he, breaking it, he shouted as he crouched, swinging his claws wide to deflect a large amount of senbon aimed for his chest. I'll need it hotter, Sasuke shouted as he formed hand seals, Uchiha fire style, grand fireball jutsu. Sasuke shouted as he put as much of his chakra as he could spare into his lungs. Haku's senbon flew through the air, stabbing through his hands before he could bring them to his lips and making the fire come out in an uncontrollable burst, throwing Sasuke back and letting out a stream of fire. Hanada's eyes widened as she noticed the in-movement Haku be forced to stop from the fire, letting her see an opening to the mirror through the fire, now Naruto. Through there, Hanada shouted as she pointed ahead of them. Naruto charged forward, gritting his teeth as he leapt through the fire, I hope this works, he thought in pain as he shouted. Sasuke and Haku's eyes widened as Naruto disappeared into the flames just before it hit Haku's mirror, giving Naruto the chance to leap at Haku with his claws. Haku moved quickly, just barely moving out of the way of Naruto's claws, but her eyes widened as she saw him dive anyway, he couldn't, Haku thought. Naruto's claws glowed with heat as he slashed at the mirror Haku had leapt from, using sheer force, heat and cutting power to cut the mirror into pieces. Naruto rolled onto his feet and turned back with a grin, got you? Naruto shouted before diving for the next mirror rather obviously. Haku landed in one mirror before shooting out the one at the top, avoiding what remained of the fire to come at Naruto from above. Hanada shot out from under the flames having followed Naruto so that when Haku dropped a kick at the back of his head, she was there with her palms glowing, eight rivers. Femoral split. Hanada shouted as she blocked the kick from Haku. Haku's eyes widened as Hanada's hand brushed past Haku's thigh, making the femoral artery in her left leg burst inside the leg, ah, Haku shouted. 
Hanada dropped to the ground as Naruto span with a grin, letting Haku's senbon that was lodged in his forearm stab into Haku's side, letting him get a grip before he brought around his other claw into Haku's back. Naruto's victorious grin faded as he looked at Haku's eyes, seeing nothing but his reflection in ice as, Haku, formed a hand seal, secret jutsu, ice clone destruction. Haku's voice rang out from another mirror. Naruto shouted in pain as the clone exploded in shards of ice, damn it. Naruto grunted in pain before looking over to Hinata, seeing that she was scratched up but was okay otherwise. Haku stepped out of one of the mirrors opposite Naruto and Hinata, her entire left leg frozen as if to stop any damage or even blood flow to the limb. I have to end this now, Haku said before stepping back towards the mirror. Bam Sasuke's fist buried into Haku's stomach, forget about me did you? Sasuke taunted before punching at Haku's masked face. The ice wielder dodged the second punch, twisting in a move that let a senbon slip into Haku's hand as she stepped behind Sasuke. Naruto and Hinata's eyes widened as Sasuke fell limp, the senbon stabbed into his neck in two points that rendered him dead or at least close to it. Sasuke! Hinata exclaimed as Naruto growled and ran forward at Haku. Haku took a defensive stance, if I can lodge them deep enough into his muscle, then he'll be paralyzed long enough for me to take out the others. Haku thought as she waited to time her move perfectly. Poof Haku gasped as a smoke bomb went off at her feet, the recently conscious Kiba drilling through the gap in Haku's jutsu that Naruto had made with his claws to attack. Haku barely managed to dodge the tunneling fang, turning and squinting in the smoke to see that it was just so Kiba could grab Sasuke making Haku turned ahead as she realized Naruto was sure to be near. Naruto slashed through the smoke, his sense of smell giving him an idea of where Haku was even though he couldn't see, I've got you now, Naruto thought as he leapt forward. Haku leapt upwards as hard as she could, her frozen leg forcing Naruto to lean back or else be hit in the face, opening up two pressure points for Haku to exploit with the senbon she threw at the peak of her jump. The needles hit his back, making him fall limply as he looked over his shoulder to Hanada. Hanada, look out, he shouted. The Byakugan user took a ready stance as she leapt up at Haku, though even with her all-seeing eyes she didn't see Haku's maneuver coming. Just as the two were about to clash, Haku's extended foot barely touched one of her mirrors, sucking Haku in and letting her come out behind Hanada in the same movement, a new pair of senbon in her neck. Naruto's eyes widened as he watched all of this happen, he couldn't move, no, he thought as he stared at Hanada's face. There was no movement, her eyes were stone cold, Hanada, he thought as tears built in his eyes. He could feel his muscles, slowly stitching back together and pushing the needle out, nearing halfway as Naruto was finally distracted from Hanada's still face as he looked up to see Kiba bouncing around the area with the tunneling fang to chase the slowing Haku. Get up! Naruto thought to himself angrily. I'm gonna kill that bastard! Naruto thought angrily as he closed his eyes. Yes, you will. Naruto's eyes snapped open, crimson with slitted pupils as red chakra began to bubble out of him. The senbon shot out of him along with a pulse of chakra that threw Kiba out of his technique and Haku to the ground. The two conscious shinobi stared in fear and amazement as red chakra swirled around Naruto, his eyes glowing with hatred as he glared at Haku. Get away from Hinata. Kiba rolled to a stop as he looked at Naruto from a safe corner of Haku's ice mirror trap, his eyes widening as he saw a physical manifestation of chakra forming around him, whoa! He thought before his eyes dashed over to his teammate, seeing the Sasuke was directly in the crosshairs, gotta move! Kiba thought as he dashed forward to get him out of the way. Naruto glared at Haku as she trembled in fear at the chakra, though she tried her hardest to get to her feet as Naruto walked towards her menacingly, s stay back! Haku shouted as she pulled out more senbon. Naruto either didn't notice the senbon or ignored them as he continued marching at Haku, though as he got to her, he stepped on her leg as he continued past, his immense weight breaking the thigh above the ice and causing Haku to scream. Naruto walked a few more steps before falling to his knees, a hand reaching out to rest on Hinata's shoulder. Hinata? Naruto asked, his voice seeming doubling over itself in two different tones. Haku pulled herself away from them before looking up, seeing Kiba was registering Naruto a threat since he was standing protectively over Sasuke and Akamaru rather than attack her. What is this power? Haku thought as she looked back to Naruto and frantically formed hand seals. 
Naruto turned and glared over his shoulder as the top mirror of the formation shattered and shot towards him and Hinata, he roared, causing the shards to fly away and force Haku to cover her eyes. When she lowered her arm, Naruto's claws ripped through her mask and across her face. Haku gasped in pain, her arm and face clawed open, her entire left leg useless. She was nothing now, a broken tool, a failed apprentice. Naruto's mouth twisted into a grin as Haku rolled onto her back, the blood dripping down her face and arm, die! Naruto shouted as he stabbed his claws into Haku from under her ribcage, picking her up in the air with his weapons. Kiba's eyes widened as he saw the mirrors shatter around them, Haku gagging on her own blood before Naruto ripped his claws apart, shredding Haku with his claws as he panted in exhaustion, holy shit! Kiba thought, too stunned with fear and amazed with awe to say or do anything else. Naruto turned and glared at Kiba, making the genin fall to his knees in fear before Naruto blinked and the threat was gone. Kiba? He mumbled as his blue eyes came back and the red chakra drifted away, causing Naruto to fall down onto his knees weakly as he panted heavily. Kiba felt the threat was gone as he shakily walked over to Naruto. H hey, what was that? Kiba asked defensively. Naruto shrugged, it's just a thing I've got, Naruto said before falling onto his hands and knees. Haku! Naruto and Kiba looked up as Zabuza charged towards them through the mist, his eyes bloodshot and his arms useless thanks to Asuma's signature weapons buried into his shoulders. Kiba stepped forward, ready to attack or defend his friends when suddenly the ground around Zabuza cracked. Earth style. Fang pursued Jutsu. Zabuza shouted in shock and pain as Kakashi's pack of ninja hounds burst out of the ground, digging their teeth into his legs and torso to hold him still as another shadow appeared from the mist. Asuma leapt out of the mist while slashing his new sword through the air, cutting the bandages from Zabuza's face before holding the blade at his neck, stop now or die, Asuma ordered. Zabuza panted angrily as he stared at Haku's body, you killed my Haku, Zabuza growled. Asuma shook his head, no, you two came to attack us here, you and your boss killed Haku, Asuma said sternly. Zabuza glared at Asuma for an intense moment, obviously about to try and counter though not yet knowing how. Clap 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 everyone left conscious on the bridge turned towards the approaching sound of clapping, Zabuza's mist clearing to show not only a large ship at the end of the bridge, but a group of about 60 people with weapons at the ready standing behind one short clapping man, well well and here I thought the great demon of the mist was unstoppable, the short man said proudly, if you can't take these little ninjas in the town for me. Well then I guess I'll have to look somewhere else for help, Gato said as he raised an arm. Asuma frowned as he looked Zabuza in the eyes, looks like you've been betrayed, Asuma mumbled. Zabuza nodded slowly as he looked down, though he raised his head as Kakashi appeared with a kanai to his throat, that leaves you two options, leave and potentially die from blood loss, or Kakashi said as he turned the kanai around. Zabuza spat the small pieces of bandage from his mouth before taking the offered kanai in his mouth, or I can kill the one who planned to get rid of me and Haku. Zabuza said with a slight chuckle. Kakashi's dogs let go of Zabuza as Kiba and Naruto moved their unconscious allies behind the janin, Ino jogging towards them to help as she lifted the unconscious Akamaru into her arms. Asuma frowned as he held his sword to Zabuza's throat, why do you think we can trust him? Asuma asked Kakashi. The copy ninja shrugged, because he has nothing left, Kakashi said with a glance at Haku's corpse, she was all you had, right? Kakashi guessed. Zabuza looked down and scoffed, talking around the kanai in his mouth like it was no trouble at all, Haku was nothing but a tool. He began as his voice began to tremble, though other than his eyes watering, there was no sign of his emotions on his face, my most useful tool the most important thing I had left. Zabuza confessed quietly, she was the only one left in this world who really needed me, Zabuza mumbled. Asuma immediately lowered his sword, Kakashi, take out my blades from his back, they're only causing him pain, Asuma said. Kakashi did as Asuma suggested slowly, the three only looking up as the large crowd of thugs cheered battle cries, making their eyes widen as they saw just why they were shouting. Gato stood over what remained of Haku's corpse and stomped on her arm, breaking it much like she had his only a few days prior, serves you right, Gato said before turning to his men, let's run this town into the ground, Gato ordered, 
prompting the group of thugs to charge forward past him. Asuma and Kakashi stepped back behind Zabuza, we still have a client to protect. Kakashi reminded the group. Then we'll clear the way. The trio of Jonin turned with wide eyes as they saw Kiba charge past them on all fours. Kiba wait. Kakashi shouted. Duck guys. The Jonin turned as they saw Naruto spinning. Zabaza's massive sword in his grasp as he leaned back to counterbalance it and gain the most momentum. Incoming, Naruto shouted as he let go of the blade. Zabuza fell to a knee as he watched Naruto throw his sword with more ease than he could at that age, the sword flying over Kiba's head as he ran on all fours and taking out the first row of thugs near Kiba. Giving the genin the chance to clap his hands before spinning forward, tunneling Fang. Zabuza dashed forward and into the opening Kiba and Naruto gave him letting him avoid the entire first half of the group of thugs before he spotted Gato at the back of the group, you're coming with me. Zabuza shouted as he charged forward. Kiba came to a stop in his spin and looked around, seeing he was surrounded by thugs before looking back at Zabuza, oh yeah, he can function without sight too. Kiba thought with a smirk before sending Chakra to his feet and leaping up high, throwing down a smoke bomb as Zabuza came close. Zabuza got stabbed by one spear before the smoke bomb exploded, giving Zabuza a smirk as he closed his eyes and let his silent killing skills take over, the thugs dropping one by one around him as he cut and stabbed with the kanai. Gato looked around in the smoke cloud, kill him now, Gato ordered to the one thug next to him. Gato! Zabuza shouted as he appeared from the smoke, kicking the thug's sword out of his grip before plunging the kanai from his mouth into the thug's sternum. Gato fell back in fear as Zabuza jumped up and caught the airborne short sword with his teeth, spinning to plunge it into Gato's neck, you deserve this. Zabuza grunted as he pushed forward and plunged the blade into his target. Zabuza fell to his knees at the edge of the bridge while Gato fell off, blood spurting from his neck as he fell dead into the river below. The bridge was quiet as the smoke cloud dispersed, only for one more thug to charge forward towards the town, I'm getting my money one way or the other he shouted as he aimed a crossbow and fired it with surprising accuracy. Kakashi ducked the arrow, though Naruto took it to his forearm to make sure it didn't hit anyone else. Sensei, Naruto shouted as he looked at the oncoming thugs. Asuma stepped back as he formed hand seals, some clones would be good about now Naruto, he shouted. Naruto nodded and formed a cross seal, pumping as much of his heavily diminished chakra as he could, shadow clone jutsu, he shouted. Kakashi's eye widened as he watched Naruto make 20 clones, incredible, he thought as the clones charged forward. The original Naruto ripped the arrow out of his arm and looked down at Sasuke and Hinata, I won't let anyone else on our side die today, Naruto thought before running forward. Kiba finally made it back as Asuma finished his hand seals, fire style. Burning ash, Asuma shouted as he spewed forth the ash cloud. B-O-O-O-M Naruto's many clones charged into the resulting smoke from the attack that killed a third of the thugs, beginning to take them out one by one with Asuma taking out any that got through with his gravity sword. The last group of ten thugs managed to run past Asuma, the leader, of them seeing Tazuna and raising his sword. Shikamaru sighed before looking up, glad that Zabaza's mist is gone, he thought as he formed a hand seal. The group ran right past Shikamaru as the boy crouched as if in defeat, though the moment they stabbed their swords through Tazuna, he burst out as shadows. Shikamaru span around holding a hand seal, shadow possession jutsu. He shouted as he took control of the burst out shadows already connected to his own shadow. The thugs were all frozen for a moment before the storm drain nearby flipped open to reveal Ino, holding two bouquets with explosive tags tied to the end of them. Take this. Flower bomb she shouted as she threw them. The thugs screamed as they were killed, making Shikamaru smirk, true shadow clone trap success, he said before turning to look back at the bridge. The last of the mist finally finished fading away as Kakashi began talking loudly, alright everyone listen up, those who fought against Haku come to me so I can remove those senbon, everyone else escort Tazuna back to the town so that they… no. Kakashi trailed off as he looked to the end of the bridge. Everyone turned to see that the workers who had previously quit were watching them in awe, armed to the teeth with workers' tools, kitchenware and in one case a spear, you. One? A man at the front asked. Tazuna grinned as he threw his arms up in the air from his place halfway out of the storm drain with help from Ino, yeah we did. We're free. 
Tazuna cheered. The whole crowd began to cheer as Kakashi turned back to the group, seeing Kiba holding up an unconscious Sasuke. Here, Sensei, can you help? Kiba asked. Kakashi nodded as he lifted his headband, making sure to be very careful as he pulled out the Senban furthest away from his heart first before moving higher. Naruto arrived carrying Hinata bridal style, looking up only staring at her sadly for a few minutes and his eyes widening. Sasuke? Naruto asked in amazement. Sasuke groaned as he sat up, glancing at Naruto and scowling, What do you want idiot? he asked. Naruto looked up at Kakashi hopefully as the Jonin looked down at Hinata, his Sharingan focusing on the points which the Senban stuck out of, just rest Sasuke. Naruto, lay her down on her side for me, he said. Naruto did so gently as Kakashi pulled the Senban from her body that would be the most painful, finally coming to the two at the back of her neck. He removed them carefully and stood as Hinata's eyes snapped open and she gasped, ah, she shouted as she sat up. Hinata blinked as she looked around, did, we win? What happened? she asked. Naruto looked between her and Kakashi questioningly, though the large grin never stopped growing as Kakashi explained why his friend was okay. You were knocked into a temporary coma by Haku. Naruto and Kiba helped us finish this. We're all okay now. Kakashi said reassuringly as he patted her shoulder. Hanada sighed in relief and nodded before Naruto tackled her to the ground in a surprising hug, Naruto kun. She exclaimed as his weight accidentally began to crush her. He pushed himself up onto his hands and knees as he grinned down at her, You're okay, Hanada chan, he exclaimed cheerily. Kakashi eyes smiled as he watched the two before turning to his team, sweat dropping as Kiba and Sasuke were already yelling at each other, why can't I have nice kids like these two? He thought before looking to Ino and seeing she was helping Shikamaru and Tazuna still, well, at least I have one. He thought just as Ino smacked Shikamaru for yawning while she was speaking, sort of. Unseen by those regrouping, Asuma sat next to Zabuza at the end of the bridge, the ex mist ninja just staring limply down into the water while letting his wounds bleed slowly, you know, if you stay like this then you're going to bleed out eventually, he said as he put his sword down. Zabuza breathed heavily as he glanced up at Asuma, yeah, well maybe that's for the best, Zabuza said as he sighed and closed his eyes. Hearing a few clicks and some fumbling beside him, Zabuza sighed before turning to tell off Asuma, only to pause as the leaf Jonin held out a lit cigarette for him, here, it'll take the edge off, Asuma said. Zabuza let Asuma put the smoke between his lips, taking a long drag before sighing and holding in a cough, I haven't had one of these in years. Zabuza commented as he watched the smoke drift through the air. Asuma chuckled and glanced at Zabuza's back, seeing the one spear and what looked like a small knife of some kind sticking out, did you block those with your bones on purpose? Or was that luck? Asuma asked. Zabuza sighed and rolled his weak shoulders, shuddering as he felt the spear, luck I guess. He mumbled as he continued to smoke. So, are you coming back with this or what? Asuma asked out of the blue. Zabuza raised a non-existent brow at Asuma, go back to your village so that I can be sold to the Mizukage for a quick buck. No thanks, Zabuza said. Asuma shrugged, well, I could get you sanctuary at the fire temple. That means they'll be testing you for about a year before they let you join the land of fire as a citizen. Maybe you can come to the leaf after that. Asuma suggested as he smoked. Zabuza glanced over his shoulder at the happy villagers and leaf ninjas, good one, as it usually did. Maybe it was time he settled down again. Zabuza nodded as he took a long drag of the cigarette, yeah. I don't see why not, he said with a smirk before looking towards the north, although if that's what we're doing we gotta go back to Gato's base first. I have some stuff there and I'm sure it'll lessen the argument if we get access to his bank accounts and stuff. Zabuza suggested. Asuma nodded at that, then that means we'll stay for a bit until you can at least function properly. You and Kakashi can hammer out the details while my team gets what you need. Asuma suggested as he stood. Zabuza grunted in pain as he was lifted to his feet, though he chuckled around the cigarette as he began to be helped back across the bridge by Asuma, sure. I guess I'll make a list. Zabuza said as they moves past his sword, the man looking back at it with a sigh, starting with my sword. Asuma nodded with a chuckle, hey Shika, Naruto, go grab our weapons, Hanada, I need your eyes for a moment. Asuma shouted to those on the bridge. Team 10 looked up at his voice and nodded, 
Naruto and Shikamaru jogging past the two of them with a smile and a nod respectively. Hanada coming up to the two with her eyes active and a slight limp. Those weapons are in pretty deep sensei. The knife is actually in his pelvis bone. She said with a frown. Zabuza raised a brow and glanced down to see the knife sticking out of his hip. Huh, I didn't even notice that one. He mumbled. Hey Shika, Naruto said as he lifted up Zabuza's sword with a grunt, having to balance it over both shoulders to hold the weight easily, did you? Feel any odd chakra throughout that fight? Naruto asked. Shikamaru nodded, lifting Asuma's sword with far less effort, yep. Was it you? He asked, earning a nod from Naruto, that's such a drag, Ino's already asking me about it too, but you've got control so we're fine. Shikamaru said with a shrug. Naruto forced a smile for Shikamaru, yeah. Total control. He mumbled as Shikamaru moved ahead, leading their way back to the group to make the journey back to Tazuna's home. Three days later, all right team, Asuma said to the group of four following behind him, today we're following Zabuza's map to Gato's compound where we'll break into the main tower and the safe. Now, the safe had a lot in it, but according to Zabuza it was sealed shut with a blood seal Gato bought, which is why we have Hanada and Ino with us, Asuma explained. Ino and Hanada nodded with a smiles, already knowing their parts of the plan, while Naruto and Kiba looked back at the group with Akamaru leading the way, not too far now sensei. Naruto said as he held up Zabuza's map. Kiba nodded, yeah, we can smell the outpost already, and I think Zabuza was right, there's still people in there, Kiba said, earning a bark from Akamaru. Asuma nodded, then you two take lead and go for the warehouse, remember to make it loud and proud to be a leaf ninja, Asuma reminded them. Kiba and Naruto shared a grin, oh yeah, we got this, Naruto said as he held up a ball covered in explosive tags. Asuma and the girls watched and waited as Kiba, Naruto and Akamaru ran off into the distance, now we just have to wait, he thought as he turned to the girls. Unseen by the three as they began talking, Sasuke dashed through the shrubbery, his Sharingan glowing as he smirked, he thinks he's so much better than me. I'll show him. Sasuke thought as he imagined saving Naruto and Kiba from the thugs in a powerful and heroic way, finally showing Kiba he was alpha and putting the dead last Naruto in his place. Naruto and Kiba crouched behind the one boulder, looking up to see that a large white sheet with the symbol for Gato Industries was hanging between two fences to act like a cheap gate, it's like they wanted to be easy, Kiba said with a grin. Naruto nodded, so you can do it then? He asked as he lifted a ball of explosive tags. Kiba nodded as he began forming hand seals, I'll make the opening, you hit the payload. Let's just hope Zabaza's map was right. Kiba said with a smirk as his nails and fangs began to grow out. Naruto took a sprinting position with the makeshift bomb in one hand, ready? Kiba nodded as he took the same position, set. Arf! Akamaru shouted as he ran out into view. The two guys standing guard looked over as Akamaru ran down the road, the white dog sniffing a few trees before seeming hesitant in approaching the sheet with two men in front of it, hey get rid of that thing. The one on the left said. The other one crouched and offered his hand to Akamaru, hey relax, it's just a stray dog, might be from the village, he said. Akamaru wagged his tail as he licked the man's hand, making him smile as he lifted Akamaru and was completely distracted for a moment. Tunneling Fang The man who had been distracted turned around as the other guard was picked up and torn through the sheet thanks to Kiba, opening the way for Naruto to run in through the gap and pitch a ball to the distant right of their base. B O M. The guard sat down, looking up at the large amount of smoke coming from their supply warehouse. Well, looks like the ninjas finally came to finish this. He mumbled as he watched Akamaru run in after them. I'm out, he said as he dropped his weapon and began to walk away. B O M. That's our cue, Asuma said before turning to the girls. Go get her, girls, Asuma said. Ino and Hanada nodded before dashing up to a river and diving in swimming under the wooden fencing to come out inside behind the main tower of Gato's main building, they're in Gato's office. Hanada said, her Bayakugan looking up through the many floors and walls of the building to see three people on the top floor. Ino nodded, let's move then Hanada, if you get me the opening then we're in, she exclaimed cheerily. The two got out of the water and ran up to the building, using their tree climbing skill to scale the tall walls easily. As they came above the tree line, 
they looked off to the side as Ino held up an arm to make sure they were seen by Asuma. Asuma nodded as he saw her signal. He put out his cigarette as he dashed after Kiba and Naruto, putting on his trench knives as he sprinted past a man who seemed to just wave him past, looks like some of these guys aren't total idiots. Asuma thought as he leapt through the sheet and surveyed the area. Most of the thugs were still in action, but they all seemed to be on the defensive as Naruto and Kiba's near continuous onslaught of kanai and claws. Sniffing out Asuma, Kiba and the transformed Akamaru leapt back as Naruto leapt up into the air and swung his hand, a kanai with an explosive tag wrapped around the handle shooting free down towards the back of the group of enemies, kanai shadow clones. Naruto shouted. A rain of kanai surrounded the group, exploding them towards Asuma as the man finished his own hand seals, fire style. Burning ash, he shouted as he spewed forth an ash cloud. There was a moment of silence as Naruto and Kiba came to a stop next to Asuma, the man smirking before his weapons clashed together to create a spark. B-O-O-O-O-M the group watched and waited as the dust settled, all of their enemies taken care of either by death or knockout. They weren't getting up any time soon. Kiba looked up towards the main tower as the front doors burst open and six cannons were rolled out, um. Zabuza didn't say anything about those, Kiba said. Asuma frowned as he saw them, though his eyes widened as he saw the one at the front of the formation about to fire. Get behind me! Asuma shouted as he leapt forward, his weapons glowing. Naruto and Kiba dropped as a blade of wind extended from Asuma's trench knife, cutting the cannonball down the middle and making it miss them just in time. The genin looked up in awe as Asuma sighed, quickly. Move! Asuma ordered. The three leapt away as the cannons began to fire at them quickly spreading out as Naruto came to a stop atop a flagpole, glancing up at the top floor of the building, come on guys hurry up, he thought before leaping towards the storage house they had wiped out with the first explosion. Just two guards at the door, Hinata said before looking over at Ino, one each? We have to be quick. Ino shook her head, making Hinata pause as the blonde peered in the window, I have an idea considering all the destruction going on outside if you can take out just one of them, Ino said. Hanada pouted but nodded, not liking deviating from the plan but trusting her friend. Hanada leapt up from the wall, gripping the roof with her hands and flipping herself up into the roof itself. She ran across before leaping away from the building towards the flagpole Zabuza had originally planned using if he ever had to break in. She grabbed the flag and used her momentum to swing around, throwing her through a window and foot first into one of the two men's face. He yelled in pain as she kicked him to the ground her palm racing up in time to smack the second thug in the jaw as Ino ran into the room from the window behind them. The first thug turned towards Hinata as her palms hit the other man's legs, making him fall to the ground as she crouched, allowing Ino to finish her hand seals and aim them at the first thug, mind transfer jutsu, Ino exclaimed. Hinata's Byakugan let her see the chakra move through the air and into the man's head, making him stop his attack as Hinata slammed her palm into her downed captive's chest causing him to gasp and never breath again. Hanada began to drag the body away as, Ino, opened the door the two thugs had been guarding, ma'am we have to move you now, one of the ninja got here already so it won't be long until the others are too, Ino, said. Three women, Gato's wife and two daughters, walked out of the office, the mother nodding, so this is it then, to the vault? she asked. Ino, nodded, to the vault. The three girls turned to see the other thug that had been guarding them pick up an unconscious blonde girl, Ino, and nodded to them as they were let through. Ino, winked to Hanada as the girl smiled from behind her transformation jutsu, Ino leading the three to the only other door on the top floor of the building. The woman pricked her thumb on the short nail sticking from the center of a large seal on the wall. The woman placed her hand on it and a handle appeared, letting her grab it and turn it to open the door to the vault. Ino, turned to, Hanada, hey, what's that in her left pocket? Ino, asked as she stepped into the vault. Hanada, reached into Ino's body's pocket, pulling out a smoke bomb with five Zs written on it, causing Hanada to smirk as she took a deep breath alongside, Ino. P-O-O-O-O-F in a plume of smoke, the three women were rendered unconscious as Ino and Hanada ran out in their real bodies, vault open, Ino said with a grin. Hanada nodded, good plan. Asuma paused in looking through the group of bandits, hold on, he thought as he closed his eyes and focused on his hearing. Asuma turned to look at the one building Zabuza didn't have much detail on, 
the barracks for the many thugs and goons Gatto had hired. Something's not right. Asuma thought as he began to jog off. Naruto and Kiba glanced after Asuma before sharing a look, he's your sensei, you follow. Kiba said, more than happy to keep watch of the non-moving pile of minimal effort, though he let out a single quick whistle. Naruto smirked and nodded before dashing off, Akamaru following the order of his master's whistle and coming out of the bushes to follow Naruto. Naruto arrived at the building just as the doors slammed open. Naruto raised his arms just in time to catch Sasuke, the genin having a large wound on his forearm. Sasuke? Naruto exclaimed. Naruto looked up to see Asuma mid-lock with five men, using his forehead protector to hold back an axe while he used his weapons to make the other four weapons lock with each other. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he saw the obvious feet setting of Asuma's, showing that he had kicked Sasuke out of the way. Asuma grunted as he felt one of the men on his left push harder with his weapon. The axe wielder lifted his weapon and swung down at Asuma for a second time, only for Naruto to leapt into the situation over Asuma's head, his claws cutting the raised axe into pieces before his elbows slammed into his face. The other four hesitated for a moment as they noticed Naruto, giving Asuma the opportunity to turn and parry two of the swords before his other weapon came around to cut the throat of one thug before his fist hit the face of the last, knocking him out cold. The two thugs stood back to back as Naruto and Asuma took stances on either side of them, hey we got no beef with you guys, that kid's the one who attacked us, the one facing Asuma said. Naruto and Asuma both frowned, though Asuma held a hand up and pointed a finger up while rotating his fist, making Naruto smirk and leap forward. Off to the side, Akamaru watched in interest as Naruto emulated the tunneling fang, his claws hacking through flesh, bone and steel as he drilled into the first man knocking him back first into the second man and pushing him off balance just as Asuma blurred past the trio, killing the man with a slash through the neck. Naruto grinned as Akamaru began to bark in victory, yeah, team 10 is the best, Naruto exclaimed in excitement. Naruto looked over to his sensei, thinking the man would be in a similar state of happiness, only to see how angry he was as he stormed over to Sasuke, hey, Akamaru, follow me yeah? Naruto said as he began to jog after them. Sasuke had pulled himself against the door and begun wrapping his arm with some of the bandage previously wrapped around his ankles, though as he pulled up a kanai to cut off the end, Asuma kicked it from his hand and punched him in the face. Ah! Oh. Sasuke exclaimed in pain before glaring up at Asuma. You dare to hit me? An Uchiha? Sasuke exclaimed. Asuma shook his head incredulously. Are you serious? You disobeyed a direct order in coming here and even worse as you've left Shikamaru by himself guarding Tazuna's family. Asuma said as he slapped Sasuke hard, knocking him to the floor, you're lucky I just dealt your punishment. Kakashi has serious abandonment issues and if you did this shit in front of him he'd knock you out and cart you off to the Hokage. Asuma shouted down at the genin. Sasuke flinched back as if every word was one of Asuma's punches, making him stare at the ground in barely hidden anger at being treated like he was something less than a worthless Serutobi. Asuma stormed off, feeling Sasuke's glare against his back, even for an Uchiha this little prick is arrogant. By running into those barracks and killing those inside he left himself to face 20 people by himself in an enclosed space, the worst place for a ninja to be fighting in. Asuma thought with a heavy sigh as he tried to focus on the mission. Sasuke paused in his glare as he felt someone grip his arm, he looked over and scowled as he saw Naruto helping him, get off dead last, Sasuke shouted angrily as he tried to shove Naruto away. Naruto's immense weight let him ignore the shove as he continued to wrap Sasuke's arm, get smart rookie of the year, you could have died if sensei hadn't heard the commotion. So shut up and let me help you. Naruto said sternly in the tone Enko used when she was moody. Sasuke was quietly bristling with anger as he clenched his uninjured fist, get off, he shouted as he swung a fist at Naruto's face. Naruto closed his eyes, letting the fist hit his cheekbone and break Sasuke's knuckle, causing the Uchiha to shout in pain again as Naruto just continued wrapping the wound from earlier, you should go help Kiba guard the entrance. If we've missed anyone that seems like a threat, we need you and him to take them out. Naruto said as he stood before leaving Sasuke on his own. Four hours later the sun had just finished setting as Kakashi and Tsunami set the genin up for an early rest, leaving Tazuna and Inari fishing off the wharf as Asuma and Zabuza kept an eye on them from the porch. 
If it was really that bad then why didn't anyone else help with your coup d'etat against the Mazukage? Asuma asked as he sharpened his trench knives. Zabuza nodded as he sharpened his own massive blade, albeit much slower since his arms were still very weak, there was people. The demon brothers followed me without question at the time. There was also the third of their team, a young woman who died on that day as well, fighting for what she believed in, Zabuza began before sighing, and my best friend. Manjetsu. He was the reason the rest of us managed to escape with our lives, he distracted the Mazukage and I haven't seen him since, he said from his place sitting at the step. Asuma hummed in thought, I don't suppose that was Manjetsu Hazuka of the Seven Swords right? he asked. Zabuza nodded again, yep. He mumbled. Asuma paused to light up a cigarette, letting Zabuza work in silence for a few minutes before they heard the back door open. Kakashi stepped out and slouched onto the seat next to Asuma. Well, the kids are tucked in for an early night, Kakashi said before turning to Asuma, I think we should make the trip back separately. Asuma and Zabuza looked up curiously, why's that? Asuma asked. Kakashi sighed, well, Considering Sasuke's actions I think it's best to keep him and Naruto apart for one thing since the blonde Brad keeps antagonizing him, Kakashi began, causing both Zabuza and Asuma to frown, and another thing is that I think Sasuke has begun to measure himself to you Zabuza-san. Zabuza raised a brow, me? What for? he asked. Kakashi scratched the back of his head, funny thing actually, he thinks that you as an ex-missing ninja is someone who could potentially be on par with his brother someone he wants to kill. I have a feeling that he'll be aggressive the whole way back if you're with us. Something I want to minimize, he explained. Asuma nodded, all right then, we'll all get ready together but why don't you take your team with Tazuna to the bridge and do the final goodbyes while my team takes Zabuza ahead? That gives us about an hour to an hour and a half head start, Asuma suggested as his smoked. Kakashi nodded, easily done even more so since my chakra really can't take another push so it's pretty handy for us if you go ahead and clear the way of any bandits, Kakashi said. Asuma was about to nod again before he paused, oh wait, we have someone we need to get from the border tower so we'll be taking the north road anyway, Asuma said. Zabuza sighed, more people? Who? Zabuza asked. Kakashi blinked at Asuma curiously as well as Asuma chuckled, her name is Koyuki. A potential member of the explosive core of the rock village come to our side, Asuma explained. Zabuza shivered, ah, so she's got that mutation with the hand mouths? he asked. Kakashi chuckled, I met a woman once who had that, but luckily she was trained in arts not of the ninja trade, he said as he continued to chuckle pervertedly. Asuma frowned at Kakashi, right, so you take the road back to the southern turn off an hour after we take it to the north, deal? Asuma asked. Kakashi nodded, still off in his little dream land as he giggled to himself. Zabuza chuckled, off the battlefield you too seem kind of weird, Zabuza said. Asuma chuckled out some smoke, says the man who was whispering to his massive sword just a few minutes ago, Asuma said. Zabuza held the blade close to him as he frowned at Asuma, you just don't have a real connection with your blades like I do. He mumbled before petting the flat side of his blade. Asuma chuckled as he lifted his own weapons again, twirling them for a moment before he sheathed them in his pockets, hum. He hummed as he looked down towards the wharf, noticing Inari and Tazuna coming back up towards the house, well, looks like it's almost time to turn in for the night ourselves. He mumbled as he stood and stretched. Naruto yawned as the team got into position, standing in a loose pentagon formation with Hinata in the lead and the Jonin at the back, the sun's barely up sensei. How long do we have till we're back home again? Naruto asked, not sure considering the route they took to get there. Shikamaru sighed but kept his eyes shut as his shadow was connected to Naruto's, letting the lazy genius walk with literally no physical effort on his part. Hanada smiled softly, we'll be back at the tower in a few hours, Hanada said in reply. The group walked in silence as Zabuza glanced around them, curiously feeling everything throughout the mist with his senses. After about an hour of travel, Zabuza's gaze shot to the right as he sensed something, though before he spoke up, he noticed Naruto tense and sniffed the air, interesting, his sensory abilities are more developed than I thought. Zabuza thought as he decided to sit back and watch. Hey Hanada, Naruto said, can you see anyone off that way? Naruto asked. Hanada blinked on her dojutsu, 
Instantly spotting the group of four setting up camp about five minutes down the road and slightly off track, it's just a family, nothing suspicious, Hinata reported. The group nodded as they continued along, though Hinata kept her eyes activated just in case for a few minutes. Hey kid, Zabuza said to Naruto, though the whole team listened in, how do you sense those guys? He asked. Naruto shrugged, I heard something that way and then I thought I smelt them, he said as he pointed into the shrubbery. Zabuza nodded as he hummed, glancing over at the smoking Jonin. So, tell me about the village, he demanded. Asuma raised a brow, it's um. Nice I guess. You can make an honest living there and since I'm related to the Hokage I can help you settle in with minimal trouble probably, Asuma said. Zabuza grunted, right. Why do you trust me so easily? He asked. Asuma shrugged, don't you want this to be a second chance for you? He asked. Zabuza nodded. Yeah, sounds like a good idea, he said. Asuma grinned, then I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Unless there's a reason for me not to, I will trust you, Asuma said happily. Zabuza chuckled, well, thanks then I guess, Zabuza said. The team continued on, letting the rising sun hit their backs as journeyed closer home. Knock knock hears and Serutobi looked up from his paperwork with a slight smile, come on in Kakashi. Hiruzen said as he leaned back to relax in his chair. Team 7 walked in quietly as Kakashi saluted the Hokage, mission complete Hokage-sama. All complications were settled and the people of Wave hope to pay you back someday, Kakashi said with an eye smile. Hiruzen nodded, very good, I notice you've returned separately from Asuma's team? Is there any reason I should be worried? he asked. Kakashi shook his head, no. We just thought that my team should go ahead to give you a heads up, Kakashi said with a slightly nervous chuckle, we have an A-rank missing ninja turning himself in for sanctuary and Asuma has a young rock Kunoichi that's technically now a missing ninja, though that fact may not be known, Kakashi said. Hiruzen blinked a few times, obviously not expecting that, well, thanks for the warning, I'll see what I can do I guess. Hiruzen mumbled, how long till they get here, he asked. Kakashi chuckled. Tomorrow around midday, Kakashi said. Hiruzen nodded, all right then, since this is your first high-ranking mission, I want Kakashi to show the three of you how to do a full written report and hand it in to me before the day is out. Hiruzen ordered. The group nodded in unison, hi Hokage-sama, Kakashi said for the team before they headed out together. Hiruzen watched the trio of Sasuke, Kiba and Ino as they left, these kids are doing well, the heirs of the Yamanaka. Inazuka and Uchiha seem to be a powerful bunch, he thought with a proud smile. What's that boy's story? Zabuza asked Asuma. The two of them sat outside as all the kids slept. Zabuza had just spent a week in bed and didn't want to rest any time soon while Asuma thought it best to keep watch. Asuma raised a brow as he looked over to Shikamaru and Naruto's tent. Which one? He asked between puffs. Zabuza looked up for a moment and thought, ah. Uh, Naruto, the blonde kid, Zabuza said. Asuma frowned, this isn't because he was the one to land the killing blow on your Haku right? He was just doing his duty, Asuma said. Zabuza shrugged, that's over now. I was just wondering about that weird chakra I felt from him on the bridge and if he's picked a speciality as a ninja yet, he seems pretty inclined to be a combat assassin type like you or me, Zabuza said. Asuma chuckled, reaching for his smokes before offering one to Zabuza the man shrugging before taking it with a nod of thanks, well if you're looking for a student you may have to fight Anko and I for him, he said with a laugh. Zabuza's back stiffened before he looked to Asuma, it's not, Anko the snake mistress is it? he asked. Asuma raised a brow before nodding as he lit his cigarette, passing the lighter to Zabuza as he spoke, yeah, that woman and Naruto see each other as a sort of adopted sibling kind of relationship, he said before looking to Zabuza. I'm guessing you know her? Asuma asked. Zabuza chuckled, I guess you could say that. We were both sent to assassinate each other one time. He said with a self-satisfied smirk, well, we managed to get each other on our backs but it ended a bit differently than either of us thought. He mumbled pervertedly. Asuma coughed on his smoke before looking at Zabuza while pointing accusingly as he suddenly realized something from a past discussion with Anko. Holy hell you're Mr. 12 foot 12 hours? Asuma exclaimed in realization. This time it was Zabuza's turn to cough on his smoke, wait, what? he asked, totally confused. 
Asuma laughed. Oh I should have known. The massive sword and the demon. References. He exclaimed before laughing even louder. Zabuza couldn't help but smirk as he looked up at the sky in reminiscent thought. That's interesting. She stills remembers me. He thought, hoping to run into her again. Achu. Anko sneezed, accidentally knocking her plate of dango sticks off the table and onto the floor. My dango, she screamed. Kuranai laughed from her place across the table from her best friend. Looks like someone's talking about you, Anko Chan, she said with a wink. Anko looked tearfully at her food before fire sparked in her eyes, but the only one. She began before she scowled. Naruto, I'm gonna kill him when he gets back, she screamed as she ran out of the store. Kuranai blinked as Anko left. Anko, she sighed as she rolled her eyes. It's just a superstition, she mumbled as she turned back to her food. Um, ma'am, Kuranai turned to the waiter who had received a job of cleanup, will you be paying for that woman? Or, he asked, trailing off as Kuranai frowned. Kuranai looked at all of the empty bottles and plates of Dango, oh damn. She mumbled as she pulled out her wallet. The end. Now we will